Britain's Queen of Clean, Kim Woodburn, has crossed the Atlantic to meet lifestyle expert Mike Shalhoub for a very special assignment. Their mission, to identify, confront, and rehabilitate messy and disorganized Canadian families and restore their sense of pride. This time, Kim and Mike are helping to organize the Black family. I know. Comprising Mom Benita and kids Hillary, <laughs> Meredith, Benita. Adelaide, and Tobias, as well as unwanted house guests, dust and papers. Who knows how old they are? Benita stopped counting a long time ago. Oh, how many years ago was this? If Benita ever wants to get back into the workforce, she's gonna have to deal with the household hysteria that has completely taken over her world. There are too many things that don't live somewhere. Puzzles and toys and games, papers and clothes, all manner of items that need to just live somewhere. We just kind of stuff it into another corner. Having four kids, you'd think they'd pitch in to help their mom. We don't like cleaning up. We like mom doing it for us. But with Benina taking care of everything for them. Mom does a lot of work around the house. She cooks our meals, does the laundry and stuff. Getting a job has become a far off fantasy. Mom, we're hungry. Just give me a second. Mom does everything for us all the time. She likes it. Movie stars don't have it this good. Benita is also the alarm clock, Ashley out of bed. the scheduler, Wednesday today, who has gym? tutor, I don't think that's the right answer, personal assistant, and the keeper of all things. Where are my flip flops? Where's that gray sweater? I can't find my earphones. I don't want to keep track of every one of their belongings. Where did this retainer see I'm that looking for that. Ew, is that even hygienic? My job is to make them responsible for where their things are. How on earth did it get this way? And why is Benita treating the whole family like a bunch of babies? Let's go back in time. 10 years ago, Benita and her husband Bruce moved into this house with their two oldest daughters and baby Adelaide. But soon after, their promising future together was shattered. In June of 1997, my husband um, went to work and was hit by a truck and just never came home. Suddenly, and very unexpectedly, Benita found herself on her own to cope with a baby and two young children. I found out after Bruce's death that I was pregnant with my fourth child, my son. Benita was now a single parent with two young daughters and two babies in diapers, and she did an amazing job of raising her family. But that was a long time ago, and Benita's kids aren't babies anymore. As they've now reached a stage where everybody is capable and contributing, it's time for me to start offloading the work that I do. Change won't just happen, though. Benita needs help. Domestic diplomats Kim Woodburn and Mike Shalou are coming to the rescue. The Blacks may not be waiting for a visit from the Queen, but that doesn't mean they should be living like this. They'd better get ready. Kim and Mike are about to give them a very rude awakening. Good morning, Black family. It's time to help make this house a home. You're old enough to help your mother sort this crazy situation out. Up and out of Black family, this is your rude awakening. It's pretty obvious right away that this is one disorganized mess. I'm very shocked at how untidy this house is. Now, how much do you do in this house? I... What do you do? Not much. It becomes pretty evident okay. pretty fast right. that Benita is the root of the problem. I blame you for this. There's paperwork everywhere. What is this? That's this goes order. order. This? This is not organized at all. Well, it works for me because I know what papers are there and what they say and who needs what. Mom knows? Yeah. yeah. But you don't. No. My own filing system, I understand it. I can have a pile of papers and know exactly what's in it. But that doesn't work if other people need to find something out of that, that heat. Oh, my God. Well, this is an outrage. What's all this junk? Some of it is the dog stuff. Oh, it's the dog. The dog's untidy in the house. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny, and you're not funny, and you're getting on my nerves. I want respect. I should think so. All you're doing is giving these kids nothing to do. These are not babies anymore, Di. If you don't give your children time to do it, how can they ever learn? Let's have a look at this bedroom, as you say. I'm not very impressed here. I mean, this, this, I mean, lovey. Look, now look, love. 
Did you ever hear the expression, fur coat and no knickers? I look at you standing in front of me. Well-groomed, lovely figure. You see her in the street, what do you say? Wow. You come in here, you go, good God almighty. You never dream you live so untidy. You're a phony. I don't know whether phony, that's a bit harsh. Well, I'm being harsh. When your husband passed away, sadly, did you spoil them thinking they've got no dad? Did you start doing that? Well... Not wanting to ask them to do a thing? Yeah, there was a lot going on that was just easier for me to do it myself, and I think that's carried over. Yikes! This could be harder than it looks. If they want to get this house in order, Kim and Mike need to take a break and discuss their plan of action. She wants to go back to work. She wants to get her life back. Therefore, they've got to get organized, haven't they? The mother has everything in her head, and she doesn't really communicate to the children what to do around the house. She's overcompensated. It's no wonder she's got disorganized. We're here to help. And I do think you look lovely in pink. Are you flirting with her? No. But the kids will never realize what needs to change until they realize how much mom does. It's time for the switch. We have to open the lines of communication between mother and family. Your mother needs to unload her mind with everything that's going on in her head and tell you guys. You guys create a master plan so no one bugs your mom. I hear where you're going. Black Domestic diplomats Kim Woodburn and Mike Chalou are giving the Black family a rude awakening. They've uncovered the kinks of this household gone wrong. It's not funny, and you're not funny, and you're getting on my nerves. And challenge the kids to take charge of their lives. This? So that mom, Benita, can change track from... Stay-at-home mom to the working mom. This master plan will have everyone's names and the times and the scheduling of all your events. Okay. This is the rest of the month. Whoa. Mom may have made it look easy. Hockey, gym, piano, swimming, homework, four kids, and every week is jam-packed. You have to just, like, do it really long. That's why That's it's why so long. he took it and oh. threw it. Good luck, kids. If you're gonna fight, fight nice. This is what the thing is gonna look like. Line at the top, names, and then call. Do, I have to make it even. I think it should go like this. Fine, fine, I'll just do it your way. Oops, it's not my mom, not my mom. Are you done yet, boy? Hurry up! Yeah. Oh, shut up. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Something mom made look easy is proving to be more difficult than any of these children ever imagined. He has it. I'll figure it out. Three more times. No, wait. Uh, how many times do you have? If these kids are able to manage their own schedules, Benita may find herself with a little more time on her hands. The whole purpose for this exercise is for your kids to relieve you of all this stress, because they're old enough now to take responsibility for themselves. So you have to learn how to relax. Take some time for deep breathing, yoga, anything that'll just get you in your own mind space and just focus on being you. Right. Wow. How about we pin this master plan up? Putting the kids in their mom's shoes has really woken them up. They can see now that it takes a little help from everyone to keep a home running smoothly, not just a mom on her own. I was surprised at how much really happens in a month. Those four of us in those two schools, it's really a lot to jam all that information into one head. It feels great to have actually taken control of our own, like, activities and our own lives. I didn't realize how much I had going on in my little pea brain. Mom, you don't have the pea brain. <laughs> this brain is a very busy place. But this is a work in progress. So every time you guys have an event, you just plop it on here so your mom doesn't have to go on overload anymore. Yeah. Okay. Right. right. Nice work. Job well done. The master plan is done, but that's just the beginning. Your mother wants to get a job, you know that. So it's very important you girls take responsibility for your washing. Your girls are getting into cosmetics a bit now, aren't you? Yeah. The trouble is... We all get cosmetics on the collars of our clothes. You can't help it, can you? Look, my trusty bar of soap. Say you had lipstick on a collar, foundation, mascara, whatever. Run that collar under a cold tap. Rub this soap as hard as you can, then take it between your fingers. It's out. Oh. Okay. One more tip. I guess your jeans are partly elastic, aren't they? Yeah. Anything that, that has elastic in it, you cannot put fabric softener, either liquid or the cloths in with that. If you look at elastic, it's stiff, isn't it? You're like yeah. that. 
your pants oh. are stiff. It can't be softened. Yeah. The moment you put that a softener in it, you have maybe elastic a wee bit softer, but you won't notice right away. When you give them a dozen washes, you'll have a big bum hanging down here. <laughs> and therefore, if you want it to last and your jeans to keep a nice shape, don't do it, girls. If you wash them properly and rinse them properly, that should be a pretty fresh fragrance on them. Have you girls got any washing to do today? I have some in the bathroom. Oh, you're a disgrace. Come on. In the bathroom. Laundry room, not bathroom. Do you girls never learn? At eight years old, Tobias may be too young to do his own laundry, but there's other things he can do to make Benita's life easier. What we're going to do is get all your clothes ready the night before you actually go to school. What special days do you have to get dressed for? Gym. Gym? All right, let's get out your gym outfits now. I need to wear shoes and socks. Socks, good. A T-shirt. A T-shirt, right on. And if it's hot, you would wear shorts. But if it's kind of cold, you would wear track pants. Perfect. All you have to do is wake up in the morning, you've already got your clothes, and you're out the door. Nice. The kids are beginning to take on Kim and Mike's changes. But Bonita is another story. She doesn't really get rid of anything. She just stuffs it in different places. Making one pile smaller means another pile just gets bigger. I don't have the time or, quite frankly, the energy to make decisions on what to do with what. Keep that thing. Anybody ever going to wear that? Come on. Kim and Mike need to put an end to this quick. Kim and Mike have been helping Bonita Black to let her kids take the reins for a change. Clean your fingers. But Bonita needs help herself. She's setting the kids a bad example because she just can't let go of useless and sentimental junk. Okay, maybe I'll keep that. So Kim and Mike's next lesson will certainly help her get rid of it. All the junk in your house. First of all, it's not junk. I know all the stuff in my house to be functional, and I believe it to be beautiful. Oh, please, give me strength. OK, this is what we're going to do. We're going to give you three minutes to go into that house of yours, and you're going to collect all the items that are not beautiful and that are not functional, starting right now. Go. In you go. Guys, you have 10 more seconds. Five, on, four, come on, come on, come on. three, two, and one. Look at the beautiful dowels on it's the... It's not beautiful. It's broken. broken. <laughs> the kids are right. Go Get ahead. rid of that. Mike has a plan to make sure that this rubbish doesn't make it back into the house. It's time for drastic measures. Black family, we are going to get rid of our separation anxiety, and we are going to toss all this stuff in the chopper upper. Here we go. Finally, Bonita gets the point. Now it's obvious to her what junk actually is. And Kim needs to strike while the iron is hot. This horrifies me, you know, plastic containers that are very handy. Not this many. How many do you use? We need them for lunches and leftovers. Well, it's wasteful to throw food out. If you have, my dear, all these leftovers daily, are you overcooking a bit? I, perhaps I'm overcooking because a I'm, bit. Because what I'm, what I'm saying this to you is, look, I bet the bottom has never been used in years. Do you know what's in the bottom? No. No. If you haven't used something for over a year in a kitchen, you don't need it. You've covered every holiday. Right. And you still haven't used oh, it there for social events, OK. Ah, now, I spot this. Yes. Cling films. Like you, I've, I've, I've ripped and torn, and you've got little bits around here. Yeah. I'm going to give you a tip. Put it on the middle shelf of your fridge. Trust me. And what happens is it's gone slightly stiff. It pulls out so easily, and it rips across the box, but it doesn't take away the cling factor. So you oh. never waste, you never battle with your sandwiches, you waste no money. Okay. With the kitchen out of the way, Bonita's next task is the bedroom. What's that, my love? That would be a uh, phone bill. As for monthly bills, we've got telephone, we've got gas, electric, and so on. 
you should keep 12 months. It covers you completely. Tax returns are kept for many years. It varies in different countries. The accountant will advise you. Now, come on, come on. Oh, these are um, what air, year? air plans that I've already used those points. That's also 2004. Right, right. Come on. 2004. Oh, anything personal, private, oh, has so to be shredded. Statement? Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's a visa card that I don't even have anymore. Right. Lot to do, but well worth it. And we've got to shred it. OK. Right. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Kim and Mike are certainly getting through to Bonita. But they still have a way to go with Adelaide and Tobias. Excuse me, where am I go? These kids aren't getting it. Stop it. it. Disposing of old bills and useless papers is easy. But kitty art is an even bigger problem for Benita. This is a picture of her family. I found some other things. Oh, look, here's more children's artwork. How can you not keep stuff like that? I just don't get it. But how precious are they if they're never seen or appreciated? Benita, looking around here, there are so many memories, and there's so much beautiful artwork. Who is this from? This is a little heart, and this is the first Valentine that Hillary ever made. So, so much so magic. Mu I know. I don't, how can you get rid of that? So, and the heart I is very it. cute. It's very cute. I want you to be able to see them and appreciate them and enjoy them all in one area. Let's go upstairs, because I have a little surprise for you where we can keep these memories alive. Huh. All right, let's go. So here's your memory, yes. right? So we're gonna save it. We're okay. not gonna have it all over the house. Okay. All right, so we're, we're gonna, gonna put it, it in here. Somewhere. All right. In this little scanner. Okay. You press this button, et voila! Wow! Memory saved. Fantastic! And all we have to do now is put all your artwork in there. Right. And then all this screensaver will just keep popping it up. Thank you very much. Benita's got some new tools for getting rid of useless and sentimental stuff. But the Blacks still have one final challenge to face. The Blacks' home has always been a drop-in destination for friends because of Benita's warm hospitality. But it's always been Mom alone who takes care of the guests. Shanna, you okay? That is all about to change. Now, family, I'm going to say something to you. Kim and Mike have set the Black family their biggest challenge of all. You're going to have a party. Mother's not taking part. We want someone to organize the invitations. Someone's going to organize the drinks. And someone's going to organize all the food. No, I'm not doing that. It's time for the kids to take charge. They're doing it all by themselves to show Mom Benita that things at home won't fall apart when she goes back to work. What are you doing? Tonight we're organizing a party. Do you think you can make it? I don't even know if my kids can put, make their own sandwich, never mind put on a party for all these people. It makes me a bit worried. Is anyone else nervous about this? As the party deadline draws near, Kim and Mike are ready to make their final judgment on the Black family's efforts. Boyo! Oh, oh my gosh. There's 50 people coming. We're gonna look so stupid. Boyo, you can't put them back in. Have the kids been able to pull it all together? But just so no one forgets where they've come from, Kim and Mike have prepared a wall of shame that shows the dismal state of the Black family's home before their rude awakening. Would you like to look at this? Oh, look at Mom. Oh, that is appalling. Benita's bedroom, once a cluttered, untidy dumping ground, is now a calm, serene oasis where she can kick back after a long day at work. Look, I have plates in my bed. Yeah, <laughs> my stuff's the best. The best? Not Compared to you, Mom, look at yours. <laughs> Ew, look at that part. The living room was a mess of laundry, toys, and junk. The computer area, a jumble of wires and dusty books. Now, it's a tidy, relaxing space the whole family can enjoy. No, sweetie, we have Now it looks so good. And it didn't actually take that long. 100 years to get it that way. And I think that's a big lesson to learn. Now, do you know, on that note, should we party? Yeah. Come on. Come on, kids. <laughs> There's been a lot of activity today, and it's just really everybody pitching in and it all coming together. The kids are having to not only take on the jobs that they didn't know that they had to do, but doing them with real relish. 
it's sort of a new chapter for me, and I think it's a good chapter for them to be embarking on, too. The master plan? Yeah. So we just write it down, and then we'll all know where everyone's going. Mom won't have to remember everything. Good. It was way better. This party was a big hit. We did it all by ourselves. Now Mom knows that we're a lot more independent. And we realized how much Mom used to do for us, and now it's, we can do it for her also. It's really good to see her enjoying herself. The black family is transformed. The kids have taken responsibility for themselves, and Benita has finally learned to let go so that she can head back to work. Kim and Mike are thrilled at the new pride that the black family has found in themselves. And they aren't the only ones who are pleased with the results. Well, it looks like a completely different house. I shouldn't really be surprised that they're able to do it because they're smart, capable kids, but the fact that they're willing as they are has been a really nice eye-opener for me. Isn't beautiful hair color? Perhaps I should have given them this opportunity a long time ago, but that's okay, better late than never. The guests are happy, yeah. Benita's happy, yeah. and the children are happy. Smashing. Let's get out of here. Yeah. And my feet are killing me. Let's go. This whole exercise of teaching them how to take on their own responsibility has been really invaluable for our whole family. Before, it used to be crazy. Like, yeah. There used to be oh, so yeah. much going on all the we time. We used to lose yeah. stuff all the time. It used to be extremely, like, be so messy all over the place. But it's a lot better now. We're all just a lot more on time for things like school and church. I can do my homework a lot easier. I can find everything that I need to do it. What's really good is that the kids are taking on responsibility for their own schedules, which means that's not my job anymore and I have more time for myself. Britain's Queen of Clean, Kim Woodburn, has taken the trip across the Atlantic to meet lifestyle expert Mike Shalou for a very special assignment. Their mission, to identify, confront, and rehabilitate messy, disorganized families who've lost their sense of pride. This episode, Kim and Mike are sorting through the issues of the good family, comprising of Mom Marika, Dad Dave, and kids April, Joe, Gordy, and Gavin. For three years, the goods have been living in what looks like a lovely suburban home, but looks can be deceiving. Step inside and you see piles of laundry and random junk everywhere. Go upstairs and you'll find the most awkward sleeping arrangements imaginable, which is why April has turned her family in for a rude awakening, because living in this mess has become unbearable. I'm late all the time and that's also embarrassing because you're always late, which stems from the fact that everything's disorganized. Mom! Your lunch is on the table! Mom can't keep up with things on her own, and it seems like she's given up on her home in favor of the dogs. She used to do the laundry, she used to do the dishes. She doesn't have time for that anymore because of the dogs. I say it's the dogs 100%. In the eyes of her family, this makes Marika responsible for the mess. I get the blame all the time. It is always my fault, no matter what it is. But Dad and the kids aren't babies. They're old enough to pick up after themselves, but they won't. Instead, they expect Marika to do the work for them. She's the mother, now she's an at-home mom. An at-home mom should clean the house. And really, that's the good family's big issue. Everybody blames everybody else for the mess. But the goods need not fret, because Kim and Mike are about to surprise them with a very rude awakening. Good morning, good family. It's time to clean your act up. This house is a mess, and so are your sleeping arrangements. You never help your mother. It's time you pitched in. Rise and shine, good family. This is your rude awakening. You got that right. Let's go, kid. Who the heck are you at my house at this time in the morning? If you come back here again, you can kiss my Canadian <laughs> I have no desire to kiss your Canadian anything. Get out of my way. You're such a rude man. Come on. What's here? Well, I'm not too um, happy about this lot. Clothes, muck, shoes all over the hall. You're not happy about this, are you? Darn tootin'. Nobody helps mom keep things clean. So rather than being everyone's maid, she's letting dad and the kids fend for themselves. 
I think they're a bunch of spoiled brats and they're very jealous that I am now paying attention to my doggies and not to them individually yeah. all the time. Children and husband come first, doggies come second. Second. How bad have things become? Well, the kitchen is just the start of this fairy tale gone wrong. This place is terrible. You've got pans days old. You've got all, oh, look at the grease. Your sink's dirty. You've got garbage here. It's a dump! The kids blame you, you blame them. The husband blames everybody. Now, lovey, somebody's got to take the initiative and clean this dump up. It is nobody's priority, so why should it be mine? Oh, now, this has got to be this some is... kind of a flaming joke, has it? And you keep your hands to yourself. I'm just saying. Whose bed's that? Mine. Well, your bed's a little organized. He sleeps with you in your bed. No, you... he sleeps in my bed. So he won't clear the top off. So you leave him your bed. Well, where do you go? I sleep in my mom's bed. Oh, isn't she a lucky woman? Where do you sleep? I sleep in my bed sometimes. When you don't sleep in that bed, where do you sleep? Sometimes I sleep in my mom's bed. That's about it. Just anywhere. He's in mother's bed. You're in mother's bed. How big's the bed? Yeah. And where's your father? So this is mom and dad's room? Yeah. I expected a huge bed, you know, since the whole family sleeps in it at one time or the other. I have to ask you something. Where do you sleep, dear? Uh, that's kind of personal, but... Uh... I'm not inviting you to sleep in my bed. Don't get carried away, well, love. You're not uh... getting an offer. Well, you never know. You thought he was married to me. He's actually married to the TV. You know, you're very young to equip the wife, aren't you? This family is falling apart. Kim and Mike need to formulate a plan. Do you know, they're a smashing family, aren't they, but... disorganized. I mean, I have never seen clutter like it. And where do they sleep with all those clothes everywhere? Every one of them are disorganized. We've got to get everyone to do individual jobs and make each person feel important and feel that they have a role to do. You take Mother Bear and get her organized with all the laundry. I'll take the boys and I'll get their rooms organized so they have proper time management. And this whole family will be spot on. After you, my darling. Thank you so much. No problem. Watch for the dogs you do. Yeah. The kids need to understand why Mom is so frustrated and prefers the dogs. April! Gordy! What are you doing? Gavin! Could you get in the car? Time for the switch. Tomorrow morning, we're switching roles. You kids are getting up at 7.30. Mother's going to have a break. 7.30? Stop it. I've warned you. So wait, do we have to be awake at 7.30? Domestic diplomats Kim Woodburn and Mike Shalou have infiltrated the Good Family Disaster Zone. It's a dump! After hiking through the mess, Kim and Mike have identified the root of the problem. The good family loves to play the blame game. The kids blame you, you blame them. The husband blames everybody. So now Kim and Mike are going to give mom a break from her daily routine and put the kids to work. Could you put that in the sink for me, please? Tomorrow morning, we're switching roles. You kids are getting up at 7.30. Mother's going to have a break. A well-earned one, in my opinion. 7.30? A.M. I don't want to hear one now. I want to hear yes, Mum. It'll be a first, but yes, Mum will do me. So wait, do we have to be awake at 7.30? Oh, shut up. Wake up, man. Gavin, it's time. You're supposed to be looking after your mother, so get down there and start treating her like the queen. Yes, Mom! Yes, Mom! Come Let's on. get them up, then. I bet you the girl won't get up. Women are funny, you know. April may have nominated her family for their rude awakening, but she can't even get out of bed. 30 now. Okay, Come on. Be up. careful what you wish for, April. Just sit yourself. Sit Mom, down. delegate. I would like Gavin and Gordy, if you could make me a nice hot breakfast, maybe a little bit of fresh fruit. Yes, Mom. Yes, Mom. April. Joe Perry. You guys are on dog duty. Dog poop cleanup, Joe Perry. Feeding the little munchkins. Fluffing up their little blankies That's in the crates. a bit too much for my liking. <clears throat> yes, Mom. Mom. OK. Yes, Mother. Thank you. 
Okay, gentlemen, this is gonna be fun, sloppy cooking, but we're gonna do a very good job for your mother. Don't make a mess. Thank you. So the garbage doesn't go there. The garbage goes in the garbage. Hey, Portia. Hey, guys. I don't know if we're small, guys. I have to fluff up my dog's <laughs> freaking blankets. Well, it's actually it's taking longer than I thought. I thought it was just put it in, it's done. But and then there's drinks, set up the table. Plus, she's got to do lunches and breakfast. Think of my mom differently now. Yeah, I kind of think of her differently, too. A lot of the times, we're really lazy and we don't want to go outside. But, you know, if I guess my mom can take the time to do it, plus all the other things she does, then, you know, maybe we could do it to help her out a little bit, too. I appreciate it a lot more, for sure. Isn't that beautiful? And voila. And now serve your mother. Wow. Beautiful. They've never served me like this before. Oh, it looks scrump delicious. Oh, my goodness. Let's give a nice round of applause to our chefs. Your brothers. Nice oh, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. I have goosebumps. <laughs> I'm just so touched. You don't give kids credit. They think an awful lot, you know. Yeah. Oh, dear, that. dear. Mom is happy. But now, this family needs to get the rest of their house in order. Let's see where the blame falls this time. Do you know what worries me? The washing! 80% of the problem in this house is your washing. Organization, like each one of you each day, you go out that door, you run down to the basement, and you put the laundry in the laundry room. Right? You create it, I you don't do. I don't do laundry. Here you go. OK. What a lovely floor you've got. Oh, I didn't There's know floor. your floor was this nice. Sorry. I've never seen so much washing in all my flaming life, I haven't, honestly. This is a laundry basket. You've got three compartments, whites, colours. pale colours, darks. Dark. Go on, do your best. You won't get it all in, it's your own fault. I can't say any more. I've said all I can say. Darks, darks. Oh, why I waste my time. Dad, get out of your little devil. Gotcha. I've never Good seen them so excited over <laughs> laundry. It's full, but if you keep the washing down, you've got plenty of room in here. By Jove, you've got it! <laughs> You're the best here, dear, isn't it? Oh, it's atrocious. Just sit down a minute, lovely. I've got something to talk about. Oh, there's a bit of an odour, dear. Somebody's got naughty feet, haven't they? Oh, goodness, yes. yes. Right, here's these. This is going to shock you, and I tell you. Nice shoes, leather. Quite clean, just need a polish. They're a little bit whiffy, a bit whiffy. Easily solved. Plastic bags, love it. Now, you need, might get bigger or smaller, it depends how big the feet are. Let's see if this fits in here. If it doesn't, well, it, we'll have to get bigger ones. I want you to take that and put it in your freezer. In my freezer? Mm. Yes. For the, the night. For? for the night. For the night. But the bags will be big and do up properly. What happens is, the freezer, it's so cold, it kills bacteria in the shoe. It also, when the bacteria is killed, kills the odour. It's the bacteria that's stinking. Therefore, the smell's gone. The goods love to blame each other for the mess, but they're all responsible for hoarding too much useless stuff. Kim and Mike have a remedy for the situation, but it's gonna require the use of some heavy artillery. Now, family, I want you to go in the house and I want you to pick an object out that is useless, never gets used, never will get used, and we're going to throw it out. And we're going to give you two minutes to do it. Oh. Ready, set, go! Go get it! Whoa! I'm taking this man. No, man. Not this. The Good Family loves to play the blame game. Somebody's got to take the initiative and clean this dump up. It is nobody's priority, so why should it be mine? But after switching roles, they're starting to realize that blaming each other is good for no one. Think of my mom differently now. 20 seconds, 18. Now Kim and Mike have got the whole family racing against the clock to locate their most useless items and get them out of the house. Come on, here we go. Come on. Five come more on. seconds. And perfect. Here we are. 
Why are you sitting on... Why did that chair come out? <laughs> Would you please be quiet when I'm speaking? Why are you sitting on that chair? Why did, was it brought out here? Well, because my family wants to uh, be rid of it. It's my do chair. Do I don't think that it matches anything in the house, and it really smells bad. Well, your mother clearly uses the chair, no? This is the first time I've seen her sit in this chair since we've got it. You've gotten away with murder, you four. The way you wind your mother around your finger. Oh, look at that little face. Look at that cheeky face. Do you want this chair, lovey? Yes, sir. It shall like be it. yours. Mom can keep her chair for now, but Kim's got a plan to get rid of the rest of this junk for good. Come on, Mike. Everything in that house. Let's just drive the car through the house. <laughs> Finally, the whole family is seeing the bigger picture. Decluttering creates much needed space in a messy house. And besides, most of this stuff is just broken and useless anyway. By clearing out their basement, the goods have significantly increased the amount of space available. So they're getting some carpet laid and creating a new room downstairs. Mike is already making plans for it. Tell me what's going on in this room that makes it so chaotic. Everything goes on in here. There's, there's always eating, there's sleeping, constant homework all night long. Gavin, what time do you go to bed? Tell me the truth. 2. 2 AM. And how old are you? 10. 10. So when Gavin goes to sleep, we're still working in here and doing stuff? Yeah. So how is your little brother supposed to sleep? He's not. So what we're going to do is we're going to find an appropriate place in this house to organize and to do all your homework in. This is strictly going to be a bedroom. Mike's idea? Move homework to the basement. And he's already staked his claim there. This is going to be the Good Family Home Office Center, OK? Wicked, man. Awesome. Good? Yeah. yeah. But this house still has some major cleaning problems. I'm looking at this carpet. God help us. Don't hair shop on dark carpets. Now we've got tape, right. the good old parcel tape. We're putting it on, my love, back to front. Ooh. When the woman can get it right, get on your knees, get on your knees. I'd love to see a man on his knees. Get on, get on those knees. Okay. Now, let's, let's, now, go down, go down in straight lines. Look, 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 look. Holy smokes. Now, you cannot tell me. <laughs> that's unbelievable. Get that, get that corner. Go on, get the corner. That's unbelievable. Don't you think that's incredible? That's more than incredible. Okay. Now, no more of this, my good man. <laughs> Pull yourself together, for goodness sake. Now, you take those, put them on. No, you don't want hairs all through your fingernails. No, you, we don't want that. <laughs> Honestly, it's super. It's just water. And honestly, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna moisten the rubber glove. And then what I do is, I run it down the chair, and it absolutely picks up all the hairs. <sighs> it, it gathers in a clump, you see. There's about 100 hairs there. It gathers in a massive clump. Oh, oh stop being such a sissy. Let's see what you can get. Right, go on, just, I like to come up, because oh, I, I think you're okay. gathering. I think you're gathering when you come up, and that's what I think. Have a look, have a look, have a look. Oh, God help us. Oh, God help us. Oh, don't smell it. Oh, God! It's disgusting! The constant blaming is starting to slow, and the house is shaping up. The goods are actually making some progress. Let's make the bed. Driving in. Let's see if they're up for the final challenge. You've been very good with what you've thrown out. There's a lot left. You've got 24 hours to organize a lawn sale. It's um, probably better called a junk sale. Well, people do buy junk, dear. And there's a little catch. All the people that are going to be coming to this yard sale will be supplied with refreshments. <laughs> Any advice you need, this is the man to ask. You have 24 hours. So. Better go to it. Yeah. Wait a second. A yard sale with refreshments? Since their arrival, Kim Woodburn and Mike Shalou have been pushing the Good family to stop blaming each other. I think they're a bunch of spoiled brats 
and start taking responsibility for their own mess. What lovely floor you've got. Oh, See, I didn't know floor. your floor was this nice. Now the goods are facing their biggest challenge yet. Come together as a family and sell off the rest of their unwanted items in a yard sale. The rule is, it's not going back in the house. I'm warning you, it's not going back. Whoa, come on down to our lawn sale. Put on by my good friends from the cleanup show. Oh, hey, how what are going? you doing? I'm trying to uh, draw up some uh, customers for my lawn sale that you put me out here for. Woohoo! Come on. Buy some toys, boys. You got free lemonade. Hey, come on down to the good old family lawn sale. Hello. Hey, how are you? What are you looking for? Dogs? Want a dog? How much for the lamp? Uh, it's $5. Okay, perfect. How much do you want for your fish tank? $2. That's a pretty good deal. <laughs> David's even offering a home delivery service. Would you like me to carry it to your house? Uh, okay, yeah, okay. we have uh, four strong boys here. Yeah, wow, the goods are really pulling together. Oh, that's free. No. I know. $10 for the helmet and the pants. Oh, cool. Marika's even learning to let go and has put her beloved chair up on the auction block. It's my favorite chair, I must say. Mm -hmm. But now that I know it's going to a good home, there you go again. Thank you so you. much, Terry. You're welcome. Good display. Good it's job, organized well. It's organized very well. Like it. It looks nice. And just so no one forgets where they've come from in such a short time, Kim and Mike have prepared photographs of how things looked before they came. We call this the wall of shame. And the shame is no more. <laughs> that is absolutely disgusting. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> the basement was like a cold, barren cell. Now it's the perfect place for homework and personal research. It's freaking shocking. With some of the proceeds from the yard sale, the Goods living room has been completely transformed. <laughs> Have you seen anything like this in your entire life? <laughs> the boys' bedroom has been transformed to a place where Joe, Gordy, and Gavin can finally get some sleep. Wow. Happy? Very. Great. And Marika and Dave's bedroom has been revived, from a tattered mess to a peaceful and inviting love shack that is now open for business. Oh, this. Oh, this is good, Mike. This really it looks great in here now. Yeah, it really is a boudoir, isn't it? A boot. Come on, let's go. Get out. It's boudoir. We'd like to leave you with these photographs, because honestly, if ever you feel like going backwards, say, get the photographs out. Please, please, work as a team. I got to thank my daughter, April, like, for getting us into this mess. <laughs> or actually getting us out, out, of out, of out of the mess. Out of the mess. Out of the mess, is right. Thank you, April. We've done it, haven't we? The good family just got better. You got, oh, yeah, I'll second that. <laughs> Let's go. Woo. Before they came, it was either me or the dogs. But now, it's me and the dogs. I'm studying for tests better. I'm doing my homework a lot more now. And as a result, um, my marks are a lot better. I think the family unit has teamed up. My house is organized. My children are thinking things through logically to help me. And I love them for it. Britain's queen of clean, Kim Woodburn, has taken the trip across the Atlantic to meet lifestyle expert Mike Shalou for a very special assignment. Their mission, to identify, confront, and rehabilitate messy and disorganized Canadian families who've lost their sense of pride. This time, Kim and Mike have a big job on their hands with the Edwards family, comprising mom Alexandra, dad Greg, and daughters Samantha, Shannon, and Evangeline. The Edwards are masters at creating an uncontrollable mess. It's ripped and everything. But it seems like only Alexandra feels the mess is even a problem. I don't think this is very fair that I have to pick up all this stuff again. I just cleaned all this up. Dishwasher has clean dishes and it. it's halfway done empty, but it's, it's not happening. Evie, did you bring homework home? Where is your backpack? My house is a disaster zone. It's like a hurricane has hit it and it's driving me absolutely crazy. Oh, it got jello all over our homework book and I'm the only 
person in this house who cares enough to want to do things. The kids think the clutter is funny. I am not the tiger. I am a mess maker. <laughs> and Greg isn't helping matters. Someone left the jello on the stove. It's melted. Flush her down the toilet, I guess. Because he doesn't seem to care. You've been on the computer long enough now. Whatever, man. I just got home from work. I just want to check some stuff out. Don't you notice that smell? Like the turtles? Yeah, I dare you to smell that. And I'm here all day, and I can smell it. Seriously. I don't smell nothing bad. That's disgusting. Smell it. Seriously, no, just it's smell disgusting. it. Get away from me, man. Just it smells smell like it. a sewer. And look at this dining room. Yeah, well. Like, we can't even eat here. Well, we don't eat in here anyway, usually. We eat in the kitchen. It's Whatever. like different company. And that is Edward's big issue. Everybody makes a mess, yet nobody helps mom clean it up. I live with three children. I have four dogs. My husband, he's a pack rat. I'm running out of energy. Kim and Mike are on their way to help turn this family around. Get ready, Edwards. It's time for your rude awakening. <laughs> oh, look at this carry-on. Get out. Go, go. Oh, Lord, what's going on here? Get out. Good morning, Edwards family. It's time to get your home back in order. Your house is chaotic and so are your lives. Mom, what's going on? Come out here now right. and leave the animals behind. This fat chick with a beehive on the front lawn. Up and at him, Edwards family. This is your rude awakening. Get in. Let's come go. On, come on. There's a terrible smell in this house. I'm not being rude. What is that smell? Oh, it's the shoes. Who's got stinky feet? I work for a living, honey. We don't have leopard skin shoes like you. I don't like your attitude. And don't give me a cheek. I'm going to start at the top of the house. Alexandra has revealed to Kim and Mike the family's we'll deepest, darkest secret. It's the dangerous out of bounds attic. Oh my gosh. This is. It's very disgusting. Call them. Edwards! I've already called. I know, but you're so loud sometimes. Oh, shut up, don't be so stupid. Shut up. What is all this untidiness, please? Um, just laziness, I guess. Well, now, do you know, when you say that to me, I can't tell you off, can I? What about you, though? Procrastination. And it's the dumping grounds for everything from the lower levels. And you don't like to part with things, do you? No. A bit of a pack rat. What Kim and I really want to help you out with is to have pride in your home, pride in the ownership of the things that you have in your home, and that way there's pride in the family. Let's see the rest <laughs> of the house. It gets worse and worse, you guys. Well, I gotta admit, Evie is the worst mess maker in the house. Hurricane Evie. She comes into a room and you leave her in there uh, to play for more than an hour and it's turned upside down. I don't know how she does it. It's a gift. I may as well burst your bubble. You're all messy. Well, I tidy in this house every day, at least three or four hours a day. But you don't work, do you? Um, yeah, actually, uh, I'm a cleaning lady. <laughs> that part. Huh. I clean houses for a living. I am gobsmacked. I am amazed that you are a cleaner. <laughs> because, seriously speaking, you ain't too fond of cleaning or tidying in this house, are you? Oh. I am. Where is the dining room, lovey? We'll see you It's next. right here. But, lovey, it's not a dining room, now come on. What's the couch doing there? Well, it's broken and we're just trying to fix it. And there's also an office, though, that's in this side. Yeah. But I'm seeing here turtles. Yeah. Fishies here. What's that in there? What, what? are you, what is that? Oh, my God. Look at it. That's okay. Yeah, Whoa. That's okay. I'm glad you're into little creatures, God knows. But I'll tell you this now, they don't belong on a dining room table, lovey. You've got three lovely kids. I'll tell you something, don't you think it'd be nice to eat with them at night in here? Kim and I are here to give you pride. Yeah. You know, you keep bringing up this pride, and it's really getting me upset. We do have pride, yeah. and I'm very proud of my family. No, and I, absolutely. And you keep bringing this pride thing up, right, and right. I, I don't like that. But we just want to showcase your pride. We have a beautiful family, a stunning family, okay? And there's a lot to be proud of, but we just want to make the inside of your house look like the inside of your family. Okay. Nobody helps mom with the mess, and that's led to some major frustration. Look at this. No milk again. Greg needs to start understanding why his wife is so angry, and Alexandra needs a taste of her own medicine. 
The Edwards family is living in household confusion. Oh, where is my lamp? Seriously. What lamp? Like most families, everybody is good at making a mess. Look on the ground. Maybe it's in there. But the Edwards' big issue is that nobody is willing to help mom clean it up, and dad is just as much to blame as the kids. Now, hold on. I just want to check my email. Greg needs to start helping out around the house, and Alexandra needs to stop yelling. Why is it a big deal all of a sudden? All of a sudden, because it smells so bad. I'm here all day, and I can smell it. Time for the switch. Your good lady wife is sick of you on that computer and your antics, your rudeness. You ignore her. Yeah. You are a rotter. Yes. So we're going to swap roles, dear. She's going to be you, you're going to be her. All right. And you're going to have a dose of your own medicine. Greg, it's dinner time. The children are already here. Hurry up. Just give me a minute. Did you come in here? Look, I just came back from work. I need well, to relax a little bit. I've been working all day in this house, and you don't do anything in here. And these crickets stink, and these turtles stink. OK, I work hard. Yes, look at this dust. Clean it up. OK. Embarrassing. You're barking at here. me. You're like a freaking parrot. All right, if you don't want to clean up, I'm going to clean this mess up. Get out of the way. Excuse me. Okay. You need to calm down a little bit. Just don't tell me to calm down. Look at this! I just spent 12 hours at work. Hour I had all work. these customers coming up to me, and I had to like smile the whole time. Whoa, time. whoa, oh, whoa doing settle down. What is it? Do you know you're giving us a headache? What lesson have you learned from this, Greg? Let's be honest. Oh, seriously. I feel like he's uh, she's, not, she's not being part of the family. He was ignoring our, our need. Our so you felt together. that the, the husband's a wee bit unreasonable? He was a little bit, I acknowledge. He had a hard day at work, he needed some time alone, but he had more than enough time. Now, how did you feel as the husband? How did you feel? Oh, my ears were really hurting. And if I sound like that, I apologize, but... So, it's been a good lesson you've learned, and I hope you can improve yourselves. This is going to be harder than expected. It's time for Kim and Mike to regroup. There's so many different issues in this family. Oh, no, tell me. That dining room? It is a mess. It's a zoo, dear, isn't it's, it? It's a big zoo. Who has that many animals in a dining room? Well, they do. Well, and she's always tired. Are you, are you shocked? Well, no. The father certainly should be doing more. The father does work a lot, though. So does the mother. She goes out to work and has three children. Right. But she needs help, lovey. No, come on now. If they all mucked in with her, they're old enough to do little chores, like doing their beds and, and bringing their clothes down to the wash. Come on now. You know, I love those. I really do. Do you? You really like them, do you? They're my favorite set, for sure. Well, really? Yeah. You've never said, you've never said. The pearls. Oh, the pearls. <laughs> if Greg and the kids are gonna start helping out around the house, they need to have the tools to succeed. Mm. Luckily, they've got access to some expert advice. I realize you're very enthusiastic, especially you, little one. Try and hold back. I'm going to show you little terrors how to make a proper bed. And make sure that you get to the corner so the mattress goes into the corner of it. I can't lift it. No, yeah, I know, darling, because you're, you're a I realise that. Let me have a look. We will not give up. Meanwhile, Mike and Greg are tackling the Edwards' smelly shoe problems. Right. So before we put the shoes away, mm -hmm. I like to use the fabric refresher. It's a little quick spray into your shoes. Here we have flat sheet. Now, two inches in from here, you grab a piece, take a straight line, wrap it over, miss the triangle. Well done. Now, tuck that under. Tuck it under as tight as you can get it. It's wonderful, you know. Was that hard? No. Are those for work shoes? Yeah, those are bad. Honestly. Yeah, they're bad. They're bad. They're bad. They're, okay. bad. they're bad. They're bad. So let's get those. Even little girls smell. <laughs> Shoes. Oh. Yeah. Okay, good. Right. I see, you know, you're recycling. Well, you're not really, because it should be in three bins. It's in one. Right. We don't want this big monster here. I'll give you a hand. Get on the end of that, and let's get it out in the garden. All's going to be explained. The children must get involved. Okay. The eldest one is to be responsible for glass, because I don't want kiddies handling glass, right? So, glass. The two little ones, they can decide whether one wants plastic and one wants the newspapers. It's up to, up to them. Right, right. Fine. We're not expecting them to do it every night. Kids are kids. So it gives them responsibility, <laughs> makes them realise that mum works hard, mum's cooking for them. This is, and it just makes them feel that they're, they're part of the community. Right. Give the kids some responsibility. Organisation, you see. A bit of bribery, and you've cracked it, girl. Mm. 
But even if the rest of the family does start pitching in on a regular basis, they'll still need to deal with their attic. I'm just so embarrassed about it. It's something I hide. It's not something I tell anybody. Nobody's ever gone up there. Kim and Mike have a plan to get the Edwards to finally clean up their embarrassing attic once and for all. What we're going to do is, Kim and I are going to give you three minutes. Three minutes to go up to that attic and collect your treasures. I want them all to come down here. You got it? You have three minutes starting now. Go, go. <laughs> come on, hurry up. Go and prepare, dear. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes. Go on. I can't play my basketball picture. Hey, Samantha, do you want this one? If this family thought that Kim's rude awakening was a surprise, then this is going to be a real shocker. The Edwards family loves to make a mess. I don't think this is very fair. But their big issue is that nobody is willing to help mom clean it up. You know, if you would help me out every once in a while cleaning up this place, then it wouldn't look like this. Kim and Mike want the Edwards to stop their hoarding and start helping each other out. Go. So now the family is on a mission to uncover their most prized possessions from the attic. Go. Come on, let's go. Kim and Mike will decide what to do with whatever is left behind. I see. That looks like you found some gear, doesn't it? Yeah. So mm. I would presume that everything else up there is not wanted. <laughs> no. No. Oh, no! Your dad and I are going up those stairs. We're going to get stuff you don't want. Oh. And we're going to dispose of it, aren't we? No, no, no! Right, Dad's found quite a few things to get rid of. Not Annie! This is your precious Daddy. stuff for years. Just a granny old doll. Well, it's Annie. They've played with her for a long yeah. time. No. I want my doggy. You had an opportunity. Come on, Greg. All right. Come on. Kim, help them bring this stuff down right now. Uh, Woo! Okay. Here we go. This is it. Goodbye. Jump! In amongst the junk in the attic was a doll that had been passed down through the years. And Greg has unknowingly grouped it with the garbage. I didn't know that was uh, <laughs> one of the girls' favorite dolls, apparently. It was looking a little rough, but uh, apparently it was something that shouldn't have been burned. That was a really hard moment for me because that doll was the one that Samantha had as a baby and Shan had as a baby and Evie had as a baby. He didn't realize how sentimental it was to us. The Edwards have learned a valuable lesson. Uh, let's salute. Ready? Come on. Having too much stuff can lead to treasured items being accidentally thrown away. See you later. To a new start. Come on. To a new start. Clearly, though, the attic isn't the only disorganized area of the house. Can I have a drink of milk, too? Part of the reason why Alexandra is always running behind is that even the simplest things seem to take forever. Kim's solution, focus on one task at a time. That's dishwasher right now. I'll bet you a pound that is not cleaned out. <laughs> no, it's not. How long do you reckon it takes you to clear that dishwasher out? Half an hour, oh, maybe. Oh, you can't take that, dear. If you get straight on with it, it's about three minutes. I, honestly, I reckon three to three four minutes. minutes. Fifteen oh. minutes, maybe. No, 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 not... Just, hang on a minute. I'm setting on three. Right, start. Now, come on. Now, just normal, normal speed. Half an hour. Clean the house in that time. While Kim gets Mom started on the dishes, Mike is helping the kids clear the air a little. Here we go. What do you think? Cool. Smell? Smells good. Smells good, right? It'll take away that smell of the fish water. Let's light it up, girls. Perfect. Let me know how it it's smells. So oh, <laughs> fire. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the kitchen. Done? Almost. There. Two and a half minutes. <laughs> now, the wonderful micro. Gosh, it's a wonderful thing to have, isn't it? Let me open this. A little bit soiled, normal, but it's grubby because you use it a lot. Trust me, there's no problem. You just take a glass bowl that'll take the heat. You boil a kettle and fill it half full. Okay. Now, I happen to have a lemon in my pocket by some miracle. I do all these things. I'm going to take three or four generous slices, you know, I mean, a good third of an inch thick, so I've used half the lemon, and I'm going to throw it in the hot water. And all you do then is you stand the bowl in 
here. Bro. Close up your micro. Get it going. Now. Well, don't... for how long do you think ah, it should be on? I think three or four minutes, because we've got three, three because I've already put hot water in this, get okay. it kicked off. But what it does is, all the steam releases any dirt that's on this, so it's so easy to clean. It's steamed and warm, and it's got a beautiful fragrance in there. And you open it up, and you... The lemon is beautiful, and it wipes off so easy with a paper towel or a cloth because the steam's loosened everything. That's, that's all you need. And for the smelly pet problems, Mike has an idea to keep the air odor-free. Having a dog pound in the laundry room is a little odd. Well, it kind of smells back here, you know. OK, solving your problem. Oh, oh, OK? Good. All right? This will make all your stinky air go away. You simply just plug it in. Yeah. And it's ready to go. So when everybody walks through the laundry room, we get that smack of fresh air right in your face. Bam! The Edwards now know what they need to do to keep their house neat, tidy, and smelling fresh. But can they bring it all together in the attic for Kim and Mike's final challenge? For almost 10 years, you've hardly used any of this. It's mostly you good stuff. You, yeah, you, 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 oh, don't blame it on your kids. Give it to the chat. <laughs> Look. Give it to the charity shop, some of the kids will benefit. Yeah. But if your kids have had no few years without it, they don't want it, do they? Yeah. Give it to other kids who've got no toys. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Fabulous idea. Kim's final challenge to the Edwards is to clear out their house and attic by filling 50 boxes in 24 hours. With patients wearing thin, this task could be too much to handle. They were going to have to, like, help us here doing all this ourselves. It's just been so stressed. This has been so stressful for me. I never, ever want to go through this again, ever. Yeah, let's not let it get this bad again. We'll never have to go through it again. So, you know, they keep going on about, you know, we're not proud. We are very proud. That's why we kept this attic a secret. None of my friends have ever been up here. My mom and dad have never been up here. My sisters. No. My own kids haven't been up here in six years, you know? And that's why that whole doll thing happened when Greg came up here. I secretly stashed that doll away, and he comes up here, and he burns the damn thing. Do you know? She's volatile. I think you're being polite. Jen's crying in her room because baby Eddie I'm taking five. Let's go. It used to be that everybody in the Edwards family made the mess bigger, but nobody would help clean it up. Can't you just listen to me for once? Since Kim and Mike's arrival, the whole family has started pitching in. This can go. And now they're dealing with their biggest challenge of all. Fill 50 boxes in 24 hours and get them out of the house. It's been very rough. Emotionally, I'm totally drained. The transition hasn't been an easy one. But the family is banded together, and the results are making the whole ordeal worth the pain. Wasn't that hard to get rid of the junk once you're faced with it, you know? Just need the motivation to do it. There you go. That's all for now. I've been chucking a lot of things and donating a lot of things, so that feels good. This is going straight to the Salvation Army. All this little pile, and the stuff on the back is going to St. Vincent Paul. OK, thanks a lot. No problem. All right. 50 boxes, 24 hours, mission accomplished. And just in case the Edwards had forgotten how bad things once were, Kim and Mike have prepared a wall of shame. Take a look. Oh, that's awful. Before, the attic was filled to the brim. But after removing 50 boxes of junk, there's no more risk of treasured items being tossed out with the trash. Wow. Evie, can you find your bedroom in there? That's, that's just my bedroom. Evie's room was cluttered with toys and clothing scattered everywhere. Now it's organized perfectly and everything has a place. And the dining room, once a stinky, ill-placed habitat for a slew of animals, no longer smells and is people-friendly too. Alexandra, are you pleased we came? Yes. Yesterday, I wish I had never called. <laughs> <laughs> You've done a lot. You, you worked jolly hard, haven't you? Uh, I'm actually, like, proud to open my door now and let people Aww. look into my room before I was like, please don't come in there. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want you to really enjoy your lovely organized home. The stress is gone, the family is at peace, and even little Evie is pitching in. Thank you. Alexandra doesn't have to tackle this mess alone anymore. And that's putting everyone at ease. Wow, look at this. Thanks, guys. 
Kim's Rude Awakening has worked wonders. How do you like the new dining room, Evie? Good. Yeah? Yeah, there's a lot more space in here, eh? I'll tell you what, for all the moods and hissy fits, they did all the, the tidying, they organized the whole house. Yeah. The dining room was put together. Yeah, lovely. I want us to make a promise, never have it looking like this. Okay. So do you promise? Yeah. Pinky swear. I promise. Promise. <laughs> <laughs> At least Kim can't get rid of the dogs, and I'm very happy about that. Everything else, I think I'm ready to let go. Domestic goddess Kim Woodburn is traveling the world with lifestyle expert Mike Shalou on a very special assignment. Their mission, to identify, confront, and rehabilitate messy, disorganized families and bring pride back into their homes. This time, Kim and Mike are hoping to create some beautiful music with the Tetro family, comprising Mom Leslie, Dad Mark, and kids Lucille, Felix, and Amos. The Tetros have been living in this house for eight years. While mom and dad say that this is their dream home, everything going on inside makes it feel more like a nightmare. Along with running this household gone wild, Mark and Leslie are professional musicians in a major symphony orchestra. I work almost every single day. I almost never get a day off. Stop! And any spare time they do find... Get out of my room! ...is spent trying to keep their kids... Ow! ...from tearing the whole house apart. Stop it! I don't want to feel like I'm terrorizing the children, but they do have to realize there are responsibilities and there are certain expectations. Come here. But the kids don't listen because mom and dad don't practice what they preach. I think it's fair to say that I'm not a good example of neatness and tidiness. They look at my room where all my clothes are and they probably think, well, she doesn't keep her room clean. Why should I keep my room clean? It's gotten so bad that there's just clutter everywhere. It's like this uncontrolled mess and I swear to God it multiplies in the dark. But really, the Tetro family's big issue is that mom and dad set a terrible example for everyone and nobody is being held accountable for their actions. Tears don't work, yelling doesn't work, nothing works. Now, Kim and Mike are heading to see the Tetros Mom and Dad are about to get a crash course in leading by example. It's time for a very rude awakening. Good morning, Tetro family. It's time to get your home back in order. Your house is chaotic and so are your lives. Mark and Leslie, we're going to teach you to lead by example. Up and at them, Tetro family. This is your rude awakening. Go, I know, go. Come on. Don't be, don't be so bossy all the time. You're, you're the one that's bossy. Don't speak to me like that. What is this room used for? This is the family room. Unfortunately, these guys and their toys have just taken over not only this room, but the entire house. Do you boys do your homework and stuff in here? Yeah. Where? On that table. How can you do your homework on that table and on a square inch of space? Lucille, do you do homework there? Not in here, there's no room, though. There's no room because you three kids have messed the home up, haven't you? How can you bear this? How can you bear this, you three? Now, Mark, as the daddy of the house, do you think that um, you're not as strict as you should be with the children? You don't want to be yelling at them constantly. Wouldn't bother me. It bothers me a bit to, to have it? so much tension. I would like to have our house be a peaceful place. Peaceful. And... It's a good job you three do not live with me. Because I'll tell you why I punish you good. Yes. Shut your face, you. Okay. Have you seen what I've done to this room? I know. I'm... Shut up. OK. Have I worried you a bit? Good. What is this room? This is my office. This is your office? This is the nerve center of the operation right here. It's getting on my nerves. This is the most unorganized office I have ever seen in my entire life. Wow. You're a nice man. You're a shocking example. If their room looks like that and your room looks like this, like father, like son, you have to lead by example. Sit in a nice, clean environment, because then the children can't say, look at your room, say, I've done mine, go on. Oh, there Love you it. go. Until you ah. do that. Getting through? Get it through. is. Good! Let's go. Although we'd never get through. Come yep. on. Come on. Come on. This is not a dressing room, it's a dump! <laughs> What is this mess in here? 
I have a very rough system in place where I can get by. I know you don't like it. I, I can see by your face. Yeah, I don't. I don't like it. But if I you hate not, it. Yeah, but if you hate it and you're unhappy, why do something about it, lovey? I have actually threatened to go rent myself a studio apartment just so I'd have a place to go. <laughs> now, sad you? Well, it's really getting to you, this, isn't it? It is. It's really, it has. It's driving me crazy. What, it's driving me. I here. have been in tears. I have been hysterical. I have tried. But then I don't like screaming and nagging because it doesn't seem to work. First of all, you have got to do this by example. Mm -hmm. Parents lead the way in the way they behave. You're all going to have to muck in, and you're going to have to know when to be a mum and when to be a friend. Because yeah. right now, mum and dad are backing out of this. You're right. And look at the price you've paid Nobody emotionally. Else. We really can't continue like this. Though. There's too many things in life to have tears over. This yeah. isn't one of them that you can rectify. And a proud family has a proud home. That's right. The love nest. It goes on and on. Do you know, how can you sleep in a room like this? There's no romance. It's not romantic at all. Yeah, but you know something? I could make it romantic. No, 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 no. Good. Oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> this is really untidy. Oh, it's like an obstacle course. No, no. Why are you going in here? Yeah, I'm looking at the room. Look, I look at all this. <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? Oh, they've got to get going in the stream, haven't they? Come on, get out. Don't fall. I will not fall. You stop bullying me all the time. I just want to help you. All right! Take your hands off me, unless you're invited. Which you might be. The Tetros may have their careers on track, but their family life is hitting a very sour note. The whole environment of the house right now is not very good. The mess upstairs bothers me so much, it's like I seclude myself to my room. It's overwhelming, really overwhelming. And the fact that it bugs me and makes me tear my hair out doesn't seem to matter. This has got to change. Kim and Mike are sitting the family down to see if they have as much pride in their home as they do in their music. Leslie, Mark, I want you to close your eyes. Now you're on stage, the spotlight is on you, everything's fantastic. You're happy, aren't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you feel proud? Totally proud. Absolutely. And now open your eyes. Do you have the same pride in your home as you do when you're on the stage? No. No, not at all. Domestic diplomats Kim Woodburn and Mike Shalou are caught in the middle of one very unnatural disaster. Ow! Everywhere you look in the Tetro family's home, it looks and sounds like a war is underway. I give up. I surrender. <laughs> the big issue? Mom and Dad set a bad example for their kids. And by avoiding confrontations with their children. Come on, boys, time to get dressed. Oh, I couldn't. Mark and Leslie are actually doing more harm than good. Yeah. Kim and Mike have a plan to clean up this hostile territory and start making the whole family accountable for their actions. Oh. Kim and I really want to fix all these issues for you. Kim and Mike are helping the Tetros understand that there's a problem, and now they have to deal with it. Time for the switch. It's role reversal. What it means is you are the mother and father. I love that. We want you to take your parents up to their bedroom and we want you to get them to tie to that room as it should be. Tell them, do this, do that. Be firm. Firm. I think we should move the bed a little bit and sweep up. Dad, you need to clean off your dresser because I don't know how you can keep track of anything there. And, Mom, you should tackle these books. Where do we put it? You guys have to get some boxes to put your stuff in, because after all, it is your stuff. Yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah. These three boxes all have purposes. <laughs> the stuff you want to keep, the stuff that you want to throw out, and the stuff that you want to give to someone else. Where do we start? One thing at a time. 
John. Oh, you kids. This is John my kids. Party. If you've already read a book, unless it's really good, you shouldn't keep it because you're probably not going to read it again. Well, let me finish one job at a time, okay? Do your job. It's just ridiculous. You're going to get spanking. This role reversal has really kicked things into high gear. But now the Tetros need to put those lessons into action. Kim and Mike may have some trouble making that happen. How are we doing then, Mike? I feel as though this family has no direction whatsoever. Oh, no, no, no. We need to get into that house and divide and conquer. I'm taking the mum to a dressing room next because it's dreadful. What are you going to do? I'm going to take Mark downstairs. Yeah. Into that office mm. and get some sort of structure happening down there. Well, all I can do with the kids is I'll put the three kids Oof. in the family room and hope they can get started. Good luck with those children. This is the biggest challenge we've had. Yeah, but we're going to do it. Is that a new lip gloss? I don't wear lip gloss. What do you mean? I have a natural sheen to my mouth and a fullness. In fact, I have been called Miss Kissable before now. Let's get to work. If Mark and Leslie ever want to get control of their lives again, they need to deal with the big issue of setting a better example for their kids. Yeah. Starting point, Leslie's dressing room. You see, I look at this wardrobe and I'm in utter horror. This wardrobe is like a tin of sardines, dear. It is crammed full. Oh, God, help me. And so oh, I can see you've got some very, very expensive clothes. You are wrecking them. Right now, they're getting creased. Another thing you're doing wrong, they're suffocated. Wool has to breathe. Silk has to breathe. That couldn't breathe if its life depended on it. Watch this here. They've got to be at least, my love, three quarters of an inch apart. It enables the cloths to breathe. Now, I cannot believe in this room there's not lots you don't want, because I suspect that deep in the dungeons, you haven't seen this stuff in years. You're right. So give it to your best friend, or to go to the charity shop. People are getting benefit of what you don't want. Oh, yeah. And getting you a lovely dressing room and an adorable office. While Leslie gets to work, Mark is dealing with his own chaos-filled room. Let's start very simply. Yes. Personal. Aha. Uh -huh. Business. OK. Let's say it together. Personal. Personal business. business. Yes. This is just step number one. Oh, man. <laughs> We're going to be here for a while, aren't we? Definitely business. Personal. Business. Business. Personal. Bills. There's a lot of envelopes I'm realizing that I never even opened yet. So why is it there's such a pileup of all this mail? It's because of the internet. I don't even need to open my envelopes to pay my bills. When you're paying your bills, there's a little box. It's just like one of those little check boxes. Mm -hmm. And it says, do not mail me anything. Check that box, and 80% of this clutter would be gone. Promise me that you can do this every day. Can you do it? I think it's important to set a good example for my kids, so I'm going to buckle down and do it. The Tetro family may make beautiful music together, but with mayhem all around them, their home life is anything but harmonious. The Tetro's biggest problem is that mom and dad set a terrible example. And that may be too much for Kim and Mike to help this family overcome. Don't throw it. Stop it. While Mark and Leslie finish cleaning up their areas, Kim is getting the boys started on a project of their own. Who is responsible for all the stuff on this table? He is. Yes. We'll wait and see. See these two big trunks? We've got you one each. The things you want to keep, put in your trunk. The stuff you know you just both do not want. Put it in that box there. Come on, boys, we'll never get clear, darlings. Honey, you're so slow. Whose is this? Have you done all this? Don't throw it. Stop it. Show a bit of speed. But you get a wiggle on. So now you've got a homework table, haven't you? But this is the rules. All the toys you get out to play with, you put back in these storage boxes. Leave any toys out, your father's going to confiscate them. Well, Kim may have got the boys started, but now they have to work with their sister to organize the entire living room. This could be interesting. Whoa! It looks like the boys' tempers of mass destruction are about to be unleashed. Bitch. Don't stop. Felix is terrorizing his sister, 
and anything that Lucille throws away, Amos just picks out of the trash. Not garbage! It's all garbage. No, stay in here and clean, Bo. It's time for Dad to step in. Why don't you be a little nicer to Bo? I don't want to work with them. They're not working with me. They just keep taking stuff out of the charity and garbage. This job needs to get done, and you need to be more cooperative. Are you listening to what I'm yes, saying? Yes, I am. Sorry. I was just kidding. Meanwhile, Mom Leslie is still in the midst of getting her overflowing dressing room organized. Now, natural fibers, this is the deal. Your cashmere, your wools, your cottons, your silks, and so on. They're lovely. They're very prone to moths. A moth would lay eggs in a sweater. They are so tiny, you will never spot them. Oh, gosh. Tell you how you kill them. You take a plastic bag, can be smaller or larger. You buy the size of it that you need. Mm -hmm. Pop it in there, my love. Wrap it like that. Now, you put that in your freezer. My freezer. All night. Oh, my goodness. In with the meat, dear. If there's any eggs in there, they will die. No kidding. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to show you one more thing. Cedar. Cedar's Moths great. hate cedar. Mm. You've got many alternatives. I've taken a cedar essential oil, and I got this spray, and I filled it. Always do that, mm -hmm. because oil must separate to the right. top. And then I sprayed these about half an hour ago. Just paper towel, cheap and cheerful, my love. I just punch a hole in. I fit it over the hanger, my love. I do it about every fourth or fifth hanger, and that's enough cedar to keep them at bay. I'm going to leave you to it. All right. If you get stuck, give me a call, but you shouldn't, because I've told you most things you need to know, haven't I? Yes. All right. Get on with it, dear. Get on. Boy, stop it. Back in the living room, the boys won't focus, and the cleanup is at a dead halt. Felix, you're supposed to be sorting. Why aren't you sorting? Dad's going to have to lay down the law. Nothing. Quit yelling. I don't want to hear about it. Dad's got his hands full. Kim and Mike need to step in and help Mark out. You've got to put your foot down, Dad, haven't you? I try. What? My foot's been coming down all morning. Look, <laughs> boys, will you get off your bums and get working? Please. If I come in here one more time, you're doing nothing. There's going to be repercussions. There's going to be blood on the walls. Get on! The only way to turn this family's fortunes around is for Mark to take Kim and Mike's advice and start leading by example. Things are really beginning to change. The boys are helping out, and the entire family is on the road to success. This is not a dressing room, it's a dump. You have to lead by example. Getting through. It is. Good. The Tetro family has undergone a very rude awakening. I'm glad you're putting your head down with shame. For the past three days, the family has been working hard to clean up, clear out, and get along. Mom and Dad have been leading the way for their kids, and it's starting to sink in. I'm going to lead this family by example. But they're not done yet. Are the Tetros ready for Kim and Mike's final challenge? Hey, guys. Family. This Whoa. is unbelievable. This actually looks like a family room. Does your heart good to see this? You know, it's wonderful, honestly. We're not quite finished yet, though. We want you to invite some of your friends round later on today. We want you to have a bit of a musical afternoon. Oh. Open this room up, bring your friends in, play a concert to them, and it'll prove to you an organized home. It's a happy home. The best challenge yet? Come on. We'll be back. Thanks. Get going. Get Thank going. You. Okay, well, we've done a lot of work in here and straightened up, and you guys should be proud of yourselves because you've done a good job. But we're not done. We've got guests coming over tonight, and so we've got a few more tasks that we have to accomplish. Now, boys, what I'd like you to do is make a kind of program. You know how, like, when you come to a concert, there's a program? Yeah. Something like that. Okay, and Amos, do you think you can help Felix with some good ideas for the program? Yep. Okay, and Lucille, we need to make some hors d'oeuvres so you and I can work together on that. You guys all know what you're going to do? Yeah. Right, what's the last thing we're going to do? We're going to have fun tonight, huh? And celebrate yeah. our hard work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In the past, the Tetros would never dream of inviting people inside. Now they're coming together as a family and working together as a team. They've even thrown out the old stuff and bought some new furniture. And while the programs are rather unique... I love that. And those hors d'oeuvres do look a little bit suspect. Oh. There's no fighting, 
no confusion, and most noticeably, no mess. And just in case there's any question about the transformation made so far, Kim and Mike have prepared photographs of the family on the Wall of Shame. These are the pictures of your home when we arrived. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my yeah. God. It's a grim story, isn't it? I am speechless. What? Wow, this is astonishing. That is appalling. I can't believe you guys were so dirty. By the way, Dad. Yeah? That? Yeah! <laughs> I can't believe that I could ever find anything in that. Before their rude awakening, Mark and Leslie's bedroom was a jumbled mash of papers and laundry. Now, relaxation and romance are definitely in the air. It's everybody's mess, you know? We were just as much to blame as the kids. You, we can blame it on the kids, but hey, that's my dressing room. Leslie's dressing room was so full of clothing that you could barely walk in the door. But it's been transformed into a sanctuary where Leslie can take some time for herself. It's amazing that the house looked like that just a few days ago, and now it's really, really clean. We ought to keep that just as a gentle reminder, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the living room looked more like a landfill. However, the whole family helped to revive it, and now everyone is reaping the rewards. Oh, well done, darling. Nice work, buddy. Hello. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Welcome to the Tetro Family Musical Party. Today we will be playing music with Hometown Bluegrass. We hope you enjoy this cool new home. Yeah. Very good. Kim's rude awakening has worked. The Tetro family is finally taking pride in their home and in themselves. Beer for you. Oh, oh nice. Yes. You get the mug of honor. You see there, there's a, oh, a tuba player on that mug. Oh, oh, thank nice. you very much. Oh, it's something cold. It's thank you nice very much. much. Cheers, Kimmy. Cheers, my love. This has been a good exercise for my family. We learned to work together. It took some fighting with each other to get through it sometimes, but I think the kids especially realize that we can take on a project and do it together, and I think we'll be able to keep this up. We done good. Good pickings. Queen of Clean, Kim Woodburn, is traveling the world with lifestyle expert Mike Shalhoub on a very special assignment. Their mission, to identify, confront, and rehabilitate messy, disorganized families and bring pride back into their homes. This time, Kim and Mike have a massive job on their hands with the Gallia family. Comprising Dad Mark, Mom Deborah, Mark's daughter Marika, and son Benjamin. Ten years ago, Mark pulled his house apart to do renovations, but he's never completed any of the jobs, which has left it looking more like a construction site. You know, I'm a nice, neat guy underneath. This is just an illusion. <laughs> Living this way is pretty difficult. You adjust, you do, but not happily. Although the Gallias would love to have people over, the mess makes it next to impossible. We can't really bring anybody into the place. <laughs> and, and I really like, you know, I, I like entertaining. But the ongoing renovation has left the Gallias without any room that functions as it should. Most of the time I don't think about the fact that I'm washing Ben in the same tub that I wash the dishes in. But when I do think about it, uh, it's kind of worrying. You do wonder what's lurking in there. The state of the house is too much for Marika, and she's ready to leave. It wouldn't be a problem for me to stay with my mom all the time. My mom would love that. But Marika worries about what that would mean for her baby brother, Benjamin. This is my baby grabbing scissors. You know, I just want things to be better for him. He's the one that's going to have to live in this house his whole life. With so much work left undone, the problems are piling high, and that is the Gallia's big issue. Projects get started and never get finished. Kim and Mike need to save this family. Get ready, Gallias. Here comes a very rude awakening. Good morning, Gallia family. It's Kim and Mike here. We're here to sort you out. Your house is topsy-turvy and your lives seem to be a big mess. You start off thinking you never finish, things are gonna change. Gallia family, this is your rude awakening. Let's go, Kim. Oh, get to coming. 
I'm standing in a room, I don't know what it is. Could you enlighten me? Because I've got a bed here, but I've got a, a, a living room fireplace there. We've got an aquarium in the corner. We have our computer room over here. So, yes. What would you describe this room as? A uh, convenient living space. Convenient? You know, you may think you're funny, but I don't find you amusing. We're here because we have her tell that you're a starter, not a finisher. Am I right? Yeah. Because you've done nothing for years, have you? It's taken a while getting around to some stuff, yeah. <laughs> What about this poor child? Do you bring your friends in here? No. Oh. Obviously not, right? No. <laughs> yeah. Whenever they ask, I have too much shame. No, not my house. Oh, oh boy. What breaks your heart? I've brought people home, and it's strange, because you walk in, and almost before you reach the door, you just want to say, I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. Joe, Kim, wait, wait. You're going to die. OK, hold oh, on. Let me make some room. Just a minute. All right. Kim, can you see everything OK? Very nice to me, love. I'm not complaining. OK. No, no, all right. What's this room? This is the master bedroom. And um, why haven't you moved into it? It looks fairly well turned out. Why hasn't it moved in? It's not completely finished. Like, the lighting fixture was one thing I wanted to do. So you're telling me you have stayed in that room for the sake of fixing that? That's basically where it boils down. Can I, yeah. look, I'm not, look, I, look, I'm not a doctor. But you're nuts! Some would say. What is this room? This is their playroom? What? No. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Guys, can you please come in here, please? We're trying to figure out what room this is. It's our kitchen. Well, you've got no floor for a start. You've got a subfloor. It's a subfloor, yeah. OK, wait, wait. We're missing a fridge as well. Yes, it's in the other room. It's out there. Right. Yeah. What is this pipe sticking out of your sauna? What is it? Well, that's where the sink goes. Can I ask you a question? It might seem obvious to you, it's not to me. Where do you wash your dishes? Mm, I can show you. Here. Are these dishes drying in the bowl here? Yes, they are. So where do you wash them then, lovey? In the bathtub. We need to talk. I mean, we really do. I... This family has got some real issues. It's time for Kim and Mike to regroup. We've got to restore this house so that they can enjoy it. It can be they, they can they can enjoy what they've got. And little Marie can bring her mates in. See, I feel sad about that. We have to divide and conquer. Yeah, you can have him. I'm not even asking. No patience for him. I feel like smacking him right in the chops. Well, what are but... you going to do with her? Well, I'm going to take her with a baby. I'm going to give her advice on that. Then I will take the father and I'm going to teach him how to start a project and finish a project. Well, good luck to you. More tea, doll. Yes, thank you so much. Do you know, Matt, you are really a gentleman, aren't you? Thank you. Uh, I Thanks. wish at times, though, and don't take this wrong, oh. that you could be a little bit rough, you know, a little bit rough edges and stuff. You wouldn't be able to handle me. But I could try, couldn't I? I mean, I, I would like to try if you'd let me. <sighs> Right now, daughter Marika is powerless against her father's ever-growing house of junk. I just recently came back from camping, and I found my dad's car radiator on my bed that he was fixing yeah. because he says he couldn't find a surface to work on. So he used my bed. But today, the balance of power is going to shift. It's time for The Switch. Your daughter, who I think has got a massive brain here and knows how to use it, <laughs> and since she's the one that's fed up of never bringing friends home, she's the boss right now. We've made her the boss. We want to get your bedroom back as a master bedroom. And you've got to fix that light, haven't you? So we get all that done. Oh, it's called work. Ourselves? Yes, you've got to get off your bum, dear. Let's go. All right, guys. This is the plan. First, you, Deb, are going to start packing boxes. You are going to go and get that light fixture from the closet that's been sitting there for years, and you're going to put it up once and for all. Ready? Get started. Everything out. Clear a space for yourself. In and out. We're going to show you that what we haven't done in years, we can do in a few hours. So let's go. You're absolutely right. Step up and down the stairs. Come on. Pack it up nice and high. Make your trip sufficient. The Galleons are living in an almost uninhabitable home. Like most families, everyone has an excuse. The dishwasher's here, just in a box. But the Gallia's big issue is that no project ever gets finished. Because you've done nothing for years, have you? 
Kim and Mike want the galleys to learn how to finish things that they've started. We gotta change things up around here a little bit. So now the family is attempting to turn their junk room back into a master bedroom. Let's move it out so we have some quick chips. Daughter Marika is taking charge. Those are day-to-day -day used clothes that should be hung up in the closet. We're hanging them up in the closet now, despite the fact they've been in the bag for months? Yep. Years? Because it should have been done a while ago. We're doing everything today. This exercise is getting things done, but is Deb's ego getting in the way? It can be a little bit uh, different having a 14-year-old telling you what to do. Obviously, it's usually the other way around. Piece of luggage. Despite the animosity, Marika is maintaining her newfound authority and standing her ground. Right, are there any more Things got pretty heated. People were getting a bit irritated, a little bit pissed off. But I mean, it's all for a good cause. And it's working. After years of stalling, Mark is finally completing a project. All right, we got the light done. Light's working. Ta -da! 22 okay. minutes. How long has that been like that for, that damaged lamp? A few years. A few, a few years, years for the sake of 22 minutes. Yeah, OK, years. you know what? You've Next step, let's do the bed. Come on. Come on, let's get it going. Well, I'm somewhat embarrassed it didn't get done sooner. And now that that part of it is complete, um, I'm happy. But before the marital bed is reinstated, the floor needs a proper cleaning. Soft brush, soft to sweep with. I've taken this, I put it under a warm tap, mm -hmm. lightly warm, OK? And it's a make-do. Hold that, I'm going to tie it over here. This is all these floors take once you've had them treated. They are an absolute breeze to keep clean. I've just taken an old tea towel. Warm water. Oh, now, now, always clean your wood on grain. That, this is all I'm doing. One, bring it back, two. You never put anything harsh cleaner on here, ever, 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 ever. I'm going on the grain, my love. And you see the floor, look now like that, you'd be surprised. You take the surplus dust, that's your floor done. Let's go and get the bed in. Wonderful. Yeah, come on, let's go. All right, guys, so bring it in. After six years of separate sleeping quarters, Deb and Mark can finally share the same bed. Thanks to your daughter, you've done a jolly good day's work. You've got a bedroom. You're going to join your husband tonight? I guess I have to. Oh, you poor soul. <laughs> I'm excited. Seeing how easily the bedroom came together, Mark is eager to start tackling even more projects around the house. I've composed my list of the things that you haven't done in your home. Here we go. And these are all the things that you've started in your home and haven't finished. That's a lot of stuff. Mike's giant list is great for making a point. I like this one, stop the lazy days. But now Mark needs a practical solution for completing all of his unfinished jobs around the house. Mark, I want to give you a couple of tips to make your life a little easier so you can do things properly and get things done. First thing, to-do list. I need you to write everything down. Then you pick three items on that list, and I want you to complete them that day. Second one, do you like music, Mark? I love music. Yeah, good. I want you to be entertained while you're doing your job. So play your favorite music at all times while you're doing your job. Sounds like a great idea. Yeah? Yeah. I want you to start things, I want you to work on them, and then I want you to finish them. It's a very simple formula. Have you, do you ever read? Yeah, yeah. Start you read doing full books? Sure. Yeah, actually, I have. Start to the end? Yeah. So treat this like a book. It's a pretty big book. It's a big book. It's a horror story, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave this to you, OK? You go. Yeah. Yeah. OK? Very good. Looks fabulous. Don't wreck the list. Don't watch yourself. Watch that. Thank you. I think that the rest of the house will actually come together fairly quickly, because I've seen that it can be done. The galley is start projects and never finish them. And that's got daughter Marika ready to walk out the door. Home should be a calming place. Home should be home, right? It should feel somewhere where you're comfortable. But I don't feel that way. I walk in, and it's just a mess. We need to get on all fours. Can you manage it? I can manage it. Well, I can to get things on the right track, Kim is showing Deb how to make things safer for baby Benjamin. I want us to be at the height he's at okay. to see what he sees, you see? You see? Now, let's get round here. You're Ben, you're crawling round. What are you seeing? What are you seeing? 
Um, lots of things to get into. Dirt. Yes. Oh, dirt, dear. In the yeah, truck load, isn't there? Garbage can. Yes. Oh, you could be at the garbage can. He could be very ill. Keep going, keep going. Yes. Oh, now he is tall. He could bump right there. He's tall enough, isn't yes. he? That, I would like to bump. That is nasty. Yes. He could be hospitalised. I think these are ingenious because little soul bangs his head. He bumps it, he bumps yes. it. And he bumps it on there, especially there. This is rather sticky inside. They're very spongy. They've got an adhesive here. Any corner, sharp corner you see, that goes on there. Put your hand on that, look. If he bumped his noodle on that... Oh, wow, it's crushing. It's spongy and lovely. Yeah. He's, he might bruise, he won't cut. No, not he at all. He bumped himself on that metal. Well, yeah. By Jove, yeah. he'd be very badly yes. cut. So that's wonderful. Because we always bang our noodles, <laughs> don't we? Oh, yeah. So let's keep going, my love. Oh, oh look here, Debbie, oh, Debbie, dear. Oh, well, the bed was here for two years. Are you telling me you never clip? You lazy article. You haven't slept this floor for two years. Let's go along here. Oh, look at now, what's that attached to? Yeah. Is that is that live? Is it live? Do you know what I'm put? Are you puffed out? Oh god. <laughs> Last time I lay on the floor, it was on my honeymoon love. <laughs> oh boss. You know, you, we've all been through it, haven't we? <laughs> no. But you see now, you see, that's dangerous too. You can stick it in his eye, stick it in his ear. You know, so I've made my points, haven't I? Yes, you have. The clearer you keep this house, the safer your lovely, lovely baby's gonna be. Huh? Yes, right? honey. <laughs> you know, on a wooden floor, when it's been this has been a finished floor, yeah. if you just put this down and say to him, all right, lie on that, it slides. There is no way he'll slide all over the floor, okay? But if you buy this, mm -hmm. this is about five dollars. This is rubber. Oh, very good. Good. This doesn't slip. There you go, there. Especially if he was a baby that hadn't le le yet walked, he's sort of yep. trying to crawl. You, he couldn't go further. Down I put five, about five bucks worth. Will you, be here? Will you listen to these tips, please? <laughs> Are you listening to the tips? Thank you. I think that's yours. Now, in here, right. Yes. Try and pay attention. I am trying. We put this on here. Right. Yep. And therefore, when he's on it, oh, wow. I'm really pushing. Can I try it? Do push, please push. It won't go any further. Therefore, he's safe. Get on there and see what you think. Go on, try and push that along. Go on, can you push that along? I think he's away for I'll leave you to it. You're a terrible television presenter, you are. <laughs> so, okay, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. That wash is on a cold wash. And this wash is a good old cheap shop. Good enough, good enough. Yep. So let's whip that up. Now, I'm going to show you something else that really concerns me. Now, let me show you what I mean. He's here, that's his height. He wants his little lorry out. Yep. What you don't see is. You need to seal these off. And all you do is, in you go. Watch, go on, put it in. In it goes. Now, it's a very tight fit super. Yes. It takes an adult to pull it out. Should do, which is what the idea. He shouldn't be able to get that out. Right. I'm very concerned you don't have a face plate on here. We're safe here. We are not safe here. In fact, we are open to the elements. That is very dangerous. A child could stick a knife in there. Please, we need to go to the shop. Yesterday, we'll certainly go today and get all these face plates to make your little boy safe. Yeah. Everyone is pitching in and no surface is being left untouched. This is definitely a work in progress. I think the toughest thing to change is always yourself. But I do sincerely want to make the biggest effort that I can to have a proper living space for myself and Mark and Benjamin and Marika. If we're not all prodded and pushed by each other, I think we're going to lose motivation. And I think us working as a team is going to be essential. Things are coming along, but the Gallias have been in this position before. I'm not sure why nothing in the house gets finished. There's so much that needs to be done. It's almost like you don't know where to start. Cleaning is one thing. Making the house livable is another story. Let's see if the Gallias are ready for Kim and Mike's final challenge. We've got one last challenge for you. The final challenge. We're going away for seven days because we want you to put your kitchen in. You're going to do your sink, you're going to do your kitchen. You've got it all here in this house, haven't you? Yeah. And you said you're capable of doing it. You did the light. Yeah. So for seven days, we're going. But when we come back, you better have it darn well done. It will be done. You yeah, got the glue on this one. The Gallia family is in the middle of a week-long challenge to finish every project in their three-bedroom home, including a complete kitchen renovation. I glue the wrong side. Yeah, you got the wrong side. Huh? 
But for a family that starts things and never finishes them, this is not such a simple task. I only got so much time. And in this challenge, failure is not an option. I do not want Kim and Mike walking in here and finding this place not finished. All right. Do that and we're dead. So the Gallias have enlisted some very talented friends to keep the kitchen renovation on track. Yeah, I'm a little bit scared because we've got a deadline to meet and it seems like there's still a lot of work to do in that time. But uh, I'm scared and excited at the same time. Looking forward to it. Mark is overseeing construction, while Deb and Marika are teaming up to tackle the clutter, reorganize the rooms, and get rid of the junk. Cheese. It's peppered cheese. There's one in the minutes. But Dad's new go-getter attitude is creating some unexpected tension in the Gallia's home. Whatever I say, you do. All right. Understood? Yeah. Is it understood? Yeah, I'm understanding. Perfect. Not stupid. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. It's really frustrating when you all have ideas for how things should be done. And you don't want to hurt each other's feelings, but at the same time, you know, we want to get things done our way. My biggest fear is that we get busy and not much happens, and Kim and Mike come back at the end of the week, and we're uh, really embarrassed. But their seven days are up. Now it's time for Kim and Mike to judge whether the transformation is complete, including the kitchen sink. A week has passed, my dear. Oh, How are you doing? It passed so fast. Are you going to do any please? Yeah, I hope so. Look, I can't believe this is the same place. Oh my gosh. A floor. This is beautiful. Cabinets, a sink. The dishwasher that was there for... Six years. Six years? In my a box. Goodness. What do you think of it? Awesome. I love it. <laughs> After 10 years of making excuses for the mess, the Gallias are finally proud of their home. Let the celebrations begin. I can't believe it. <laughs> it doesn't look like the same house. It took about six years to get around to doing what was about one week's worth of work. But he got it done. The week is up. <laughs> and just in case there are any lapses in this metamorphosis, Kim and Mike have prepared photographs for the family on the wall of shame. Before their rude awakening, Mark and Deb slept in separate rooms and their bedroom was being used as a dumping ground. Now the clutter has been cleared out and the marital bed is back in business. That can't be the same house. It's, yeah. it's, one from it's like night and day. Their kitchen was unusable with no sink, no fridge, and no floor. But after seven days of hard work, the kitchen has been reinstated and dishes will be reserved for the kitchen sink alone. So that's what it used to look like. <laughs> that's what it used to look like. Yeah. I'd, I'd already forgotten. <laughs> The family room was a bedroom, an office, and a living room. But the whole family helped to revive it, and now everyone is enjoying their new living space. So enjoy your house, everybody. And thank you for the kick in the pants. <laughs> You're very welcome, dear. I can assure you. Hi, <laughs> guys. Have a nice thank party. You. Kim's rude awakening has worked. The Gallias have completed all of their unfinished projects, and now even Marika is proud to be a part of this home. We pulled a lot of all-nighters. We all worked really, really hard, so it's all <laughs> been well worth it. This really has been a miracle. I, I, I'm shocked it actually happened. We just dug down, we just started, we took one thing at a time, finished it off, moved on to the next one, and one thing led to another. Next thing you know, we're at where we are today. You're doing good, kid. Me too. Love you. Bye. Bye. Britain's Queen of Clean, Kim Woodburn, is traveling the world with lifestyle expert Mike Shalou on a very special assignment. Their mission, to identify, confront, and rehabilitate messy, disorganized families and bring pride back into their homes. This time, Kim and Mike are helping the Heard family, comprising Mom Jessica, Dad Eric, three-year-old Tessa, and baby Cole. The Herds may be a young family, but by the look of things in this house, the laundry, 
bills and boxes have been piling up for years. When I look at the mess around, I desperately want to clean it, but I don't even know where to start. With the responsibility of two young children, <laughs> every room has become a problem. And three-year-old Tessa doesn't make things any easier. I wasn't prepared for what kids bring. I, I had no idea that <laughs> turned your life upside down. The clutter kitchen is maddening for stay-at-home dad Eric, who is making meals for himself and Tessa, as well as Jessica, who is a vegetarian. I have to clean before I make anything. I need a surface, I need the stove, I need the sink. It's a frenzy. And rather than try to deal with the problems in the kitchen, Eric spends his time in the basement playing guitar. You know, my tools of the trade are artistically inclined. You'd think because Jessica's a graphic designer, she'd be organized. But her methods are scattered at best. Tables for me seem to become surfaces to put things. And so if there's a table that's empty, it's just crying out for something to be put on it. The herds are overwhelmed and that's starting to affect everyone. I feel horrible about it and it weighs on my shoulders and then the kids feel it because they know there's tension between their parents. So it affects the whole family. And that's the herd's big issue. For the sake of their kids, Eric and Jessica need to grow up and start taking their household responsibilities seriously. Kim and Mike are on their way to deliver the only logical solution to the herd's list of problems. And it's gonna come in the form of a very rude awakening. Good morning, herd family. Kim and I hear that you're acting like adolescents. You know how we're gonna live as slobs. You're gonna grow up. That's right, herd family. This is your rude awakening. How could they say that stuff about us? Oh, man. See you touching me again. I'm trying to help you you're up the stairs. You're touching all over me oh, like a cheap doesn't... suit show. Hello? Who are you? Yes, sir. Come uh, here. What do you think? It's a playpen. Have you always been untidy in this house? We had a baby, and then we moved into this house when our son was three weeks old, and things just kind of got crazy and chaotic. It's important you change your ways. Absolutely. You've got two babies now. I know, I know. And Are that's you... the motivation for doing this, good, is that good. we have two kids, good. and we want to have an environment for them that's clean and healthy, and they can run around and play, and that's the motivation. Well, here's our... <laughs> here's our what? Office dining room area. Is there this a dining is a room table, Kim? Where do you eat? Either on the couch or on the rocking chair. Among all the diapers and the wet, the wet wipes. wipes. This, this is disgusting. Keep going. Oh, the kitchen. This is gross. Aren't we the lucky ones? How do they cook in here? Oh, come on. Oh. Yeah, this is the baby's room. How old is the baby? Uh, five months. <laughs> but he sleeps in our room right now. Oh, good job he does. Where else, where else can he sleep? <laughs> Not here. Every room in the herd's home is a problem. Eric and Jessica need a dose of reality. This house kind of reminds me of a frat house. <laughs> it's very adolescent-y. We really need you to grow up. This house is a complete disaster. Kim and Mike need to plan their attack. They're great parents. They are. But they're just not very responsible. If for a young couple, they've both given up, haven't they? Well, what do you want to do? I want to take the lady around and I want to teach her to organize herself and to put things away where they belong. I'm going to take him and teach him how to be a little more handy around the house. Mike, let's get together here. They're a lovely couple. Let's really try to help them. Between the two of us, we'll get them ship shape in no time at all. With clutter all around, Tessa has no proper place to play and she even tries to clean up the mess herself. We have to clean up this. I hate the fact that she has to work around the clutter. I don't think she likes it at all. I think it weighs on her mentally. And that is leading to problems beyond their messy home. Tessa started having kind of breathing problems and I brought her to the doctor and the doctor said, you know, it's stress. I'm thinking my three-year-old has stress and I wonder if the way that the house is has anything to do with that. The herd's disorganization is having a negative impact on their kids. It's time for the switch. Now in this switch, you are gonna become Kim and I, mm. and we're gonna become you. We've given you a pair <laughs> of stilettos, and you can change into they a shirt and tie. They are rather lovely. Oh my goodness. The goal is to clean up this room to create a better environment for your children. And I have very, very high standards, so get on with it, no nonsense. Good morning, herd family. The herd family is smack dab in the middle of a very rude awakening. You know how we're gonna live a slob. Their big issue? 
For the sake of their kids, Eric and Jessica need to grow up and start taking their household responsibilities seriously. To get things started, Kim and Mike have issued the herds their first major challenge. You are going to become Kim and I, mm. and we're going to become you. Let's get this party started. I didn't put this here, and I didn't put any of this stuff on top of it. I don't have anything to do with them. <sighs> yeah, this does feel like being you guys. Eric is already having problems facing the mess. And his mood isn't being helped by Kim and Mike's over-the-top antics. All you do is make a mess. Oh, you're throwing your peels on the floor. What's that from Judy Holmes? What? I pick it up. This is why we don't have friends over. I have to clean up after you. Eric and Jessica get the point. Now Kim and Mike need to give these two some guidance. You can both move a bit faster, dear. Yeah. I can't move fast these heels. I'm taking them off. They're absolutely horrendous. So if you take them off, we're going to see you fly around, are we? No. Faster than this. Go My on then. God. I don't know how you're functioning those things. <laughs> Keep going. Are you sorting or just throwing in there? I'm putting everything in here that needs to go up to the bedroom. Well done. It's a struggle, but the room is getting cleared out. Despite the fact that Eric and Jessica can't seem to pull it together as a team. All right, I'll, I'll be a team player. Uh, look about you. I know, I can't believe it. 45 minutes. <laughs> That's so little time, isn't it? Well, well done. done. You're, you're really pulling your weight. Yeah. Jessica is starting to see the light. But Eric isn't happy with the progress so far. There's just too much. It's like barely scratching the surface. Right now, I don't feel, I don't feel much hope, honestly. The living room is a great start. But the kitchen, bedrooms, and dining room still need to be taken care of. Kim is helping Jessica get pointed in the right direction. I went around the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I gather this at Lottie, you see. For instance, where do we find that diaper? Uh, Living room? Baby's room. In the hall, dear. Guess where I found that in the worst room you can have it in? I'm thinking it was in the kitchen. Yes! Oh, yeah. you knew that. We're going to clean that. That's horrible. You could use a wooden toothpick. You could use tweezers. Whatever, sharp. All you do is go through the bristle, lovely. Look. Oh, my God. Now, watch. L oh. But you know, on a hairbrush, you can pick up bacteria, bugs, grease. In fact, you have a smell of that. Harry, I've got just a washing up liquid, my love. Mm -hmm. All we need, lovey, is honestly that, because we're up to eyeballs and soap bubbles. Okay. Into that, tea tree oil. Mm -hmm. Tea tree is a natural antiseptic. It kills bacteria. It's yes. wonderful. And it certainly killed bacteria on a brush. I put about seven drops in there. Mm -hmm. So I've got me a little bit of washing up liquid mm -hmm. and the tea tree. Oh, and it smells rather nice, doesn't it? It smells soothing. Ooh, blimey. That's done. I brought a bowl of just warm, clear water to get the soap off it. Summer day, put it on the windowsill. You can use that in about half an hour. Look, dear, look. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. So I want to put all this back in here, you see, and you know what I say, a place for everything and everything in its place. Mm -hmm. Put that where it belongs. OK. Diaper, baby's room. Oh, well done. With the other diapers. Yeah. It seemed more overwhelming at first, but once I started doing it, to kind of get into a groove, you want everything to be in the right room. It was a really good exercise to see what really belongs in the proper place. On the other side of their home, Eric is dealing with his own set of problems. As the head chef in the herd household, this guy's got his hands full. Typically, you know, I have to make a little bit of everything. And lately, I think because it's been so difficult to get around in here, I haven't been able to do that as much. Mike is coming to the rescue to put some structure to the chaos. I want to prepare this kitchen so it's spotless, so preparing food is very simple. Everyone gets fed, and everyone is happy. Sounds like a dream. Well, it'll be a dream come true. Yeah, all right. We're going to get you a little organized, OK? OK. I'm going to teach you a simple formula called PAVE. Okay. Plan ahead, visualize, and entertain. You're going to plan ahead your meals. You're going to visualize them on this board. And because Jessica is a graphic designer, she can make this a lot easier for Tessa to get involved by creating these words into icons. She can say, Dad, I want this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And then everything is done. Sounds fun. So we'll pick a starch. OK. You'd have some chicken on the side that you can throw into the pasta. For your wife, tofu. And then we throw in a vegetable, peas. So there we go. We've planned ahead, we've visualized, and now we're going to entertain. Because you're going to cook, and it's going to be very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take your word for it on that. I hope so. Eric is on the right track with dinner, 
But when it comes to being handy around the house, he's still having a hard time. Oh, man, I hate this stuff. Absolutely hate it. He can't hide his unhappiness <laughs> when he's stressed out about something. If this situation doesn't get resolved, it would lead to much more tension in the marriage. Eric and Jessica Heard are attempting to clean up their act. Kim and Mike have been helping this young family to grow up and start taking their household responsibilities seriously. Eric and Jessica want to eat together as a family, but their dining room table is covered with junk and boxes litter every inch of the floor. I don't even know everything that's in there. There's just a mishmash of stuff. But the rude awakening has Jessica empowered, and she's finally ready to tackle the mess. How are we going to start putting things in the proper room where they should be first? And then whatever doesn't have a room to go to will be going to the basement. Even if things are put in their proper place, handiwork around the house is still a problem. And Eric doesn't have the skills to deal with it. Tools and all that stuff? No, I'm not like, Rrr. yeah, those are nice tools. Can't wait to get my hands on those to fix something. Nah. Mike's plan is to help Eric get a little handier. I need you to start learning how to build. All right. So I've supplied you with a tool box. Nice. All right? Yeah, we could use that. Just in case, because I don't want you to lose your pretty face, <laughs> here are some goggles. All right. So we're going to bang up this wall, and I want you to hammer, and I want you to screw, and I want you to get everything drilled into this wall. OK? okay. Let's go. How do you do this? Come like, on. I'm feeling really clumsy. Let's hold that. Watch my finger. Beautiful. Now, screw. OK, so now that we've mastered the drill and the hammer, let's hang up your daughter's art. All right, I'm going to give it a shot here. 61. It looks like Eric is a little handier than he thought. But Mike's not done with this guy yet. So do we get to crack open a beer now? We're not cracking open a beer yet, so I'm going to give you one more job. Your next job is to go upstairs into your son's room and I want you to create a wardrobe. We have the things for you. All right, sounds good. Job well done. In just a short time, Jessica has taken the dining area through a major transformation. Now Kim is helping her deal with the dirt that lies beneath. Now, is this the table that your daughter eats on all the time? Uh, one of the two, yes. OK. I will do this, you see. Now, I'm also going to scatter a few around, and, and then you, dear, and eat off this table raw. Uh, well, you said it's spotless, didn't you? Well, yeah, it's clean enough well, if it's clean. for putting a plate on. Ah, we have it, don't we? <laughs> you know darn well that table's not clean, don't you? Well, I wouldn't put raw food on it, now. But if your little girl was eating here and she dropped a bit of food on there, you know, kids will. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'm glad you've got the grace to blush. I'm glad. You should now really be getting all the bacteria out, warm soapy cloth with tea tree oil, or a, pea, a lemon acid, get it out. The veggies on the table, it's a little bit gross, but it did make me think about the fact that I wasn't cleaning it as well as I should be. Now, now Kim is teaching Jessica how to get the table ready for a family meal. I'll tell you what I'm doing. There's tannin in tea, and the tannin is this colour. I put two or three tea bags, that's sufficient. Look at the colour of it, same colour as the table. You've got a couple of baby marks, baby scratches, where the wood's slightly lighter. The tannin, as I wash the table with it, will disguise all that. Ah. And it will not harm your table. Now, having done that, use a paper towel, go on the grain, and that's anything you do gets cleaned on the grain. Oh, the table's not been cleaned for a bit, love, has it? <laughs> because I put tannin on it, which is in tea, I don't have to put polish on, because the tannin actually polishes as well. This is a microfiber duster. To every square inch, there is many more fibers to this duster than anything you'll ever use on the market. It's a wonderful polisher. Just look at it. Look at that damn shine. It's blinding. The herd's home is getting cleaner. But there's still clutter everywhere, and it seems like the kids have taken over every room. I don't think it's working well for the kids. I don't think we have enough room. I don't think we have enough storage. Mike has challenged Eric to solve the problem by assembling a wardrobe for his son. I don't know which end is which. Is this the back or the front? But Eric has avoided the everyday practicalities of family life for too long. And now he's dealing with what has become a very emotional journey. 
It doesn't say anything about lips on here. It's, I am gritting my teeth. Grinding them. I can't explain why. I just hate it. I'm about to throw it all in the window. I really just don't care. It's just a pain in the ass. Man, I hate this shit. Oh, I want to burn this is what I want to do. I don't enjoy putting stuff together, you know, and I and I just it gets the best of me, you know? I don't know why. It's ridiculous. I'm telling you, it's like trying to energize a corpse. The man wants a clean house. That's why he can be motivated. I believe you can motivate him. You're right. You can't give up on these things. We can won't you? we won't give up. Let's go. But it can be done, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it can be You're done. Right. All right. The progress has been slow, but everyone seems to be coming along. But Kim and Mike want to test how far they have really come. We've got one last challenge for you. Only one now, Eric. Don't let him pull a face. We want you to gather as a family should round your table. We want you to bring a couple of friends in. Eric will do the cooking. Any advice you want, Michael, he's the expert on laying tables. We want to see you sit together at a table and make a habit of doing it. A little test of needs now at this age. I know, what? I'm just a little nervous. What have you done today? <laughs> Why are you nervous? Well, well she's just not know, used to doing it. it. Ah, do you've it. got to start sometime. Uh, I know, I know. But if Jessica should be nervous about anyone, it's her husband, Eric. That's because he struggled with nearly every task throughout this rude awakening. Isn't it okay to hate doing this and just be angry about it? Now the fate of the final challenge lies in Eric's hands. Yeah, I know. All right. For the sake of their kids, Eric and Jessica Hurd have been digging in deep to put their messy ways in the past. Start with clothes. Their final challenge? We want you to gather as a family should round your table. But for a family who needs to grow up and start taking their household responsibilities seriously, this is easier said than done. Before their rude awakening, the Herd's home was hardly a place for social gatherings. And the mess was starting to affect Eric and Jessica's relationship. If we wouldn't have called for help, Jessica and I would have had to deal with some pretty heavy-duty confrontation. But the Herd's are learning that it takes little steps every day to keep the house tidy. And Eric is seeing that tackling small projects can be a rewarding experience for everyone. Ooh, that looks good. Once you get to the other side, you see some light. You know, it always helps you know, brighten your mood. In order to have any hope at the final challenge, the herds have devised a plan. Get Tessa involved in the dinner preparations. I'm helping Papa clean up. I'm a vet. <laughs> and make her excited about sitting down for a meal with her family. Yeah. And then fold it over. Another one. And it's done. We got... Yeah, we have to flatten it like that. She loves to help, you know? I mean, she's always like that. She, I mean, you know, and kids generally, they just love to be involved. Everyone's included and a part of the plan, and that's making a huge difference in the way that dinner comes together. It's great. The biggest difference for me is that I didn't have to scoot a bunch of stuff out of the way um, just to start cooking. As guests arrive, the transformation is nearly complete. It's crazy. You can like walk in through that door. Oh, it's sparkly, huh? <laughs> With friends and family all around, it's clear that Tessa is thrilled to be a part of the process. And Eric, who has been reluctant throughout the entire rude awakening, is now smiling and happy with the results. <laughs> And just so no one forgets the transformation they've undergone, Kim and Mike have prepared photographs on the wall of shame. Family, we've things to show you. Now, folks, we're going to show you a horror story. We call this the wall of shame. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, any comments? It's embarrassing. What a dump. That's what I remember. Oh, wow. This is a new place. <laughs> Before, the living room was a jumbled mess of toys, baby items, and dirty diapers. But the family cleared it out, and now it's a restful area for everyone. The kitchen was piled high with dishes, papers, and clutter everywhere. With Kim and Mike's help, it's been overhauled to reveal a functional space that Eric can use with ease. It's good. I love it. <laughs> and before their rude awakening, the bedrooms were in absolute disarray. Now Eric and Jessica's bedroom is clean and organized. The nursery is set up, and Tessa is showing everyone who the real rock star of the family is. 
You all mucked in, didn't you? And you've done well. Eric, you were extremely unhappy, weren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he did look a bit of a miserable soul when we came here. I've got to be honest with you, I was worried about him. Happier man? For sure. I'm glad it's done, you know? I'm glad that it's we're at where we're at now and that we can kind of leave that behind. Do you honestly think we'll keep this place tidy? Mm hmm Yeah. I like it clean in this house. Yes, and for I my kids, that. for my kids yeah. especially. All right. We're going to leave you with these photographs, aren't we? I think it's time for us to go. Kim's rude awakening has turned this family around. Tessa is stress-free, and Eric and Jessica are finally serious about their family, their home, and working together as a team. It's like a weight off of our shoulders. Huge boulder size weight, so it's good. Tessa has a lot more room to be herself and run around and play. We are a team. I know that we're both committed to doing it because it's for the sake of our kids and for our own sanity as well. It's about our family. You know, as long as we're both working as a team and committed to it, it should be a piece of cake. Britain's Queen of Clean, Kim Woodburn, is traveling the world with lifestyle expert Mike Shalou on a very special assignment. Their mission, to identify, confront, and rehabilitate messy, disorganized families and bring pride back into their homes. This time, Kim and Mike are meeting the Breen family, comprising mom Vicky, daughter Jennifer, son Dylan, and dogs Odin and Trixie. The Breens moved into this townhouse four years ago, and while at first it seemed like a dream come true, over the years, it's become a multi-level mess that might be mistaken for a crime scene. <laughs> Laundry is left out in the open, cobwebs hang from the ceiling like grungy chandeliers, and the carpets look like they haven't been cleaned since the dawn of time. Nikki tries to balance cleaning with her full-time job as a business analyst, but without any help from her two teenage kids, Vicky's efforts barely make a dent. I feel like when I do something, I'm spinning my wheels, nothing ever gets done. Vicky's 40th birthday is fast approaching, and she desperately wants to make a change. 40 is a, is a big deal, and I would really love to have everything in, in order and have a system in place so that the, you know, the next 10, 20, 30 years, I don't have to have stuff piled and, and cluttered. But that hasn't convinced Dylan and Jennifer to change their ways. The reason why I don't pull my weight around the house is because I'm lazy. But the more Vicky gives in, the more her kids take her for granted. Mom, lunch! She makes us our food. She drives us where we want. She gives us money when we need it. I got it made. And that is the Breen's big issue. Vicky needs to regain control of her household so that her kids stop treating her like their personal servant. I feel like I should just be running down the street pulling up my hair screaming. It's so frustrating sometimes. So I, I think for everybody's sanity, it, it, things have to change. Kim and Mike are on their way to fix the Breen's growing mass of problems. They're going to do it with a very rude awakening. Good morning, Breen family. Rise and shine. Your attitude stinks, and you're old enough to know better. You never help your mother. She's not your mate. <laughs> this is amazing. Get your butts out of bed, Breen family. This is your rude awakening. Careful. You should have seen this was cleared. Woo! Kim, Kim, you know what? This is Canada, not Keep Britain. Keep hold of me. We have snow here. What the? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Hi, come on in. Did you go for a jacket? Yes, I am taking my jacket off. The mess in the hallway. You think you had 25-year-olds in this house. But, and, you know, I'm looking around. All these cobwebs, Luffy. Cobwebs? Look at these rugs. There's, like, piles of dog hair. Blech. You work jolly hard, actually. You work long hours out of this house, don't you? Yeah. You don't work, you're 18. What do you do? Absolutely nothing. And you dare to stand there and see your mother go out to work and you do nothing? Yeah. You need to have words with him, you know. I presume this is the dining room, isn't it? Yes. Now, is this breakfast on your table right now? It's some um, brunch. This is brunch. It's Dirty brunch. socks, a little no, bit of underwear. No, it's all clean. It's clean. All right. Why isn't it folded and put away? Ask Jennifer. Her job is to put the stuff away. Why don't you put this away? Because there's no point. I know how to fold clothes. I know how to do my laundry. I know. I know. There's really no excuse for me, except it's just laziness. Listen, you're, you're stressing Kim out a little bit. I am stressing my I know, I don't want, I know, I know. I want you guys to stay here, please. We're gonna look at the rest of the house. Ew, look at this light switch. It's disgusting. They haven't, ugh. Look at all this business, look. Uh, don't look. touch it, don't touch it. Well, one has to. Uh. Oh. oh. 
Look at, look at, look at this. Look at, it goes all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. Look at, look, look, look. It's like something out of a Dickens novel, isn't it? Look at the oh. little laundry, laundry and dust everywhere. I can feel it on my face. Yeah. It's like the it's dustiest like, house oh. we have been to. Mike, have you seen this up no, no, here? No, 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 I no, just no. have to. Look, Mike, watch. Uh, I can see it from here. Look, Lovie. Grab it on the oh. look, look. Oh my gosh. Look at this. What's my hair? Oh, oh, no, this is your responsibility. Well, by Jove, you take it seriously, don't you? I do. I don't wish to be funny. I mean, you oh. don't notice this dust. When there's an image on the screen, you can't really see it. You don't notice that dust. Well, now I do. You are having me on. You're playing around, aren't you? No. Oh. All right, let's cut to the chase. What have I got to do to motivate you? I'm not sure. You want me to kiss you? No. What do you mean, no? I mean, no. Well, All right. There you go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kiss you and cuddle you unless you tidy this house. Get upstairs. Get up those stairs. She's gonna kiss you like an animal. This constant state of crime has gotta stop. Kim and Mike need to figure this family out. I think the biggest problem here, Kim, is that Jen and Dylan believe their mother should be their maid. Yeah, but she's partly responsible. She's never chastised them, has she? Fair deuce. The thing is, though, I've got to get those women and their dogs. To keep the floor and the carpets clean, they're disgraceful, you know. And as for the marks on the walls, oh, give me a break. This laundry situation is out of control. It's everywhere. And that young man, Dylan, his mother waits on him hand and foot. He needs to learn, like, to cook his own meals. Well, I'm glad you brought him up, because I'll tell you for why. You know when I mentioned kissing him? To motive. I was only to motivate. It wasn't to get you jealous and hurt. But jealous about what? I don't understand. Well, the fact that you thought I wanted to kiss him, but I really didn't. You thought I was jealous of him? Yes, because, look, Mike, you know I know that you want to kiss me. No. Oh, stop it, Mike. You're a tease. I don't want to kiss you. You do. Don't. Right now, Vicky is being pushed around by her kids. Mom! Yeah? What's for lunch? I feel like I'm the maid all the time. I'm the maid, I'm the, the chauffeur, I'm the bank. I, <laughs> I play all those roles. But in order for Jennifer and Dylan to change their ways, they need to understand what they're putting their mom through every day. It's time for The Switch. Kim and I are in full agreement that you two treat your mother like a maid. So we have decided we're going to make you a maid and a butler. We basically want <laughs> You two to wait on your mother hand and foot. When your mother goes, <laughs> you run in and say yes. And whatever your mother wants, she gets. Oh. Kim Woodburn and Mike Shalhoub have geared up to battle the Breen family's untidy ways. You don't notice that dust. Well, now I do. The Breen's big issue, mom has lost control of her household, and the kids treat her like their personal servant. Yeah, I'm not hungry anymore. To combat the problem, Kim and Mike have come up with a unique idea. We're going to make you a maid and a butler. Reverse the roles of mom and the kids and watch the sparks fly. Butler Jeeves, come get me some tea, please. Yes, ma'am. Maid Fifi, please tidy up and fold those clothes. <laughs> Adam's tea. I know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take the tea bag out. She didn't tell me to remove the tea bag. Hey. That's not folding it correctly. Fold it nicely. I'm going to say something to you. You're not strict enough, you know. You That's are the lady. These are mere servants, dear. These servants are getting off way too easy. Kim and Mike are going to show Vicky how it's really done. <laughs> you two, the dust is disgusting in this room. I need dusting done now. Not me. Not okay, me. Don't be so silly or get fired. Ugh, dust. <laughs> Now, if that was dusted each day, it wouldn't be this dusty, would it? See, you dust it every morning in future. And move that mattress out of this room. That's what we'll Hey, hey, you. I would like a chocolate donut cut in half. And these were just easy things, but we asked her to do a lot more. Gives me a little bit of an idea how my mom feels every day. Well, I'll tell you something, you did very, very well. No, She's doing it's no. taught you to muck in with your mom. Probably now. Yeah. More often. The switch worked. It was wonderful. We've got lots more to do with you, haven't we? Jennifer and Dylan now know what it's like to be treated like servants, but they're still leaving Vicky to deal with the problem of excess dog hair. My dog, Trixie, she sheds nonstop. Even when I brush her, it takes away a bit of the shedding, but 
but still, she sheds. If I get down here, my dear, look. Jen needs to clean up after her own dog and start seeing things from a different point of view. Get your head down there. Get your face on the, on the stairway, your whole face. Can you see? Yes. Months and months and months of dirt. Many ways you can take hairs off a carpet. This is one way. Rubber gloves, cheap, you see? Moisten a rubber glove. Just moisten it, not, not soaking. The moisture and the rubber it has a slight stickiness to it. It just picks it all up, my love. Oh, my. One step on the stairs. It's disgusting. They are. Next one. Look, look, it's so easy with the rubber. Look, lovey. Two steps. Like, I realized that there was hair on the carpets, but I didn't realize that there was all that buildup. I was pretty shocked. But these carpets are going to require more than just a rubber glove. Kim has called in some professional help. Could you empty on there what, 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 what we've taken off so far? Lord. Wow. It's disgusting, and I'm sitting on the carpet with my dogs. Lesson learned, young lady. You will keep the carpet clean. Yeah. I do feel more committed to cleaning and helping around the house, especially since I've seen how dirty the carpets are. Promise me, no shoes, vacuum regularly, wipe the dog's feet. Yeah. If you do that, lovey, 10 minutes a day, you're done. Dylan may not be a big strain on the carpets, but he lacks the skills needed to survive as an adult. He likes to just have the good life, and he doesn't want to have to work. When's lunch? And when it comes to cooking, Dylan is still stuck in the dark ages. Make me food. Why can't you make food? Because it's the woman's work. The women are supposed to cook. The cooking is for the women. Dylan's food usually comes from the microwave. But Mike wants to show him that eating healthy can be just as easy. You're on. Dylan, what I want to do right now is whip up your own mini pizza. This is something that's easy, it's healthy, and you can do it yourself. As long as you find a vegetable that you like, I need you to eat five to six servings a day. A serving is equal to a half a cup. Mm -hmm. And that's why pizzas are so great, because you can put your vegetables on there so it hits all the three groups that you need to have in a healthy meal. We'll start with the whole wheat pita, because it's way healthier than the white. Add some tomato sauce, a source of vegetables. We've also got the cheese that's already grated, so it saves time. It's also a source of protein. Yeah, have that. No, no. That's okay. Your hands. Okay. Oh, they're clean. I know, I'm sure they are. Okay, <laughs> now we're gonna put a little bit of the meat on there. Fantastic. Add your vegetable. Good. And now we're ready to stick it in the oven. My mom doesn't make me cook. That's why I get away with what I get away with. That's definitely gonna change because all I've demonstrated I can make a damn good pizza. You've made me proud. You're gonna make your mother proud. And you're eating healthy. Good job, time, buddy. In the Breen family, mom is a total pushover. And the kids treat her like their personal servant. Make me food. But Kim and Mike have been cracking the whip. And that has this entire family running scared. I ain't dusting done now. When it comes to laundry, Vicky can get as far as the washer and dryer. But without any help from Jennifer and Dylan to fold it, it usually ends up on the dining room table or the floor. Laundry is the bane of my existence, I think, sometimes. It's everywhere, and it doesn't seem to get better. It seems to multiply. The Breens say the clothes don't get put away because they have no space. The reason for the pile of laundry in my room is because my dressers are full. But the real problem is that they have no idea how to organize. Mike is using a suitcase to help remedy the situation. And the challenge today is, is that I want to see if you can pack a suitcase. I'm going to be timing you, because this is a race. And go. Show me how you pack a suitcase. Hurry it up. This is a race, people. This is a race. Jen's in the lead, folks. Is she? Yeah, she is. No, no, no. no. There'll be no. You lose some. Sorry. There you go. Sorry. You can't do that. That's wrong. Start over. She put her clothing in mine. Just <laughs> 20 seconds, I want to see some progress. 10 seconds, three, two, and one. This is a complete failure. Why? The way you pack your suitcases proves to me that you really don't know how to use your closet space or your dressers or put your clothes away properly. So what I want to do is I want to teach you how to fold properly. Grab your pants, everyone, please. Now the key is in your folding pants, it's seam to seam to seam to seam. Bring them up, shake them out, everyone flip them out. Beautiful. <laughs> I 
I'm having trouble. He's having trouble shocking. Seam to seam to seam to seam. Say it with me. Seam to seam to seam to seam. Yes, perfect. Now we're gonna fold it to the belt line. Fold it one more time. Flatten it out. And pants are done. Everyone grab a shirt. Sleeve in, quarter of an inch away from the neck there. Same with the other side, obviously. It's not rocket science, people. And bring it out. We're done. <laughs> I hang up shirts. I don't fold them. Dylan and folding clothes, I don't think I was too surprised because I never really enforced that with him when he was younger the way I did with Jennifer. Even if the Breens are able to take care of the laundry and the cluttered mess throughout the house, there's still the problem of dust and dirt that nobody seems to care about. Kim is helping Dylan to realize the filth that his family is living in by giving his home the white glove test. I want you to go down to your computer and do what you normally do and get yourself back here. And we want to see the color of these gloves because I want to make a very good point with you, you see. I thought that she was a little out of her mind because <laughs> she wanted me to run around the house and get my hands dirty. But it doesn't take long for Dylan to see just how grimy his house actually is. Oh, yes, yeah, suitably dirty, aren't they? Good Lord. Whip these off. This is the point I've made to you. That dirt would be on your hands if you hadn't worn the gloves. Is this why everywhere in this house I look, there's dirty light switch. Because your hands go on and flick them. It's just to your mum and you. Look, that's horrible. Let me show you how to do it. In the warm water, white cloth. Squeeze a lemon, my love. It smells beautiful. Now watch. The acid whips it off instantly, darling. Do you not agree? It is cleaner. Look at that. I'm putting you in charge of cleaning all the walls. I want them all spotless. The woman's supposed to be doing all the work. Ah! Uh, when you sit on your bum on your computer all day, you should be helping with the housework when your mother's out working five days a week. Get on with it before I slap you. Once she pointed out the light switch on the wall, I started looking around the room, and I noticed, like, all the dirt that was all the way up and all the cobwebs and everything, and I was kind of like, this is kind of dirty. It's been a long process, but Jennifer and Dylan are beginning to understand the difficulties their mom faces with the mess. Oh, guarantee that sentient. I feel overworked, and I feel bad for my mom for having to do this almost every day. Yeah, I realize that there's a lot of work in keeping this house organized and clean. They've learned some massive lessons, and the house is starting to look like, well, a house. Yeah, slowly but surely it is. But this rude awakening isn't done quite yet. Kim and Mike are gonna see if the Breens can pull together everything they've learned for the final challenge. And what you two kids are gonna be responsible for is taking care of your mother's 40th birthday party. Food, drink, service, the whole nine yards. Mother's off the hook. You have to just chill out and relax and let your two kids take care of you. You're baking the cake. I'm not baking the cake. You're not There's being no asked. Right You're now. doing the no cake. Options. No, I'm not. My jaw dropped when Kim assigned this baking business for my brother to do. It was just, mm-mm, not for him. I don't want to bake the cake. Jennifer and Dylan are dealing with their final challenge. What you two kids are going to be responsible for is your mother's 40th birthday party. I've never, ever, ever organized a party before. <laughs> as far as helping out around the house, Jennifer and Dylan have never really accomplished anything. But now the tables have been turned, and while mom relaxes, the kids are taking care of the party. There are tons of preparations. Let's go to the shrimp. And their methods are far from conventional. You need to rub it in that she's 40. But Jennifer and Dylan are actually getting things done. Not that it's been easy. Baking that cake was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Cracking the eggs and having a stir. Scrape the sides. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. You know what you need to do? You stopped me. You know what you need to do? You need to look there. You need to see those chunks. All we had to do was mix the batter, a few eggs, water, oil. Good boy. But their time is up. The big question is whether or not their efforts will be enough to impress Kim and Mike. They've worked. They've worked. The I know. This may be impressive. Oh, yeah, fair do. It's nice. I think so. Oh, my, this is wonderful. It was it? Oh. While Kim and Mike take a closer look around, guests are beginning to arrive. 
and they're shocked by the change in the Breen's home. It's like a different house. There was like stuff everywhere. You couldn't even get into this corner. There was so much stuff. I can't believe the difference. <laughs> it's amazing. A, it is amazing. I'd like to make a toast. Mom, this has been a lot of hard work, but we did it all because me and Jen love you very much and we hope you have a very happy 40th birthday. Oh, thank you, Dylan, that's so nice. That was so nice. Yeah. Yeah. The greatest wish for my 40th birthday was to have my life in some sort of an order going uh, into a new era, 40s, my God. Uh, and I think we've achieved that. If life truly begins at 40, Vicky is off to a wonderful start. But just so there's no confusion about how far everyone has come, Kim and Mike are taking their brains back in time with the wall of shame. This is what the house used to be like. In the beginning, the bedrooms were just another place to hide the mess. Now that everyone's pitching in, they're neat, tidy and organized so all of the Breens can get a good night's sleep. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Before the rude awakening, the dining room doubled as a laundry storage facility and was no place for eating. But the Breens have taken command of the clothing and the table is now a functional part of the room. This is the living room. The living room, which was cluttered with furniture and covered in dog hair, has been transformed. Now it's a wide open space and the perfect place for a party. I didn't think that they would do as good a job as I feel that they've done. I think they really uh, stepped up to the challenges that were issued to them. And while Dylan may have escaped the wrath of Kim's lips, before she leaves, she's making sure that he has a reason to continue pitching in. <laughs> That picture and think I couldn't have that old broad here again for love nor money. <laughs> so I'd better stay tidy. <laughs> Goodbye, precious. <laughs> Kim's rude awakening is a success. The Breens have cleaned up their home, organized their lives, and the kids no longer treat their mom like their personal servant. My party was so wonderful. It's the first time in a long time where the party's been about me, and it was a lot of fun. And I think I'm gonna do this every year now. <laughs> I think my mom's feeling very happy and relieved that the house is no longer a cluttered mess. She's feeling awesome, and this is a great birthday gift for her. I know she'll remember this forever. I'll come back and check up. Okay, I'm afraid of you too. That's good. Britain's Queen of Clean, Kim Woodburn, is traveling the world with lifestyle expert Mike Shalou on a very special assignment. Their mission, to identify, confront, and rehabilitate messy, disorganized families and bring pride back into their homes. This time, Kim and Mike are helping the Cheshire family, comprising Mom Maureen, Dad Martin, and kids Dominique and Katie. The Cheshire's home has always been a work in progress. We bought the house knowing it needed work doing, and the kids weren't as busy at that time. And now, as time's gone on, they've got busier and busier and busier. But busy doesn't begin to describe how much this family has going on. Well, Dominique's dancing every night. Katie does Taekwondo twice a week. But she also does drama, synchronized swimming. She just started uh, volunteering at the Humane Society. And while both Martin and Maureen work 40-hour weeks outside the house, when they arrive home, the real work starts. Bye, Daddy. You know, they want to be out there, they want to be active, and, and we want to encourage that. So the consequence of that is that we don't have enough time to do everything else. Leading to unfinished projects getting put aside and messes piling up everywhere. There's no order. The conversation will always come around to something that hasn't got done. Are we not going to clean that out? Because I need a place to work. Well, I we can't do that and that and that, can I? Well, why not? Well, pick something. And that is their big issue. The Cheshire's busy lives have pushed their household duties to the bottom of the list. I need help. I need another battle axe English woman to come in and help me. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. Domestic diplomats Kim Woodburn and Mike Shalou are coming to knock this household into shape. Good morning, Cheshire family. It's time to spend more time together. Your schedules are whacked and you're always in a hurry. 
Your house is full of eyes, and so is your family time. That's right, Cheshire family. This is your rude awakening. We have heard tell you spend no social time together at all. We spend a lot of time together in the car. Spending time in the car? Interesting. Now, over here, is this where all the schedules happen? It's not on the calendar. It doesn't exist. And you can read all that? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, our, that's our code. That's our Cheshire code. Oh, really? Just what is come, this? Come to our eating place. <laughs> not that we eat together, mind you. But oh, we push, push it over to over. one side. Yeah. Shift it over. Yeah. yeah. And are you telling me that you shove all this to one end of the table and eat at the other end? Yeah, yeah it's a six-person table. It's only four It's lovely, eh, Kim? A sophisticated family, can oh, you? very sophisticated. <laughs> this oh! Yes. Yeah. This is one of the jobs. How long has it been like this? Um, the bathroom was started five years ago, and the door from the summer, and it's been held in with paper instead of nails and glue. Martin's <laughs> idea, I presume, is it? Maureen, don't stand for it! Kim. Get away with it, innit? This is only the beginning. Oh, I know. Show us more wonderment. Oh, holy mm. Moses. Katie, this is very bad. But there's nothing you can see that's going to make me change it. I like my room. You're proud of it, are you? This is just messy. We've no floor, dear. We've no floor. We've no, no this floor. floor. Now, don't you start being sassy with me. You know there's no floor, don't you? I'm fine with it. Cheeky thing, give me your sass. Sassy minx. Sassy Downstairs, the laundry room reveals even greater crimes. Because of all this mess in here, the ironing gets moved out here. You mean you've got the... more clothes somewhere else? Well, how long do you can go on like this? You won't be able to get into this house soon, you know. All this stuff's all in here, but it's up in the garage as well, so... Use well, look at it, does well, it? Well, he pretends to. Well, if you decided yeah. which one you wanted doing first, then they may be in the same place. Well, not up to me. I'm not the one that's planning which one gets Gosh. fixed. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, yeah, the laundry kind of spills out over to here and... Yes, it does, doesn't it? it yeah. spills out I, kinda, I got organised because we've got four baskets and every basket's got the name on, so, you know... Those... You don't iron it, lovey. Well, I don't want to cover him up. <laughs> well, nor do I do. OK, <laughs> all right, OK. Oh, well, nice. It seems to me you love your hobbies, which is all right about that, you as well. Life isn't all hobbies, and I mean that. You don't want to make time, you four, do you? Now, come on. Yes. <laughs> we need to get this home tidy, and we need to get your schedules in check. So everyone move along. Let's get this going, OK? While the Cheshires continue on with their busy lives, Kim and Mike form a strategy of their own. Kim, this family is overscheduled. Oh, absolutely. That table was full of paperwork. It was atrocious. Yeah, but this is the thing. The parents take them all the time to the hobbies, which is right and proper. Absolutely. But don't you think those girls, 11 and 16, the lovely kids, should be doing their own washing and ironing, putting it away and keeping the bedrooms tidy? It's so important. I really do. It is it's, important. It is. It's very important. And I want the mother and father to realise how important it is for them to be alone together. Passion. Passion. All right. Lots of passion. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like touching and being passionate with me? I'm human like they are. I'm no different to anybody else, you know. We're talking about the family. I thought we were. Oh. True, Dominique and Katie have busy lives, but they do virtually nothing to contribute to keeping the house. Why can't you guys put dirty dishes in the dishwasher? Maureen and Mark need some time to enjoy life, and the girls need to see exactly how much work their parents are dealing with. It's time for The Switch. The biggest problem in this family, I think, mm. is that mom and dad do everything, and you two don't really do anything around the house. That's true. Yeah. So we're going to switch it up, and you're going to become mom and dad, and mom and dad are going to become you. It never does kids any harm to see how hard the parents work, you know. It's be fun. <laughs> yeah. Domestic diplomats Kim Woodburn and Mike Shalhoub are giving the Cheshire family a rude awakening. Don't stand for it! Their big issue? The Cheshires' busy lives have pushed their household duties to the bottom of the list. You're proud of it, are you? This is just messy. Kim and Mike have challenged the kids to switch places with their busy parents. But will they be able to handle the workload? Now, Dominique, you're to go in the kitchen, wash and dry the dishes, preparing for the, uh, you know, your children. Katie? You, Katie. You're going to go organize that disgusting mess of a table. Mom and Dad, you're going to bark out orders and tell your parents what to do. Right, get on with it. Okay. <sighs> Dongs, make us a brew. 
Katie, get me uh, a pillar, will you, please? Oh, no, come on, I'm no. waiting. Katie? Oh, my God, you me. Don't worry about it, I've changed my mind. I need a sandwich as well. The girls are playing their parts. When do I have time to go shopping? I've got to stop. But Mom and Dad can't let go. Katie, don't forget to put them papers out in the uh, recycling, though. No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is not a proper switch. A proper switch would mean that Mom and Dad are enjoying themselves, let's say, dancing. Private moments. Private moments. All right, let's set this up a little better. Lights, please, ladies and gentlemen. There we go, Kim. Let's begin. Kim and Mike want to prove a point. Having Dominique and Katie help out should give Maureen and Martin more time for themselves. <laughs> oh, see, so you suit the boa. Yes, thank you. <laughs> you can still bark out some orders, you guys. Katie, you need to hurry up with that table, you know. Need food? Where's our brew anyway? We can do okay, everyone, stop, stop, stop. Lights, please stop. Now listen, Mum and Dad, you know you're too nice, don't you? We're not used to barking orders. <laughs> They're used to barking orders, though, aren't they? No. Never stop, do they? <laughs> now, this is what's going to happen. We've got to try to convince you parents that you need time to yourself. These girls know you do. Yeah. There they are. Do you want more proof than that? I think I've learned stuff from the switch. It was really funny to just dance around because we don't do that, really. Like, we don't. Even when they do help out a little bit, we see them as helping out as, so as we can go ahead and do another job. It's a lot harder than I think me and Dom's expected to be ordered around and doing things at the same time and to be interrupted constantly. Dominique and Katie lead busy lives, but they're old enough to start pitching in, especially with the laundry. Kim is giving the girls a history lesson to show them how easy they really have it. Now, when I was a little girl, we had no washers, we had no dryers. We had nothing. We used to go and buy a washboard. We take this, we dip it right in here. And what you do was you spot a dirty mark and you go like that. I said, so you had... And by, by the way, we didn't have these. These are luxury. <laughs> You're not tired already, are you? No, I could keep going. You gotta wring it out. Come on, come on, get. Please. Get, are you sure you're getting a black belt soon? <laughs> ring it, ring it, ring it. Look, you put it on a coat hanger, and you hang it up in the warmest room you had in the house. Now I take it I could put 15 of these, and they'd be done in two minutes. Yeah. yeah. So there's no excuse. No. So when you girls say to me, "I can't get my washing done," I feel like saying, "I beg your pardon. Have I shamed you?" A little bit. Katie. A little bit. From old ways to new ones, Kim has a special laundry tip to preserve the elastic in the girls' dance and sportswear. You know this lovely softener you buy that smells beautiful? You could buy it in liquid, put it in with washing to make it softer. Or you can buy the little cloth you throw in, can't you? If you have anything that contains elastic, you cannot use that. Elastic has to be kept pretty stiff in order for it to work. And if you continually put that in a softener, your elastic will stretch quicker than it will stretch, but it'll stretch a darn sight quicker if you keep putting it in that. Okay. All right, girls? Well, thank you. You're very welcome, girls. While the girls deal with their laundry, Mike is taking Maureen on an exciting trip to the lost and found. Because in this busy house, nothing has a proper place. Maureen, here's the situation. I don't think that you know where everything is on this table. I know where everything is in here. You do? <clears throat> sure. You're telling me that if your house was on fire, you could find all your important documents to get out of the house in time? Are you telling me that? <laughs> sure. Maureen, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to find your important documents. Ready, set, go! I want you to find it right now. Let's go. Let's go, Maureen. Come on, into the fire. And there's a fire, oh, too! My God. You have to find everything in the fire. <laughs> Your house is burning down. You can't find any of your documents. I thought you were organized. <laughs> you have five seconds. Five, four, three, two. That's a wrap. You have nothing. <laughs> I have my passport. I got my passport and my British driving license. <laughs> this is going to be your master box. OK. Your master box is going to have all your important documents, passports, social insurance numbers, birth certificates, so in case of an emergency, you can just take it and go. So we just keep it here on the table, then? Is that where it's going to be stored? <laughs> where do I put it? What, what if you lose the keys for it? Oh, my God. 
I am hoping that you will not lose the keys for the box, and I'm hoping we'll put the <laughs> box somewhere that you won't forget. Can we do that? Okay, we can try. The Cheshire's overcommitted lifestyle has turned their house into a disaster. Well, how long do you think you can go on like You won't be able to get into this house soon, you know. They're so busy, they never eat together as a family. Casey, do you want anything to eat right now? Mike wants to change their outlook on family meals by seeing how much they really enjoy fast food. What happens when you're always in a rush? What happens when you're in a rush? I start forgetting things. Forgetting things. Dad? Not eating properly. Mama? Can't find things. Yes. Really? All right. <laughs> you are going to have exactly two minutes to eat all these peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. There we go. Welcome to dinner. This is how your family dinner looks like, starting right and now. All right, let's eat, people. We got ballet to go to, don't we? No talking. Oh, are you choking? Maybe you want a drink? Do you have time to have a drink? No, you don't, do you? You only have 30 seconds left. There we go, don't make a mess. This is how we do our family meals around here because we're always in a rush. Don't choke on the peanut butter. All right, 10 seconds, and done. Family, the point of that stunt was to make you realize how important family time and dinner time together just once a week is important. Okay? We get it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect. I think it got the point across. Every now and again on a Sunday, we get dinner together or whatever, and that's about the only time, and we've got to do a better job of that. Now, this is fun. What we like to use to set tables are the OK symbols. Everyone give me an OK. Now, let's all do the same hand. Let's do it together. <laughs> what does this look like to you? Um. <laughs> this looks like a B, the letter B, people. Oh. Oh. Okay, get it, B. That's a D, right. So we got a B and we got a D. Now what? Burnt dinner. <laughs> Burnt dinner. That is not correct. Okay? It's in this house. Oh, God. I'm trying to get through to you people. Bread. Okay. Bread. So B is for bread plate. D is for drinking glass. Bread plate, drinking glass. Together as a family. Bread, Bread plate, plate, drinking glass. glass. Very good, I feel like we're in the sound of music. Now the best way to remember how the silverware goes, it's always in alphabetical order. So it'll be fork, knife, and spoon. The final tip, clearing your plates. Now this is really ugly. When you're done dinner, what you're gonna do to allow everyone know that you're finished your dinner, you're going to line up your silverware like so, and that way, whenever anyone takes the plate away, they take that away, and they don't get their hands in the goober mess of food. So they clean the silverware up like this, and it goes in the sink, and you have a clear table and no gross fingers. Got it? Good one. Nice. Maureen wants a clean house, but says she can't find the time. It's just kind of got to the point now where you don't know where to start because there's so much that needs finishing. Cleaning everything else will be a breeze once Kim shows Maureen how to tackle the worst job in the house, this sink. I can't get this stuff off. You never tried scrubbing it, have um, you? I tried bleach, like soaking it. Uh, you just threw the bleach on top and left it, did you? Um, no, I had a cloth, and I tried pushing it off with a cloth. Well, it's light years away from a cloth, though. <laughs> light years. I've got the old trusty bar of soap. Okay. I've got these mild scarers. The reason I want a mild one, I don't want to scratch this. I've also got peroxide. OK. This is 20-volume cream peroxide. Now, you're telling me that you have worked on this like a beaver, you've worn yourself out, and... Oh, the lies that go on around the <laughs> bottle. It's coming off. There's no reason it shouldn't come off. When you live in a hard water area, you have to do these at least once a week just to get the week's dirt off. Where's that? Sh I'm going to... Ah. You've let it build up. You're your own worst enemy, my darling. Are you going to have a go now? Elbow grease. Something you've never used in years. When you finish that, go back to these. We're going to have a gorgeous sink. You do not want to throw it away. It's very good quality. Get on with it. The Cheshires have learned some new skills in organizing, cleaning, and getting the girls involved in household chores. But have they learned all they need to get through Kim and Mike's final challenge? What we want to do is 
You were very upset about the repairs need doing in the house, yes, aren't yeah. you? I mean, she's made it quite clear, hasn't she? So if we came back in a week's time, would you have all those repairs done? Well, I need some help. Well, that's all right. Well, love, if you want to get help in, we're not bothered about that. Get it done. You're going to keep tidying. You're going to take all the tips I gave you, the washing, put it into yep. operation. And then when we come back in a week's time, we hope you might have invited somebody in for drinky poos. And that would really be an achievement. Kim, my love. Let's go. We'll see you soon. Now, don't let us down. Don't let yourselves down, either. The Cheshires now have seven days to finish renovating their bathroom, clear out their basement, and clean their house from top to bottom. What happens if you don't get it done? Not an option. I need that shelf up. Luckily, Martin has wised up with his do-it-yourself projects and is finally bringing in some help. There you go. People don't see what you have done, they see what you haven't done. So therefore, if you're going to do something, you need to do the full thing and finish it. For the past seven days, the Cheshires have been completing all of the unfinished projects in their four-bedroom house. You've got one minute. Don't get distracted. Go do it and come back. They're redoing the bathroom, clearing out the basement, and getting rid of the junk. I don't think we're going to get it all done in, in a week. And it's taking its toll. I'm sick. Kids have still got to be running around, and uh, it's killing me. I think it's worth it. Having another person in here to help him is keeping him on track, and it's keeping him focused. This is looking good. The Cheshires have been working like dogs for the past week. I'm crying. It makes me so happy. But now their time is up. And Kim and Mike will decide if this challenge has been a success. <laughs> the roller, do you? I like the roller. Oh, my goodness me. Come on in. Us. We're all ready for you. Where's the man of the house? Down the hall. Martin! Wait, 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 wait. This door's gonna fall on you. Oh, you it's fix fixed. That. This is fixed. This is fixed. It's hey, this. Martin. Martin! Wow! You have done the airing wow. covers. Wow! <laughs> oh, it's great! It looks great in oh, here. Whoa. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. You know? We need to tighten it up a little bit still. Okay. There we go. It's still working. It's still working. Kim and Mike have given the Cheshires their seal of approval. What a lovely home. I know Mo's been missing the fact that she's never felt comfortable oh about bringing people in. <laughs> oh, my God. And now we can bring people in. We have not in for a while and, and relax. <laughs> this is my to-do list. Yes. The only thing I've got left is to drink my wine. <laughs> but just so no one forgets how far they've come, Kim and Mike have prepared the wall of shame. What room do you, in your opinion, looks worse? The laundry room. Uh, yeah, oh, I would reckon so. Right Downstairs, there was no clear surface to be found between the messy tools and dirty clothes. Now everything is clean and tidy, and Maureen even has a newly built workspace of her own. See how my workspace moves from the dining room table and then it moves to downstairs? The family room, which at one time was in total anarchy, now sparkles with organization. I'm shocked. I'm appalled. The family were slaves to the dining room table dumping ground, where important papers were lost daily. But the table's been cleaned up and cleared off and is ready for a family banquet. Can you see yourself ever going back to this? No, actually. Because these jobs are finished, we now have more free time together. And we've kind of made a new rule as well within the family that you actually don't start something now unless you can finish it. And if you can't finish it, then you know what? You have to wait until you have time to complete the whole project. Katie's bedroom was a nightmare with laundry scattered everywhere. But it's been transformed into the perfect place for a busy girl. I hope I never go back to the old Katie and the old Cheshire house when it's all messy, because I like it being clean now. Kim, I'm just really happy that this family realized they have to schedule family time together. Yeah. It's so important, you know? And they've got this house lovely and clean. They've worked for the repairs as well. This family really turned this house around. Yeah. I think we're done here. We are. Let's go. Come on. All right. It's amazing how the small things, if you let them go, just pile up. I think the benefit of doing all this is having the time to enjoy it all. I've learned my lesson, and we will definitely keep this up. Britain's Queen of Clean, Kim Woodburn, is traveling the world with lifestyle expert Mike Chaloux on a very special assignment. Their mission, to identify, confront, and rehabilitate messy, disorganized families and bring pride back into their homes.
This time, Kim and Mike have their work cut out for them with the Alexander Baptiste family. The only time you guys are willing to do anything around here is when I start yelling and screaming. Consisting of mom Heather, dad Vic, Heather's daughter Katie, and son Michael. From the outside, the Alexander Baptiste look like they have a lovely home. But step through the door, and you'll meet a mom who's at the end of her tether. Hurry up, guys, we gotta go. Sometimes I feel like a failure as a parent and as a mother, because I should be able to keep a, a clean home and I should be able to do all of these things. Instead, her time is spent looking for everyone's misplaced items. Mom, yep, where are my socks? I have no clothes at all. Do you know where my socks are? Ugh. Even though Vic and Heather run a home-based business, they still can't keep up. Whenever it gets too cluttered inside our house, we'll get some bags and bring it to a donation, but it's still not enough. The kids see that there's a problem, but they don't do anything to solve it. I'm lazy, so... And Dad Vic just makes things worse with his ever-growing mass of collectibles. This is a rare piece, and I just I had to have it. He assures me that they're going to be of worth one day, but at the same time, I don't believe that he'll ever part with them. He just likes the idea of having them. Heather has had enough. I keep having these recurring dreams that I have an apartment of my own. It's not big, but it's very tidy. It's very well organized, and that's where I escape. My frustration level just keeps escalating every single year. I shouldn't have to tell you what needs to be done. And that is the Alexander Baptiste big issue. Nobody takes responsibility for their own belongings, and mom is left to deal with everything. If things are ever going to change, this family needs to come together as a team. Kim and Mike are going to get things started with a very rude awakening. Good morning, Alexander Baptiste family. We hear you're disorganized behind closed doors. Hiding everything in covers. Now it's all over the floor, you sneaky things. It's time to work like a team. This is your rude awakening. Where, where, where should we put the coats? Where do you um, Oh, this is the lady. This is it. You put out. You throw your coat. Put your clothes right there. There's no coat hanger. There's nothing. No, don't, don't trouble yourself, dear. How have you got yourself into this mess? You start, please. I used to do everything, and then I slowly started not doing everything, expecting the family to help out, and they didn't. Could you not put your foot down a bit now? Could you, Vic? What do you do? Not really. You back out. Leave it to mother. Pretty well. She doesn't want to know, does she? No. And he doesn't do anything. How old are you? Fifteen. You don't do a thing. Well, that is going to change. What a flaming fa What a flaming family is this? <laughs> Whose room is this? Kim. Oh, my. Oh. Are you, is this your bedroom? Oh, my gosh. Just a minute, little laddie me. How dare you? Who's done all this? Me? Why? I don't know. It just, like, ganged up and... It ganged up, did it? Are you supposed to be doing your homework over here? No, on the desk. On this desk? But it never occurred to you to tidy this place. It did. I tried sometimes. You tried sometimes? Yeah. Well, you didn't try hard enough, did you? <laughs> Naughty. <laughs> Oh, Mike! The love nest? Oh, look at this! Oh, my gosh. There are so many valuables in here, but it's a mess. There's antiques, there's china, there's pictures that are unhung, there's a severed hand. Oh, that's Vix. Is it a bit of a kinky man, isn't it? What's this here, dear? Oh, look Kim, that's gross. Oh. Who's responsible for these? My laundry. Your laundry? Yes. Oh. There's nothing to say, is there? Look at that lamp, it's covered by laundry, and that lamp has got to be worth a few bucks. Yes, you can see it is. Isn't it a bit disappointing for you? I'd love to display everything I do have. But you can. But you can. Show but me you how. don't. I have no room. No, you will have when we finish with you. Yeah. Is there stuff you know you don't want? Absolutely. Most likely. So you're willing to give it to the charity? Somebody always benefits. Charity yeah. shops or somebody benefits from it. But unless you throw as you go, tidy as you go, you're going to get in the same state again. And down in the basement, it's Dad's bad habits that are evident. What is with all this food? Ask him. When I go shopping, uh, all the stuff I buy in bulk, I put it in storage down here. Look Hi. at all the food. 
Look at it all. There's it, tons. There's there's more. Oh, my God. oh this is this oh, is this is absolutely full. Look, look. The, full. Oh, no. the freezer full too, Kim? Oh. What's in? Oh my way. god. Oh my l l l This is the super oh, center down here. People can shop here in your basement. Now and things are expiring. So what I'm saying to you is, you've thrown money away. Oh, stop it. Behave yourself. What is this? The junk room? No, this is the music room. The music room? Don't be so ridiculous. This is more of a... Oh, oh. oh. Here you go. <laughs> Get off your big Ow. lump. This is not a music all right, room. All right, all right. This is an antique collecting junk here. Are you all right? My knee is killing me. I need... Oh, I need come I need on, you big sissy. This house is a disaster. Kim and Mike need to figure out their plan of attack. So what are we going to do? But Mike, you know what? I have got to show him how to either display these lovely antiques or store them correctly. I need to create a space for those yeah. kids to actually sit down and do their homework. Away from the television. Away from the television. These four, we've got to show them how to work as a team or mm -hmm. all is lost. How's, how's your knee, by the way? Oh, it's, it's, it's okay. It's still a little sore. That, does that help a bit when I rub that? Oh. OK, enough. Enough! Get you... Ugh. Ow! I can't find anything anywhere. Mick and the kids are taking Heather for granted, and that has her frustration at an all-time high. I just get really upset, and then I start screaming and yelling, and then I stomp around and say I'm going on strike. But nobody is going to change their ways until they start seeing things from Heather's point of view. Do you think this is fair? It's time for The Switch. We're trying to let you see a mother's life is not, not a happy lot at times. This is what we've decided to do. Heather becomes Vic, Vic becomes Heather. Demand Here. everything from your father you, the way you yeah. would demand from your mother. Let the switch begin. Mom, what yes. plans do we have for today? Today you have soccer. I can't find my jersey. Can you help me with my homework? Vic? Get up and help Mike with this homework. In five minutes. Just give me five minutes. I now. Know, I know. I worked really long. And I'm going to look for Katie's jersey. Mom! The Alexander Baptiste's big issue is that nobody takes responsibility for their own belongings. And everything is left for Mom to deal with. And I asked you to, to make your own bed. Kim and Mike want to put an end to the madness. We're trying to let you see a mother's life is not, not a happy lot at times. I'm sure I put it in the laundry. Their solution? Make Vic switch roles with Heather and show him exactly what she deals with each day. I want to go skating. Having a role as Heather, I was totally confused. What a mess. I was lost right from the first task. I can't find your jersey anywhere. Well, I can't find it either. I got to look for Mike's bag now. Katie, you're going to have to find another jersey. Oh, There's I way too much mess downstairs. I, I can't see jersey. anything. I, I want to go to skating. <laughs> This is not working. This is not working at all. Because nobody knows where anything is. When you reverse roles, you're all in impossible positions, aren't you? I think this has taught you something, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. Oh, big time. So we're awfully glad we're here, because it really is time to get you organized and have you working as a team. Heather has a lot of responsibility, uh, more than I ever thought of. Never really noticed or maybe was aware of how much chaos goes on around me until I was just laying there and uh, listening to it all. Mike wants to help the Alexander Baptiste get organized while the lessons from the switch are fresh in their minds. Family, get in here, please. And he's starting in the hallway. Let's have a little race to see who's out the door first. Let's pretend it's the morning time. You're going to collect your bag, your coat, and your boots. On your mark, get set, go! There'll be nobody checking. This is not a violent thing. This is not a, no, no, no fighting. It's no surprise that Heather knows exactly where everything is. Done. But Vic is lagging behind. I would like to see some organizational things put in place where everyone has a designated area for their things and they use it. The boys are last. That was one sorry display. Mike's got to get this family organized. So I'm going to give each person their own individual zone. This is how it's going to work. Everything that you have to take out the door will be put in here. You're going to have a little notepad and a pen just to give yourself reminders, or if you have individual notes you want to give to each other, so everyone's all in the loop. 
school bags, and books, homework. When you're done doing your homework at night, that's for drawer number two. Drawer number three. Let's say if there's like a loose sock, or if there's something that belongs to Michael, and someone else in the family finds it, put it in the last drawer. That way you don't lose things. And mom is not helping out anymore. Got it? Got, Got it. it. Even if they do clear out the hallway, the house is still filled with the chaos of Vic's endless stream of collectibles. Now, Vic, this is Hugh, and he's an antique dealer, and he can value things. This is Vic. He's a collector, you see. The trouble is, he has them in cupboards, doesn't do anything with them. We all want to know out of curiosity, are they valuable? Can we start with this guy here? What is of that? Of course. It's, it's a Dalton figurine. It's the lobster man. And these are pieces that were made 20th century, and they still make them for auction values. They mm -hmm. go in the range of about $100 to $200. And an auction value is about a third to a quarter of what you might pay on the retail value. In a shop, you're saying it's... It, it, it could be uh, seven, eight hundred dollars. Mm. I told you. And where has he been for years? Stuck in a cupboard, hasn't he? In a box. Collecting dust. Collecting dust. Naughty, naughty, Vic. We have too many things that we don't use. The things that really have value to us, we should display properly. Kim is showing Vic how to do that by making those valuables shine. Beautiful ornament, thick with dust. You've got to immerse him in warm, soapy water. Now, look, there's hardly any soap in there. I don't want a lot. That's washing up liquid. Plastic bowl. Why plastic? Because if I hit him on the side, I'm not going to break him. If I put it in a steel sink, uh, stick your finger in, all right. And what I'm going to do is, what, it's so simple. Now, you see how thick with dust he is? Watch. Roll him round gently. Now, you see, because he's heavily glazed, dust does not stick on him for one minute. But if I try to dust him with a toothbrush, it'd be about three hours. I don't want to do that. Ha, 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 Look. Just look, look, look. He's done. I stand him here, OK? Any cloth. This happens to be microfiber. Clean cloths. We haven't seen that sparkle in a long, see how long easy time. that is, though? Do you see? Yeah. You can see his teeth there and his hat. Isn't it nice? Beautiful. It's Stunning. Lovely. We love it. So that's how you do it? Well, it makes me want to pull at the pieces that are lying all over the place and actually display them so people can see them. Vic may be happy now, but that jubilation isn't going to last for long. The Alexander Baptiste family is living in a disorganized and chaotic home. Their big issue, nobody takes responsibility for their own belongings, and mom is left to deal with everything. Like, why doesn't this bother you? One of the biggest culprits is Dad Vic. OK, you were supposed to get milk. That was it. When he's not collecting works of art, Vic loves hunting for a bargain. What is this? If something goes on sale, I'll buy ample supply of it, because I won't know it won't be on sale for a long time. But Kim is finding out the hard way that Vic doesn't check the expiry dates of his food. <laughs> and now he's going to get an earful. I've just eaten one of them. You could, you could sole your shoes with them. They taste putrid. You could tile a bathroom floor with them. How long have you had these? A year or two. Uh, two what? Two years. Thank you. They're out of date. When you buy this stuff, when you bring it home, my love, go and buy these cheap labels. You whip a label, you stick it on that, OK? Mm -hmm. Look on the box of when it says best before and put it right there. So as you come down, you think, now it's August. That says it's finished the 1st September. I better use it up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Organize yourselves. And you stop buying everything. Mom and Dad are starting to see the big picture. Expiring December 06. But if things are ever going to change in this house, the kids need to get involved too. Michael, buddy, looking around this room, it doesn't really look like a functioning room to me. I'm going to give you three things I need you to find in this room. You have to find your agenda book and your recorder and a library book. You've got one minute starting now. Go. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Come on. Find them, find them. Can't ask your mom. And Katie's not off the hook either. Up until now, her mom has always done all the laundry. What's this still doing here? It's time for Katie to learn the personal satisfaction of doing it herself. So the first thing you have to do is um, the machine always stays on cold, cold and cold. And I normally always leave it on super. You just press the dial in and turn it to normal. 
pull it out, and it will start to fill. Oh. Found my agenda. Okay, within 35 seconds, you found your agenda. Very good. There's one thing. Give that to me. Thank you. We've got one. We've got 20 seconds left. Now what you'll do is you'll take some laundry soap, fill the cap, and you'll pour that into the water stream. Perfect. Now you can start adding your clothes. And add them one by one and sort of spread them around the, the agitator so that it doesn't get side heavy and then it stops working. Excellent. That's it. And now you just wait. So what do you think? I think that's easy. Excellent. OK, next I'm going to teach you how to vacuum. No, I don't no. know how to do that. Dust? No. No. I'm done. Uh, take out the garbage? No, that's all the work I'm doing. <laughs> Oh, found the recorder. Very good. You got that. Five, four, three, two, one. Eh, you're out. If Michael can't find three simple objects in his room, how can he do homework in there? Mike is setting this kid straight. What's this? Is this laundry? No. No. So this stuff has to come out. This, this is garbage. We have a dog bed in here. Do you have a dog this size in your house somewhere? No. No, right. Out. I want you to fold the clothes, I want you to use your closet, and I want the dirty clothes in your laundry basket to go to the laundry room. This is going to be your office space. Got it? Got it. The kids are finally on board and tackling their rooms. And Vic has even loosened his hold on the collectible filled cabinet. This house is actually starting to look better. The kids are doing really well. Michael's been really amazing. Even just the small changes that have been implemented, like the, the closet and the hall and their, and their zones. I mean, Katie actually hung up her coat. The family seems to be working well, but are they ready for Kim and Mike's final challenge? This is going to be an exhibition of fine art. We want you to have all your lovely things out on display, which you can do when the house is clear. You know that. We've given you the tips. And we want you to apply those tips to make this house what it should look like. And Vic, please, when we're away for a few days, do not visit a grocery store, dear. Drive past, dear. Don't! It's kind of like, pinch me. Is this really going to happen? I'm going to get my house back. All right. For the past 24 hours, the Alexander Baptiste have been working non-stop. Do you want to take the recycling out? They're transforming their four-bedroom bungalow from a jumbled mess to a gallery that displays their many works of art. I know what needs to be done. Up until now, the transformation has been a slow process. <sighs> Taking a break. And it looks like Dad Vic hasn't learned a thing. That chocolate is really good. But Heather is calling in reinforcements. Or put stuff out on the truck. Let's go. Family friend Phyllis has summoned the spirit of Kim to keep Vic's lazy butt in line. I need a break now. No. Come on. Come on. No. You're wasting time. <laughs> I specifically brought Phyllis in for that task. And pick up the pace a little bit, old man. As the hours tick by, the entire family is scrambling to complete the final challenge. But now their time is up. Kim and Mike will decide if this family has done enough to put their house on display. May I take your coat? Have you got somewhere to put them? I certainly That'll do. That'll do me, dear. Nice, Get nice. your coat off. Do you know what? I can't believe the size of this lounge. It's huge. It's wonderful, isn't the it? The artwork looks great. The Alexander Baptiste have Kim and Mike's approval, which means that their works of art can finally be showcased to their friends. Great. It looks terrific already. It's different, right? Oh, you're not kidding. Cheers, Kimmy. Cheers, Mikey. This family's come a long way. They finally got it, I think. I think this family's done very, very well. I think I'm in a state of shock and a state of awe. <laughs> it's been a dream come true. But just so no one forgets how far they've come, Kim and Mike have prepared photographs for the family on the wall of shame. Shameful oh, it oh, is. Oh, before their rude awakening, Michael's room was a disorganized mess. But it's been cleared out, and homework is no longer a problem. 
Yeah. That's a different house. That's my house downstairs. That's uh... The basement looked like a ransacked grocery store. But after hundreds of dollars of expired foods were thrown out, the room now looks brand new. And the living and dining areas, which were cluttered with papers, collectibles, and laundry, now reveal a wide open space, perfect for putting their works of art on display. Oh, oh darling, come here. Oh, love, don't, darling, don't, love. Come on, love, you sent for so us. Much. But you sent for us, didn't you? Well, you were brave enough. Isn't she brave? Yes. I mean, other families hide behind the doors. You're brave enough to say, my house is untidy, aren't you? Thank you so much. Well, no, no, thank you. Thank you. you. If it wasn't, you wouldn't have a programme, would we? <laughs> and I've lived in this home for almost 17 years, and finally, it has pieces of me in it. Kim's Root Awakening is a success. The Alexander Baptiste family is functioning as a team, and Mom is no longer left to tackle everything on her own. To see the expression on her face and how happy she is now is just priceless. <laughs> Britain's Queen of Clean, Kim Woodburn, is traveling the world with lifestyle expert Mike Shalou on a very special assignment. Their mission, to identify, confront, and rehabilitate messy, disorganized families and bring pride back into their homes. This time, Kim and Mike are going karaoke crazy with the Medinas. Comprising mom Priscilla, a.k.a. Lola, dad Barry, daughter May and her son Ethan, middle child Michelle, and youngest son Mark. To the outside world, the Medinas seem like an average karaoke-loving family. But once inside the doors of their home, it becomes very evident that mom does everything and has nothing to sing about. My mom takes care of pretty much everything, does all the cleaning cooking, does the laundry. My mom likes it. I don't know what to say. She just likes it. <gasps> oh, my goodness, oh, Ethan. But it's not just her kids. I get mad at my sister, you know, because, like, Ethan leaves a mess and she doesn't clean up after him. My mom shouldn't have to take care of her kids and her grandchildren as well on top of that. For Priscilla, it's become a routine. Well, I kind of feel bad at times just seeing her doing all the work around the house. I work too much. I work at I work in the office five days a week. I work at home seven days a week. So that's considered like 12 days a week. Too much. But mom is her own worst enemy. Because even on those rare occasions when her kids do offer to help, Priscilla says no. It has to be done her way or no way at all. She prefers that she does it herself because she thinks if we do it, it's incorrect. So we're like, okay. <laughs> volunteered. I think my children knows how to do everything. It's just uh, they don't want to do it because their mom is always there to do it for them. And that is the Medina's big issue. Mom caters to her kids and then complains that they never help her out. Well, Priscilla, lucky for you, Kim and Mike are on their way. They are going to put a stop to the madness with a very rude awakening. Is yeah. everyone sleeping? Yes, there's a sleeping. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Let's You're get them out of bed. Good morning, Medina family. You three grown-up children should be helping your mother. It's time to stop singing and time to start working. This is going to be your rude awakening. What's going on? All the adults are in bed, and your poor mother. You should be up. She should be in bed. She's earned her rest. She's got a job, and she's taking care of you three. Mm -hmm. Four. She's slaving this woman. Look at the eyes filling up as we speak. You keep it in, don't you? What have you got to say for yourselves? I think it's hopeless. <laughs> That's your problem. Yeah. I really need your help. I'm getting tired. We'll sort you out, love. This family are going to stop it, Nancy. So, now, come on, don't get upset. You're going to stop it. I'm not going to see your mother like this. Is this a clothes hanger of some sort, or is this actually a table? That's your bath. That's my mom's laundry. She likes to hang it up. At... Did we miss a step after the washing machine? Yes. yes. The dryer's right beside the washing machine, but she chooses to lug it into the dining room table. Why did you go and buy a dryer if you never use it? Because I thought I can save electricity by doing this. You've got to use a dryer, love. 
goes washing machine, dryer, fold the clothes. Okay. Maybe they can do the laundry for me. So if they got yes. their stuff in the dryer, you would not object to that? Oh, she would. No. She would. No, because she, she did it through one time. She, she mixed did. everything, white colors. It's the dryer. <laughs> no, no, no. You do not put blacks in with whites. Now stop it. No. And your mother says, as a mother will, oh, you're ruining that. And you know why you do it? Because she still take it off you and say, let me do it. And you go, Laziness. Yes. Yes. Laziness. Yes. Laziness. Dis Disgraceful. Kim, let's see the rest of this house. Hope you're listening to this. This kitchen is some joke, isn't it? Kim, it's a laundry mat. Continued. What is this? <laughs> what are knickers or underpants on on a banana? <laughs> so embarrassing, big <laughs> one. <Did you know? laughs> Who do they belong to? That's sisters. But this nonsense of not using the dryer's got to stop, lovey. It's nuts. Yes. Kim, look at their storage room. This is not used as a bedroom. There's a bed in there. It's yeah. our guest room. And what guest in the right mind is going to stay in here? Ethan doesn't have his own bedroom. No. And he's three. Correct. Why doesn't he? Because this room is like this, and it's been. Well, it's got to be changed. You've got to get this cleared out, haven't you? Yes. Yes. Enthusiasm round is nil, isn't it? Not being mm. funny. This family is in denial. Kim and Mike need to formulate a plan. What is our plan of attack here? Well, we've got to get the little boy in his own room for a start. He'll be 27 years old and still sleeping with his mother at this rate. I want to take Mark, the son. I want to show him the art of washing. I'm going to take those kids into the kitchen mm. because I don't even know if they know where to start. Now, the subject of cooking, if you and I say we're together, I'm not suggesting we are, you'd cook one night, I'd cook the next. As I say, it's fair, isn't it? My night, I'd have cameras on the table, I'd change and wait for you. It'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah, but we're friends. But when you nurture each other, things can develop, you know. You want me to nurture you? Yes, oh yes. But I don't want to nurture you. We'll do this later. Later again? When is later? Later. Later is always later and nothing happens. The kids know that if they don't clean up, their mom will do it for them. I got a degree in engineering and manipulation. Five years of hard work. <laughs> how to get out of anything you want. <laughs> we know how to push my mom's buttons, what not to push. OK, we're done now. But that smug attitude is about to come to an end. It's time for The Switch. One, two, three, four, clean up now or out the door. It's time to switch things up. Your mother is going on strike. She's doing nothing. And Barry, we're going to have you in the kitchen with May. OK, I want you to start cooking. Michelle, you're going to be doing some cleaning. And Mark, you're going to be doing some laundry. And Lola, are you going to promise me that you're not going to do anything? I'll just help them now a little no, bit. No, 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 no. You will not help them at all. We're trying to help you, darling. And any complaints or moaning and groaning, you'll regret the day you were born. And don't you laugh at me. I'm serious. The Medina's big issue is that mom caters to her adult kids and then complains that they never help her out. You're all lazy. You don't even seem to help. Kim and Mike are supporting mom's right to strike. Get up. Let's go. Get Come to on, it. Let's, let's be key. Get ready for disaster. Kim and Mike have thrown Mark headfirst into the laundry room, and he doesn't have a clue. Oh, man. They put Michelle on bathroom cleaning duty. Where do I even begin? Instant noodles. We can just boil that up. And Mike is forcing Barry and May to attempt preparing a meal from scratch. You still have some leftovers from last night. I'll just heat some up. There's no question that without Priscilla, this family is completely lost. It's been ages since I've done this uh, cooking. Oh, this sucks. What are you doing, dear? I'm trying to clean the toilet like you asked. There's no elbow grease going on, is there? You can't tickle it, dear. You don't tickle a toilet, do you? Batter into I, it, I'm dear. Battering. You're I'm tickling battering. the toilets! You know. Look, my arm is tired. Stop your darn nonsense. No, 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 no. no. Still looks good. Still looks good. This is leftovers from last night. Yep. And we just popped it in the microwave? Mm -hmm. The whole point of this was that you were going to do cooking from scratch. That's a big problem. We don't know how to do that. Very disappointed. Gang, this was very disappointing. May, Barry, you reheated food? I asked you to cook from scratch. What do you have to say for yourself? I'm sorry, we don't know how to cook. How did you do in the laundry room? I'm not too sure, to be honest with you. I just uh, threw everything in and pushed some buttons and started going. Everything all just mixed in. That'll be a joy, won't it? That'll be a joy, won't it? Michelle, 
the bathroom. Well, I caught this young woman uh -huh. with a toilet brush in her hand, and this was it. <laughs> I was trying. I, I... You can't clean feces off a loo the way you were going on. I'm not giving you any cuddles. I'm disgusted with a lot of you. Out of ten, nothing. I agree with the things she was saying. I think we should help out my mom a bit. It's like a wake-up call. Maybe my mom is a little burned out. I guess it's time for us to, as adults, step up to the plate and help out. Right now, Priscilla does all the laundry, but she refuses to use the dryer. When she hangs the clothes and she cooks certain dishes, they leave an odor in our clothing, and then oh. we have to get her to do the laundry all over again. <laughs> Lord, I girl smart underwear. That has Mark totally embarrassed. People come over and then there's like my underwear hanging on chairs and stuff like that. Drying underwear in the kitchen is a thing of the past. Kim is showing Mark how to take charge of the family's laundry. We want white separated. White separated. Whites, light shades and darks. They come under lights, the grey. This is a strange thing to have in a house. It's something I avoid in my home because it's neither one thing nor the other. It's light shade, but it's got the black in it. It's an absolute pain to go buying a thing like that. Same as these. I'm against this totally. I'm going to tell you why. You've got black heels, black toes, and white body to the sock. I would never trust him to throw that in with white. Think, oh, my Lord, supposing the black runs. So you'd find yourself hand-washing those for a few washes until you saw the black had totally come out. Then you could put them with lights. Now, let's get to the laundry. There's an awful lot of writing and bits. However, it's self-explanatory. You just simply turn it on what you require. And here it'll tell you, you know, the temperatures to wash at, read it, and bung in the light that applies to it. Now, your dryer. It's a lovely... Once again, self-explanatory. Right, let's open this. Let's get this out, I have. Look, oh, this is absolutely filthy. It's a lot. I have never seen a filter so full in a dryer. Two reasons it's a very bad thing not to clean this filter. If your dryer should malfunction and overheat, this will set on fire. The second thing is, if this filter is so blocked, what would take you half an hour's dry is taking you 45 minutes, so you're wasting money. For heaven's sake, clean out the filter. And laundry is only the start of the problems. May, Mark, and Michelle are too lazy to cook their own meals. Your dinner is ready. Help yourself. We really enjoy my mom's cooking, and so we can't make anything half as good as she does, so why try? <laughs> good excuse, right? Lola. Yes? I need you to get out of the kitchen. Good for me. Good for there, you. There, That's there. right. Mike is showing these three some kitchen basics. First, we're going to start off by giving you each a pen. Now, you don't need a pen to cook, but I need you to know. Write down the stuff we're going to order. No, wrong. <laughs> I need you to write down the first thing that you do when you walk into the kitchen. Don't look. No cheating. May? Get a drink of water. Michelle? I look inside the fridge. Mark? Same answer. Well, you open the fridge. <laughs> we won. That's where it is. You didn't win. You all lost. The first thing you do when you come into the kitchen is you wash your hands. Oh! Oh! Yeah. oh, oh. Question. Right. Yeah, this is true. That was not a trick question, people. <laughs> These are your basic ingredients that you need to have in your kitchen at all times. Now, let's just go over and say it out loud and say it clear. What do we need in this kitchen? We need eggs, flour, salt, pasta, rice, 2% milk, olive oil, chicken broth, crushed red pepper, canned tomatoes, ground black pepper, cornstarch. Next thing we're going to learn in the kitchen. Show me how much pasta you need for five people. All, all of it. it. This is six bags of pasta, you guys. Yeah, that's a little too that's much. A little too General much. rule. Everyone do this for me. This is equivalent to one serving of pasta. This is how you properly determine how much pasta you're going to eat per person. OK? OK. So what's the first thing we do in the kitchen? Let's just review. Wash our hands. Wash our hands. Wash our hands. Now, if we're cooking a simple meal like pasta, what's the golden rule? Nice. Here are some recipes. I'm going to leave you with these. Now, I need each of you to choose a signature dish that you're actually able to cook. If everyone has a different signature dish, we have three different meals. Now, I'm going to show you how it should be done. And while Michelle is in the mood to learn new things, Kim is taking advantage. Guess around there. And putting her back in front of the toilet. On your knees. On you my see? knees. Yeah, oh, you poor devil. Now, look, a nylon scarra 
but you shouldn't need to let it build up for heaven knows how long. A little bit of cleaning powder, and any scarring powder that's used for toilets, there's several makes. Now, watch. It isn't permanent, darling. You're simply not elbow greasing it, darling. Look, it's coming off, love. And I've got my hand down here. It's not going to bite you, the poo and pee. Look! Oh, I love doing this. Look at the brown that's gone. Woo! Do you know, I do like cleaning toilets. We've done it spotlessly. Family! Kim Woodburn and Mike Shalou have been motivating the Medina family to get off their butts and start helping out. You don't tickle a toilet, do you? Batter into I, it, I'm do you? I'm battering. You're I'm tickling battering. the toilet! This family's big issue? Mom caters to her adult kids and then complains that they don't help her out. I do everything! Come on! Now! Part of the problem is that Priscilla is making the work she does harder than it needs to be. I am my own way doing things in the house. What are these marks? What, do you know what they are? But Kim is showing her that cleaning doesn't have to be complicated. And there should be no drips left in this at all. Now, good old hand-washing soap. I'm not putting much on. I'm uh -huh. skimming it. That's enough. Now, watch. I'm stroking it, my love. Because this is a silk. Silk is very fragile. You can't start scrubbing with a brush and things like that. Always do the whole cushion so there's no watermarks. Do you see what I mean? Look. Yeah, very nice. Now, how to dry it, my dear. You pour a gin and tonic, a big gin and tonic. Make it a treble. You're on your own. Who can talk about you? <laughs> you then take a clean white towel, okay. doubled, my love, and then you sit here, you see, my dear, with your treble gin and tonic, which ends you don't hide it in the cupboard, and you sit here, you see, and in about an hour, the heat of your bum would have dried this completely. <laughs> it's the truth. Priscilla is seeing the bigger picture. A different outlook can make any job easier. Would I lie to you? Even if you're not drinking a triple gin and tonic. Have you got any gin? May stand up. Turn off the TV. Turn off the TV and pretend okay. you're sleeping so that he can sleep. But when the chores are done, Priscilla is dealing with a much bigger issue. She's still babying her adult children, and that's teaching them some bad lessons about dependence. Good night, Mom. Good night. My mom always said that, like, if you sleep with your child, it bonds you together. So when he was a newborn, he slept with me, and it's been just like that for, like, almost four years now. Mike wants to help. But Kim has got other things on her mind. This is very weird. Oh, come on, I'll show you this way. But he still needs to make his point. Don't be long, Mike. With a spare bedroom available, there is space for Ethan to have his own room. We need to really, really organize this room and make this room Ethan's room. Mike is helping May deal with the change. It's really important that we make this transition for Ethan really fun because it is going to be difficult for him, but he needs his independence. I guess it's time for me to let him grow up and be a big boy, so might as well start now. And this will be your room all by yourself. Because you're a big boy, right? We definitely need that room for Ethan so that he can have a place of his own. If May can let go and allow Ethan to have his independence, then there's a chance that Priscilla can do the same for her family. But this may be easier said than done. That's it, so and then rinse up the thing. Can they bring it all together for the final challenge? We want you to get your house nice and tidy, everything beautiful. But we haven't finished yet. I know. The little boy, your lovely little oh, yes. boy, has got to have his own bedroom. And we are so keen to get you your bedroom, aren't we, darling? Yes, always, always. This all has to be done in the next 24 hours. Really? Get. Did I ask you to speak? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't get... think it's possible. Shh, 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 shh. See you well, tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Kim and Mike have issued the Medinas their final challenge. We want you to get your house nice and tidy, and your lovely little oh, yes. boy has got to have his own bedroom. We'll be back in 24 hours. And the work is starting to get done. Mark is taking care of the laundry, while Priscilla and Michelle are going through the guest room clutter. But May isn't doing anything. Um, can you stop taking your sweet time and help us clean your son's toys? Okay, give me two seconds and we'll finish. I'm like, mom's tired. Yeah, I'm so tired. lucky. Since this morning, I'm cleaning. I did. I'm so. I'm starving too. Oh, this is so annoying. We have so much stuff. I don't know how we're gonna get this done, but it's your stuff. And this still has tags on it. Can you stop eating, please? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah. beginning to feel like May doesn't actually want things to change at all. Whose idea was it to bring this lady to come to our house? We would have been fine with this yeah. hiding. 
helping you. You're helping. Unlike May, Ethan does want to help. Wow, Ethan, you're so fun. And his enthusiasm is inspiring everyone. Are you happy you have your own room? Yes, we are. So you'll be by yourself only, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. The result? May is learning to let go. And Ethan is welcoming his newfound independence with open arms. Ethan, whose bed is that? Mine. Are you going to sleep here tonight? Yeah. It seems like he's adapting to this room perfectly. So I think it's I'm going to be the one that's going to have a hard time. <laughs> that's teaching Priscilla the importance of independence, too. Her kids may not be doing things her way, but they are getting things done. Good dinner time! Good dinner time! Dinner time! Wow! Who prepared this? We did. Wow. wow. Thank you so much. You happy, Mom? Very, very happy because my kids finally, they're learning. They're trying. This will be your job from now on. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thank you so much. Now their time is up. And the big question is whether or not Kim and Mike will approve of the changes this family has made. Wow! Look at your room. Lovely. You're so happy now, aren't you? Do you Ethan, good? Ethan, do you like having your own bedroom? Yeah. Do you? Is it good? Whose rooms is this? Mine. Yay! Yeah, all right! He seems happy with it, doesn't he? He does. He likes it a lot. Say thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Say thank you, Mike. Oh, yay! Ethan's room is beautiful. It's been three years now, almost four. It was time that he moved out of my bed and into his own. Let's go, let's go, let's but just go. so no one forgets how far they've come, Kim and Mike have prepared photographs on the wall of shame. Look at it, Nana. Oh, no! Oh, <laughs> there's there's Ethan. Ethan. The kitchen table looked like a laundromat. But now the dryer is being used and it's making a major difference. Is that, I think Ooh. this is Ethan's room over there now. Yeah. The guest room was simply another space to throw things. But now, Ethan has a room to call his own. Give me five. Yeah, for the good room. And the living rooms, which were off limits because of the mess, now offer Barry and Priscilla the perfect place to sing their grandson to sleep. Kim's rude awakening has worked. Priscilla now has some help around the house, and the entire family is on the road to independence. I'm very proud of my kids because they really help me so much now, and I'm so happy. They were a happy family. Listen to me. What? You never sing me a song. You have never sung me a song. You do you want me to sing you a song? Oh, it's lovely. Very romantic, isn't it? Do you want me to sing you a love song? Be nice. No. Britain's Queen of Clean, Kim Woodburn, is traveling the world with lifestyle expert Mike Shalou on a very special assignment. Their mission, to identify, confront, and rehabilitate messy, disorganized families and bring pride back into their homes. This time, Kim and Mike are coaching the Gabbery family, comprising mom Kathy, dad Gary, Gary's daughter Jennifer, and sons Adam and Sheldon. The Gabberies have been living in this house for 12 years. But over time, it's become a smelly, disorganized mess that nobody can stand to be in. I'm feeling overwhelmed by it, and it's gotten the better of me, I guess. Despite the fact that Mom works as a project manager and Dad is a custodial supervisor... Okay, bud, come on, we're gonna be late, let's go. ...they are heavily involved in their son's hockey team. But when they're done at the rink, that's when the frustrations begin. Wrong. Yeah, when we get home from practice, the uh, hockey bag equipment goes on the living room floor and sprawls out. We're at the point where things don't have a home. Just the sordid stuff you need to live life in a house just don't quite belong anywhere. Even Gary's daughter, Jennifer, who only lives here part-time, can see that something's got to change. There's so much to do that you can't possibly do it in one day. But to Gary, it just doesn't seem to matter. More important to me right now is the family, doing the things with the kids because they're still young. The Gabbery's big issue? They devote too much time to having fun, and their home is suffering the consequences. 
I've thrown up my hands and thrown in the towel and kind of given up lately, I think. Well, if there's one thing Kim and Mike can do, it's whip this family into shape. Get ready, Gabberies. You're about to receive a very rude awakening. Good morning, Gabri family. It's time to face the music. What the hell? There's a lot going on in your house, but no one's paying attention to detail. What is it? You're a hockey family. But you're not playing like a team. Get up and let's get going, Gabri family. This is your rude awakening. Are you the father? Yes, I am. Are oh, you? Yeah. Make way. I can see why we've been sent for, can't you? Yes, I see. Look at this house! Does this look a well-kept house to you? Oh, you barged in, I mean. Well, we had we company. Yeah, I probably would have tidied up for you. You know what you said there? You said, if I'd have known you were coming, that's a wrong attitude. When somebody knocks my front door, my house is beautiful. That's impossible. My house is gorgeous. Mike, please. Let's go. Get in. Get move, out, move. What is this? In the living room. It's hockey equipment. We come in from hockey practice and we hear the hockey equipment out. Smell it. Oh, it's musty. He uses it four days a week. You're short of hangers, are you? Yeah, whatever. You admit you're lazy, do you? Yes. So how do you entertain people with all this hockey equipment around here? Uh, we, we find move places. Yeah. We, yeah, we move it around. Why do we have two china cabinets in this one area? That's not well, really I good have two use of... sets of antique china. But the china is outside of the china cabinets. We have glasses out here, we have plates well, they there. Just, they were clean and I haven't put them away yet. Kim, there's all these storage spaces here, but I don't think anything's being stored in them no. because everything's out on the on the open. Yeah, they're full of junk. junk. And in the basement, Kim and Mike can see that things only get worse. Dreadful, dreadful. Doesn't it drive you nuts? That's why I called you. Again, look, the improper use of storage units. Well, I mean, the kids are playing with their toys. I mean, they're kids. Now your kids can't be playing with all those toys, dear. Please. How did it get like this? Because we pay attention to our lives outside of the house that we don't pay attention to our lives inside the house. That's how it got. We need to have a meeting because I am tearing my hair out at the moment. And I don't want that to happen. No, I do not. Let's go. Let's go. Organized flaming chaos it is. See ya. I'm looking forward to anything they have to offer us. I'm looking forward to being done and having everything organized. I, I'm intimidated by the amount that's left to do. Yeah, that's a good word. Intim I'm intimidated. <laughs> chaos is all around. Kim and Mike need to come up with a game plan. Kim, nothing is stored properly in this house. Definitely not. And that hockey equipment? Oh, it's, it's gross. It starts smelling, it starts mildewing. Don't they realize that? No. I've got to teach them to hang this stuff up. I, I'm telling you now, I really have. Well, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those children downstairs okay. and I'm going to help them organize those toys. Oh, we'll get them to throw some out. We'll give it to charity. They have to throw some out. Yes. Yeah, yeah. By the way, have you ever played hockey? I, I played for nine years, actually. Nine years? Nine years. They actually called me Pretty Boy Shalou. Mm -hmm. How big were you? I mean, as big as you are now? Much bigger, actually. Ooh. Oh. Right now, Kathy's paperwork is piled everywhere. Yeah, I pile things. And you move my piles, and then I get mad at them yeah. because I can't find it. Where's my pile? Well, what pile? And when Gary gets home from the rink... From... The hockey equipment gets thrown down anywhere there's space. Dude, just hang your stuff on the piano, OK? Not on the piano. It'll wreck the wood. This disrespect of each other's space has got to stop. It's time for the switch. In the corner there, you've got lots of nice clothes, haven't you? When it's sorted out that you're going to do, that's going to be used for the purpose that Gary built it for. What did you build it for? Well, actually, hockey. Kel. Did you? Yeah. You're not using for that purpose, are you? It's no big deal. The hockey gear is in the living room. That is a big deal. All right. Kathy, Kim's going to take you, and Gary, you're with me. Uh -huh. OK, bud, come on. We're going to be late. Let's go. The Gabbery's big issue is that they devote too much time to having fun, and their home is suffering the consequences. I am tearing my hair out at the moment. But Kim and Mike are coming to the rescue. Kathy, Kim's going to take you, and Gary, you're with me. Now, Kathy will be organizing the hockey gear that Gary usually dumps on the floor. Don't think it's dangerous for a woman like you to think. And Gary will be sorting out the paperwork that Kathy leaves all over the house. Do you want that? 
I felt like I'd already given away everything I could give away, but once you get into it, there's always more. It amazes me how much stuff we have. OK, mate. It's all about piles. Go, go, go. What's that? That's hangers. You That's... said you didn't have any hangers. I... <laughs> now, let's get that hockey gear in. OK. Kathy has got a handle on her side of things. Come on, keep going, because we're doing awfully well here. But paperwork is dragging Gary down. Yeah, it was embarrassing going through that. It was so much information. I'm on overload right now. Buddy. Gentlemen, we have done the charity box. We've done the keeping box. We've only got to put stuff upstairs in the wardrobes. And all the hockey gear is hung up. Clothes is easy to organize. Paperwork's a little bit more time. If you two lovely people tied as you went along, you'd never have this. I guess we get too caught up in doing the fun things. And doing the less fun things is, I guess, not a priority. We're making progress. The switch for me actually worked for me. And I always considered myself a clean person. We are clean people. But I just feel like they've opened our eyes. The Gabarys are realizing that they have to change their day-to-day -day habits. But even if the hockey equipment is removed from the living room, its stench is still lingering. My house stinks of hockey. You can see little things that drive you nuts, right? Kim is coming to the rescue by putting Gary's and Adam's sense of smell on trial. Right. Hi, what's that, love? <laughs> what do you think it is, Adam? Oh, fish. Thank you very much indeed. What's that, my love? Ah, what's that? Oh, my God. <laughs> now, what, <laughs> my dear, winter. is this, dear? Oh. What's that? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> we all have a magnificent sense of smell. And if you think people can't smell sweaty, wet hockey gear, you are very mistaken. You know the barbecue? Yeah. Right? Cheap, aren't they? It deodorizes so much stuff. You're kidding me. No, it does. For instance, we've got this, lovey. You see, the hands in there, it's hand sweat, lovey. So all I'm all you do is, my love, put aluminum foil mm -hmm. or paper towel here. The, the snag with charcoal is, the one snag, as I see it is, it pours black, my love. Yeah. You don't want it all over yeah. this. Yeah, so, no. you've got a choice. You can take one, two, three, say three or four bits on, yeah. on, on, on Mum's old dishes. Yeah. You can put it downstairs and put that in there like that. How long would uh, I leave that in there? Like? Well, if they're very smelly, yeah. two or three days, if they're just mildly, one day, darling. Now, I'll tell you what, you've got smelly feet. But if you were to put a little tray in there, aluminum foil in it goes, or paper towel, and drop a few down there, and there you go. And you could do with keeping a permanent tray, you know where the hockey gear is? Yeah. Underneath it. Oh, yeah? And the smell will gravitate towards it. It kills the perspiration, because you can't wash this gear. Another thing, people get smelly cars, don't they? Mm. If you were, lovey, to take a dish like that, you know, and you were to put in this charcoal, you can't just put it, as the car goes round a corner, it'll go out it comes. Take saran wrap, cover it on it, and punch it with great big holes, and leave that in the boot, you call it a trunk boot, yeah. of your car. Do you know, any smells from the family spilt this gravitates towards that. Another thing, We've used it. You can still use it for your barbecue. As soon as you throw it on and light it, <whistles> smells gone. Mm -hmm. You're not wasting a thing. Oh, well, that's a good point. It is. I, I am going to pass it on because we got a couple of kids on our team that are very rank. Gary's getting the point, but what about the rest of the family? Why are you throwing them off? I don't know. Where'd you put it? I don't know. It's me and my brother. We make a lot of messes with toys and stuff downstairs. Can they find anything in this mess? Mike is putting Adam and Sheldon to the test. Do you see that it's kind of like a mess in here or no? Yeah. We're going to have to play a little game here. I'm going to give you guys one minute to find your remote, starting now. Come on, make me proud. 30 seconds. Let's go, let's go. It was really hard. Like, 
everything was all over the place and you like look and you see, whoa, what the heck is that? <laughs> no remote. How are we supposed to turn on the TV if we can't find the remote? Aha, uh -huh. the remote. You find it in this bin where like, what the heck is that doing there? What we want to do, okay, is I want you guys to be responsible for this toy room. Yeah. Can you be in charge of that? Yeah. But there's gonna be some systems put in place that you guys can have a really easy, accessible toy room. Because it shouldn't take this long to find everything, should it? No. First thing that we're gonna do, you guys, is that we're gonna label all your boxes so everything is organized and you know where everything is at all times. So Sheldon, you're gonna make a label. And Adam, you're gonna make a label. So you make one that says DVDs. Sheldon, you can make one for games. Perfect. Now we need one for Sheldon's toys. Adam's gonna write down Adam's toys. Good job. I also want you to take one label and mark it as a charity box. And you guys have so many toys here that you probably want to help other kids too, right? Yeah. All right? The Gabbery's big issue, they devote too much time to having fun and their home is suffering the consequences. We just leave stuff everywhere. The penalty is that although the family has nice things, the clutter is hiding them. I can't find them. Kim is helping Kathy and Gary rediscover their buried treasures. I don't think they're in here. By boldly going where no cleaning lady has gone before. What is all this stuff in here? Junk. <laughs> oh, cause that's worth keeping, isn't it, lovey? That's my baseball <laughs> shoe. <laughs> why is it hanging on a piece of wood, lovey? I'm not sure. <laughs> right. Wonder why you've got no room, is it? That's nice. How long have you had that? 12 years. Oh. What the heck? Now, we all oh, found some cutlery. That was my grandma's. Was it, dear? Yeah. God. And you've had it in here in a dirty situation. Well, it take, you have to polish it. It takes too much work. I'm going to show you quickly how you can clean silver. Check, first of all, that says sterling. Yep. So I know it's sterling silver. Silver plate, you cannot clean like I'm cleaning it. It's got to be the real McCoy. Right, I've got a bowl of water, my love. And I boiled a kettle. And I've lined this bowl with aluminum foil. All right? And I'm hot water, my love. You should really have your rubber gloves on. I'm being very naughty. I've got here, my love, bicarbonate of soda. OK. And in it goes. Right, lovey. I'll put one in, my love. Watch. This is how easy it is. Must be silver. Rinse it off in the water. Don't leave any of the soda on it at all. Dry it all off. Microfiber's lovely. It's a wonderful cloth to dry with. But look at the difference. Look at the f look at the difference in that spoon and that one. Yeah. Can you see that? Wow. Isn't it incredible? And another thing that's so lovely about this, you know the cream you clean silver with? Mm hmm It splutters all over the place. You can never get the powdery bits out of here. Good. Magic. It's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. It was magical the way that you can clean silver without having to scrub at it the way I always have. I might have actually used this stuff if I'd known that. OK, let's get it organized. OK. The family is taking baby steps. They're going through their personal items. Bills, catalogs, magazines. Organizing the things that have been left to sit for years. And even tucking the dreaded hockey equipment away where nobody can smell it. Find a home for everything, not just hide the mess. I want the mess to be permanently gone. But have they got the stamina for Kim and Mike's final challenge? Lots to do. You have got to get all the stuff out of that cool cupboard, haven't you? It's going to take a while. I should care. It's your cupboard. You messed it up, you clean out the lot. Mom, we need you to consolidate all the stuff that you have in your cabinets into one cabinet so we can get the other cabinets that aren't working out. OK. Gentlemen, you're in charge of your toys, OK? Yeah. Are you going to help out Mom and Dad? Yep. yep. All right, perfect. You want to have this place so lovely the VIP called at any time. You say, come in. All right, yes. let's Bye. go. The Gabberies now have just a few short days to clear out their junk, organize their home, and get everything to the standards of a VIP. Why don't we have supper first and then talk about this, OK? The family's getting right to work. How do 
did my slipper end up down here? Kathy has called in reinforcements to help sort through the mess. Yeah, we're pretty bad. Last night at about 10 o'clock, we were trying to get things done and we started making really dumb mistakes. So it's, it's a lot. But it looks like things have gone from bad to worse. Oh my God. Oh my God. Looks like a bomb hit this place. Kath. What? There is no way, hon. What are we trying to establish here? Let's look like slobs? Kath. What? I, th this isn't working for me. Oh, God. <laughs> the Gavary family has just a few short days to clear out their junk, organize their three-bedroom home, and get everything to the standards of a VIP. Dermot. The work is taking its toll. Looks like a bomb hit this place. Kath. What? Th this isn't working for me. This isn't working for me. OK? I know. It, it's, it, we're not going to get it done. We're going to look like total idiots. You know it. But fraying tempers aren't going to slow this family down. The boys are organizing their toys. Sheldon, you still want this guy? Yeah. OK. And Gary is tackling some small renovations. Uh, got a roller for me? While Kathy buys the furniture they need to properly display their china and silver. When can I get it done? This is a pile of garbage. You know, it really amazed me that for 10 years, we'd put off dealing with all the things we needed to deal with. And someone came in and gave us a deadline. And there you go. Everything is coming together, but their time is coming to an end. And it'll be up to Kim and Mike to decide if this final challenge is complete. Hello. Kim, my dear? Yes? I want to treat you like a VIP. Because oh, thank you. you've treated us like VIPs. Oh, thank you. So I got a little red carpet for you, and I'd like to walk you up the aisle. I'm sorry, but yeah, best no. man out, OK? Oh, All right. Here we go. Thank you very much. I always feel I belong on a red carpet, you know. You do. There's something about me. You're a diamond. Oh, and so are you, dear. <laughs> I notice paint. Yeah, yeah, lots of paint. No shoes. Perfect. Let's see the next room. Let's see if the hockey equipment's gone. Come on, Kim. Oh, look at oh, this. Can we go? Oh, my god. Oh, my. Oh, this is absolutely beautiful. Stunning. Thank you. This is what. Oh, look at that cabinet. You know what you want? You want to look in it like a shop window? Okay. <laughs> see what you can see? You do, you know. Oh, it's all right, isn't it? Wow, there's a floor. Nice job, boys. Yeah. This family has passed the test. Do you know what? You've got yeah. a fine, fine house, haven't you? With the work done, now let the fun begin with cheerleader Kim and referee Mike. There you go. Come on, come on. Stay, you stay right. You stay right. But this rude awakening isn't over. Just in case anyone has forgotten how far they've come, Kim and Mike have prepared the wall of shame. She's the manager. The living room and front hall were filled with hockey gear and the stench that came with it. But they've been cleared out. Now everything has a home and the smell is gone. You've got to admit the difference now, and it's oh, staggering. The dining room was a disaster zone that had been bombed by junk mail, envelopes, and paper. Yet, with a little organization, it's now a wide open space where everything is beautifully displayed. Yeah. Can't you tell? <laughs> and the basement, which had a new set of horrors in every single space, is now a room to be proud of. And even the coldest room in the house has a new warmth. You know, I can make lots of excuses for how it got the way it was, but now I can't even imagine letting it get back to that. Oh. It's given me this whole new motivation that was always there, but they, they tweaked it. <laughs> they, they got me going again. The family really came together as a team. Do you know, it's been a smashing day, hasn't it? I've had a good time. You play a mean game of hockey. Well, you're not bad with your pom-poms. Don't be cheeky. Come on. Come on.
Britain's Queen of Clean, Kim Woodburn, is traveling the world with lifestyle expert Mike Shalou on a very special assignment. Their mission, to identify, confront, and rehabilitate messy, disorganized families and bring pride back into their homes. This time, Kim and Mike are wading through the hand-me-down sea of the Beck family, comprising mom Tina, dad Eric, and kids Kayla, Katarina, Eric Jr., Brandon, and Cassandra. <laughs> the Becks have always been extremely close, but as the family has grown, their house has just gotten smaller and smaller. You have a bookshelf over there, use it. Our house is a jungle. I haven't invited friends over here since like grade school. And why do you have to throw everything on the floor? What? Because they have such a large family, the Becks receive loads of hand-me-downs. Look at this place. But they never get rid of anything. The clothes just collect on the floor and end up in poor condition because they aren't cared for properly. Oh, man. Eric, you make more work for me. I'm constantly wishing that every time she does the laundry, half the stuff would be donated away. When it comes to doing the house cleaning, Eric orders his daughters to tidy up, but he uses a completely different approach with his sons. My dad's big thing for the boys, just the boys, though, is here, I'll give you five bucks to do the dishes. But still, the chores never get done. Hi, guys. Eric's a full-time contractor, and Tina has a part-time job, so buying a bigger home wouldn't be difficult. But Tina refuses to move. I come from an Army-Navy background. We constantly were moving every couple of years. For me, I just don't want that for my kids. Instead of moving, Tina has nominated her family for a rude awakening. Found the remote. Because she can't take the stress of the mess anymore. Oh, come on, guys. It's like riding a roller coaster. <laughs> it's scary. Their big issue? The Becks have got too much stuff in a limited amount of space. It's time to save these people from themselves. Kim and Mike are going to fix the problem with a very rude awakening. Good morning, Beck family. We hear you're a big family in a small house. You've got unwanted gifts you don't part with, and your sleeping arrangements stink. Things are gonna change. This is your rude awakening. Yes! Oh, what a stop. What? Who was that? It's my husband. Really, aren't you the lucky one? Get out of that bed, Eric. Get out. Ooh. Get Jess and get out of that bed. What are you doing, Stephen, when I'm here? You heard me. Kim, Kim. Who are you? Who are you? More to the point. Be nice. What is your name? My name's Cassandra. How do you do? My name's Kim. You may call Thank me Kim. You. You're frightened of me. You've every reason to be. <laughs> What's that bed doing there? This is my bedroom. Wait a second. This is a family room. And Isn't my it? bedroom. But your mum and dad sleep in this room. For how long have you slept here? Ten years. Dear God. Ten years? Oh, Kim. Oh, Kim. Oh, God. Oh, that's your step. Oh, oh God. God. Is this awful? Oh. Is this the laundry room? No. no. It's a room. If that's the laundry room in there, what's this here? But this is the playroom. This is this the play. How can you play in here? You can't move in here. I already knew my house was disorganized, but they definitely pointed out a lot of the obvious flaws. Very embarrassing. How is all this washing mounted like this? I know you both work, but lovely, this is terrible, isn't it? So hard to keep up on it. Well, we can see that, dear. Yeah. Who is she? Gary, huh? Your older daughter. Hi, honey. Good morning, dear. Oh. Well, I suggest you go and get in a better mood. It's a horrible child. That's oh. Katerina. The use of your space in this house is horrible. This is a gorgeous bathroom. It is. But your sinks are full of junk. You got clothes barfing out of the laundry room, and you got a beautiful tub right here. The house is really small. Tell me honestly that your children and you need all these clothes. You don't? Mm, no, I don't. So, I mean, I'll bet you most of the clothes in their bedrooms they don't want. Or don't wear. Lovey. Washing is the bane of your lives. You gotta sort it. This family needs a kick in the pants. Kim and Mike are forming a strategy. They don't know how to use their spaces properly. Because I know the house is small. It's not that small. It can be used correctly. Now you come on. I want to 
teach the family how to downsize. Yep. Get the yep. stuff out of the house. Well done, oh God. Like, just get it out. When you've done that, I want to show them how to store things correctly, you know, mm -hmm. the neatest, smallest way possible. You make the best of the closets they've got. Clothes are very expensive. Mm -hmm. Wash them properly last few years. Now, I wash my scanties. And always the special stuff, you see. Now, you take this, look. That has been... I've had it quite a number of years. No, no, no. What do you think? Of your leg? The garter! What do you... No, does it do anything at all? Kim, the garter doesn't do anything for me. Part of the problem right now is that work around the house isn't distributed evenly. Eric, you gotta come help me. You gotta get off the computer. If you don't, you're grounded. My dad expects the girls to do it. Like, your girls, you should clean up. And on the rare occasions where the boys are forced to do something by their mom, their dad rewards them with cash. Don't tell mom that I give you money all the time. Yeah. The men in this family need a 21st century wake-up call. It's time for The Switch. Stop in here. Father, like a mug, you two. Well, it's stopping. We're about to reverse yeah. roles. Girls, you're going to relax. You're going to sit around with me, hang out, and have a good time. And if we feel like cleaning something, we'll clean something. Hey, that's not fair, right? No, no, that's, that's fine. And gentlemen, you're with lovely Kim. <laughs> you lucky <laughs> death. <laughs> Look at this place. The Beck family's big issue is that they've got too much stuff in a limited amount of space. You guys got to start helping me around here, because this is getting ridiculous. Up until now, the boys have been paid to do minimal amounts of work, while the girls have done everything for free. But Kim and Mike are changing things up. We have about to reverse yeah. roles. Do a little wipe down. The girls are getting money for even the slightest amount of cleaning. Yes. Good job, Mom. Good job. Five yes. bucks. Nice. Done. Way done. Such oh, While the boys toil away in the kitchen. Stop mucking around, you're wasting time. Get on with the sink. Ready. And then doing it. Hurry up, how young are you? You're like an old man. It was funny to see the boys practically fade in expression when they found out that they had to come in the kitchen and clean with Kim. And you got to uh, do what they do. And it was pretty interesting to be my dad for an hour. On your knees. Yeah. On. Now let me see you scrubbing. Yes! The boys actually doing something for the first time without being paid. Seeing Eric actually on the ground doing work. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. See what I mean? Did I tell you to stop? There we go! Woo! Woo! All right. Kim, how's it going in there, babe? It's torture! Hey. They're all useless for it. Fun in here, honey. It's fun in here. I've had enough. I'm nearly having a breakdown. You nearly put me in the hospital with my nerves. Do you know that? Are you happy about that? You're a great family, but I hope you taught you that. You've got old muck in here. And there's a lot of work There's a lot do. of you, so you wouldn't have to do much, you know? The switches proved to the Becks that everyone needs to be involved in the home. And what better place to start than the ridiculous clothing situation? We need to downsize. I need you to go downstairs and get all the clothing that is not stored away and bring it to me right now. Because we're going to go through all of your items of clothing today. Now, I don't want to be selective. I just want you to get everything. Let's go, kids. Move the mountain. Up we go. I don't think any of us realized how much we actually owned. I mean, we knew there was a lot, but when you put it all in one room. <laughs> oh, my god. Oh, my god is right. The Becks knew they had an excess of clothing. But this mountain is absolutely haunting. It's time to get this stuff out the door. Ready? This is nice. Now this, this was maybe in high fashion in 1956. And I'm all about retro, and I'm all about vintage, okay? But this is ugly. But the Becks aren't done yet. Mike needs to show Eric and Tina how to prevent another mountain from forming. There's a lot of stuff coming in and nothing's going out. So what we're going to create is the Beck Family Custom Station. As a custom officer, you need to know two words, yes and no. But how do you say no? I mean, it's so hard to say no. It, to me, it's rude. If somebody's trying to give you something, then you should graciously accept it. And... If you can't find it in your heart to say no, you can just take the stuff yourself and bring it right to charity. Here's a bag of hand-me-downs. I need you to rifle through this stuff. In, out. Let's begin. First put it in there. 
to have Mike come in and actually get us to go through the house and find out what was there and then to go through it all and sort it all, it's amazing. We did, managed to do it in less than an hour, and I'm uh, impressed. Now I can get on with the rest of my life. The Becks have cut down the amount of clothing they have, but now they need to learn how to store their out-of-season items. Kim's solution, vacuum-sealed bags. They're absolutely fabulous. They're waterproof, they're damp-proof, they're smell-proof. So anything you put in here is wonderful. Now, I'm going to do this. There's a lot in there. Now, you see the size of it? Watch. Go seal it. Watch. Vacuum. Go on, stick it on. Turn it on, love. Whip this on so it keeps sealed as quick as you can. Look, lovey. I mean, just look at that. And when you want to get it out, you just simply undo this and the bag deflates itself. You can use it again for the summer clothes. Here. There you go. I like this part. This is the manly job. What I think about the most use that we'll get out of it is getting most of the clothes in a small area, and it's going to be clean, it's not going to be on the floor, and it's not going to get destroyed. It's very important in this small house to have labour-saving stuff. And this are fabulous because what I like about these is they're terribly cheap to buy. And honestly, and on each hanger, you get four pairs of slacks. This is already padded so that anything you hang on here has no slide. It will not slide. So four pairs of slacks, three hangers. <laughs> Twelve pairs of slacks and part them about, you know, an inch apart. And in that little area, you have hung 12 pairs of slacks. It really is incredible. That's amazing. So we'll leave you all this stuff and advise you. That's the way to go. Thank you. The Becks are a family of seven living in a three-bedroom home. Yeah, but where's the remote? Their big issue? They've got too much stuff in a limited amount of space. Let's go, kids. The Becks have considerably downsized their stockpile of clothing. And now they need to learn how to take care of what's left. Give me the dress pants. Now, these are, when I say dress pants, these are what you wear outside, OK? So this is how you quickly do them. Look for the inside seam and put them both together. Together. And then find the, then the outside seam, then this outside seam. All right? Four seams together, the pants are the shape they're going to be when you've got them on. Look. Now, I can confidently iron these, knowing they're in the proper crease. Because if the seams meet, you've got the middle of the legs meeting, haven't you? Now, look, girls. I have done these pants. And this is the first time I actually used an iron before I've been scared that I would burn a hole in it. But with Kim's help, I won't be burning any precious articles of my clothing. And while Cassandra may not be old enough to use an iron, Kim is showing her that she's not too small to help out around the house. I'm curious. What is that, love? Uh, those are kiss marks. Have you got a dry cloth, a duster type thing, and some hairspray? Yes, I do. Go on, my love. And well done, little one. Clean. I like that, my love. Now, hairspray. Oh. Right, my love? Now, watch. He's a funny boy to do what he's doing, my love. Let me just do that. This wall is a flat finish paint. For that reason, I can't rub it very hard. It's coming gradually, it's coming. I'm wondering how it gets along. It's the stickiness. When you spray your hair, mm -hmm. it's got a stickiness to it, hairspray. Uh -huh. And it's the stickiness that eventually brings it off, my love. We're doing it, lovey, aren't we? Look. <laughs> Do you want to have a go? Sure. Good. Loads, loads, loads. Now, massage it round, like you're massaging a doggy's ears. See what I mean? Oh, you've got to be careful. Now, sprays on the actual wall itself. Go on, go on. Once I saw Kim do it, I'm like, wow. That is so cool. Can you clear this bit off here? And Kim isn't done yet. She's keeping the momentum going by showing the boys a minty fresh way of helping out in the bathroom. It's got a lovely sink here covered in bits. I think that's paint. I think it's everything under the sun. Now. This is white toothpaste. Now, you can't have that toothpaste. It's got that blue or pink gel in the centre. You've got to have plain white. Now, watch. Because when you consider that toothpaste cleans your teeth, which are enamel, and it cleans coffee, cigarette stains off, it wouldn't be hard to imagine that you'd get stains off a sink, I wouldn't think. 
Do you want to try some toothpaste? He asked son. Have a go. You have a go around those taps. No, no. Yeah, you'll get it off. I'm telling you. Look, see what I mean? Don't it come off easy? You see, it's coming off, and it's you do, you do, you do, you know. Well, look at look at you two. Wouldn't they be the same boys from yesterday, would you? The boys cleaning for no money, continuing to clean was amazing, and to see Katarina and Kayla ironing together, I mean, you couldn't have asked for anything better. But now Kim and Mike are taping off an area for the Becks to work in because this final challenge could get dangerous. All Family, right. here's the deal. We are downsizing, downsizing, downsizing. We certainly are. We're cutting this house in half. You've got furniture you said you want to get thrown out. But the main challenge here is to get beds in the right rooms and your mum's and dad's bed out of the living room. Good luck. The Becks now have to reduce their household possessions by 50% and find everyone a proper place to sleep. I don't think my family can pull off the final challenge. We've always been sleeping in random areas of the house in beds that aren't even really beds. The Becks had better kick themselves into high gear. They've learned the art of clearing things out. Put that corner on. But now the Becks need to bring some stuff in without going overboard. I guess this is where it's gonna go, is it? Oh, yeah. This is unbelievable. They've gone well beyond themselves to do this so fast. It's overwhelming. But even though they're making progress, not everything is rosy. Daughter Katarina has completely shut down, and that is putting this family behind. She's being very belligerent lately. The Beck family is in the middle of their final challenge. Where do you want them? Their mission? Reduce their household possessions by 50% and find everyone a proper place to sleep. There's painting to be done and the rooms need to be cleaned. So it's going to be tough. But in order for this three-bedroom house to finally shine, the Becks need everyone's help. And right now, daughter Katarina isn't involved at all. She's actually lately not been bothered to do anything. She's just being cranky. Careful, careful. Careful. Nope. Not into it, I hear you. Not really. What? Yeah, you not are. Not really. So you're not going to do it? Not right now. When do you think? Go get done, just not right now. It's not a lost cause, though. Who would I say, Mom, me, you will put the towels on? As Eric arrives home, Katarina's outlook is improving. Kat, I need you inside the tub. And then you're going to dry fit the next one, make sure it fits in, OK? Put it against the wall, yeah. Cleaning may not be her thing, but it looks like she's on her way to getting a PhD in home renovation. It's perfect. OK, let's go next one. The Becks have come a long way. Over the course of three days, they've carted off three truckloads of unwanted furniture and 80% of their hand-me-downs. Get out, get out. No, that is putting the final challenge within reach. I'm happy to have about 12 bags and uh, 10, 15 boxes of clothes finally out of this house. That's your... Bye, Clutter! But now their time is up. And Kim and Mike will decide if this challenge is complete. Oh! oh. <laughs> This is unbelievable. It doesn't look like the same place, does it? Oh, is my. It is, oh, is, that is, is it comfy? Is you, you, you got the bed, did you? Is it how comfy is it? It's nice. Very nice. I like it. So if you're sleeping down here, where are you two sleeping? Oh, you have geez. a bedroom? I have a bedroom. They Woo! have a bedroom. <laughs> oh. Ten years later, they get a bedroom. You know, we put that tape up, didn't we, Mike? Yeah. Now, did it work for you? Yeah, and yeah. I ended up moving the tape to this side of the wall here. So whatever you can fit between the wall and six inches, well, the rest, it went all out. It's official. This final challenge is a success. The Beck's last task? Show off their now beautiful home to all of their friends and family. <laughs> that is so is that cool. cool. But Kim and Mike aren't done yet. It's time to reflect on the horrors of this house with 
The Wall of Shame. The Wall of Shame. Popkins, <laughs> water. What was once Kayla's disgusting mess of a room has been transformed into a bedroom for Eric and Tina to rekindle their passion. That's the bathroom. <laughs> oh, that's gross. The basement bathroom was a half-finished jumble of laundry and garbage. But with a little elbow grease and tile work, it's now an inviting oasis. Never, ever want to go back there again. And the rec room, which was covered in clothing and hand-me-down furniture, has been overhauled and is now a multifunctional area that everyone can appreciate. Keep as tight as you are now. Be a lot happier for it. What do your friends think? Yes? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Kim and Mike have triumphed. The Becks are organized and carefree, and they finally have a home to be proud of. My family's been uh, up and down, a little bit of aggravation, but uh, everything set aside. I'm very proud of it. I feel much better because we don't have to hide it anymore. My friends and family were ecstatic. To see their reaction and to see them as happy for us as we are that we've accomplished it is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Cheers, Mom. <laughs> Thank you. It's a lot no, of work, yeah. but it's done. <laughs> Britain's Queen of Clean, Kim Woodburn, is traveling the world with lifestyle expert Mike Shalou for a very special assignment. Their mission, to identify, confront, and rehabilitate messy, disorganized families and bring pride back into their homes. This time, Kim and Mike are meeting the Morgan McKenzie family, comprising Mom Kelly, son Doug, daughter Kendra, and youngest son Brian. The Morgan McKenzie's moved into this majestic heritage house four years ago. But over time, it's become a bulging storage container of junk for a family of hoarders. There's just so much random stuff that like, we don't know what it is or where it goes or what to do with it. Dollar store bargains litter the home, while other shopping sits unopened. Suitcases never get unpacked, and some items have been stored in cardboard for years. I still have unpacked boxes from when I moved here. Kelly's charity work and busy job as a hearing specialist make cleaning the lowest priority for her and her kids. Get rid of that, please. Why do I do that? It's broken. Throw it out. But now Kendra is heading to university, and Doug is also leaving home. I know you're planning on moving back out, and you're going to leave me with this disaster when you go somewhere. I, I just can't have this kind of mess uh, hanging around when you're, especially if you're not here, it's not fair. Time is running out to get this house sorted. Need a hand, Kendra? No. <laughs> but this whole family needs to learn to let go of stuff, organize what they have, and stop buying more. We shove things away in effort to tidy instead of getting rid of things or bring in things that aren't really necessary. The Morgan McKenzie's big issue? Everything comes into this house but nothing ever goes out. I've been asking you for two months now to put away these Christmas decorations. To be in a house to be this disorganized, it's exhausting, it's frustrating, it's depressing. Kim and Mike are on their way to fix the Morgan McKenzie's ever-growing mass of mess. They're gonna do it with a very rude awakening. Good morning, Morgan McKenzie's. We hear you're a bunch of hoarders. Everything's coming in, nothing ever goes out. Enough is enough, Morgan McKenzie's. This is your rude awakening. I've seen that Christmas tree thrown out with, no, with the lights on. I've seen it all now. Look at this. I'm, how old is that? I don't get it. Morgan McKenzie's, where are... Here oh, they are. Here, they, here are. they are. I have seen some things in my life. I have never seen a Christmas tree thrown away with the lights on it. Why did you throw decent lights out? Because you were too lazy. lazy. Ooh, we've got a right bunch here. Who's going somewhere? <clears throat> no one knows are mine. But they're full. But you're going but somewhere, you're going aren't somewhere. you? No, I just haven't unpacked them. How long? When did you come back from wherever you went? <sighs> it's been a couple months. Months? What about the dirty washing in there stinking away? Don't even answer. <laughs> all right. Don't even answer. All right. How did all this happen? Because wherever we look... It's just... Who's responsible for all this untidiness and, and everything everywhere? All of us. But you don't throw anything out, do you? 
Not much. I can tell. I'm glad we've come because if you don't, you know, in six months' time, I won't be to get in the house at all, love. Is you buy, you don't throw out. Christmas ornaments. It's a few months past Christmas. Well, I did ask Doug to take on the task of putting them back into storage, and I decided this time that I wasn't going to go and do it for them, so they still sit. You, young man, please. You're going to box it and put it where your mother keeps it, aren't you? Kim, there's a bed. Do you know what I thought it was a wall? There it sits, because I don't know what to do with it. Make a decision and do it now, or let's get rid, dear, please. You ready for this one? Kim, there's Christmas ornaments. There's a nativity scene still out. Well, the, all the family's the same, dear. <laughs> They're all crackers. All this has got to be clear before you go, because it's not fair for your mum to have to do this when you, her grown son goes away. Well, she wouldn't do it. I... No, you have can't to stay help here. your mum. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say about this? Welcome to my room. Don't be ridiculous. This is no room, it's a pigsty. What is all this? Clothes, dollar store, stupid stuff that I don't need. I'm a big fan, but you can't buy everything in the dollar store. Money burns a hole in my pocket. If you're a bit tempted, don't go out with money in your pocket, son. Mm -hmm. This is a disgrace. You have to un This is the worst room. Oh, now no, look here, now look. This is the feminine dressing table. I guess. Like you see in all the films. The woman sits there brushing her long tresses. <gasps> That's a dump! Is there no shame? A little. A little? There's no hope, is the mic. For her? She's in Ruination Avenue, isn't no, she? No, I like organizing. I like. <laughs> Please. You, you like, like organized? No, but I like things organized. This is not organized. This is organized chaos. No, it's not. You're going to university, and you got to get your things packed so you can get out of here properly. The biggest problem in this house is that they're slobs. Kim. You can paint a picture. You can put a pink and blue bow. The family are wonderful slobs. Would you agree? Yeah. 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 All right. Time. I've said enough. Yeah. Let's go, darling. So pretty. So mucky. This constant hoarding has got to come to an end. Disgraceful. Kim and Mike need to figure out a plan of action. They're never going to be able to downsize with all the stuff that comes into this house. What are you going to do? I have to teach this family that when things come in, things got to go out. Oh, I hope you do. What are you going to do? She is going to unpack those suitcases. Oh, gross. And that boy is going to put those Christmas decorations away. It's Christmas 12 months a year here. Mind you, I'll tell you this now. I like Christmas. Mm -hmm, me too. I you love know, Christmas it. cheese, festivities. It's great. And also, my dear, mistletoe. Hmm? Mistletoe, mistletoe. That's not mistletoe. We can pretend, can't we? Right now, everyone is guilty of overloading the house. For all of us, it's a little bit of an issue letting go of items. Yes, I would describe myself as a pack rat. This is the, uh, the first welding job I ever did. I don't know Holding on to junk will never get this house clean. It's time for the switch. What we want to do is separate you into teams. We have the people that are leaving the house, Kendra and Doug. Get over. Switch. We've got Kelly and Brian, who are staying. Two teams, Doug and Kendra, take a box. You go into Brian's room. And collect everything that is junk. And you two are going to go into Kendra's room, and you're going to do the same. We are giving you exactly one minute to bring all that junk right back here. Ready, set, and go! The Morgan McKenzie's big issue is that they have too much stuff coming in, and nothing ever goes out. Uh, the last time I got rid of something... Shoot. Kim and Mike want to give this family a lesson in letting go. We are giving you exactly one minute to bring all that junk right back here. Ready, set, and go. Go. You have one minute, guys. You have one minute. Let's go. Collect that junk. There's so much stuff. Come on. We have not long. Take the whole bag. This is this is all. This is junk. Brian, you're slacking a bit, kiddo. Get stuff in. You could fill 15 flaming boxes. Ten seconds. Oh, I know. Eight. <laughs> seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out. Come on. Right. This is junk. Out. You threw out my guitar. Yeah. I hate you. Since you start, you've not been asked. This is the laurel. Two boxes. One minute. One minute. Doesn't take long. Doesn't take weeks and months. The switch has proved to the Morgan Mackenzies that clearing this house won't take forever. 
But Brian still needs a lesson in letting go, even of junk that's already broken. Does it have any sentimental value to you at all? Not really. None at all, right? This is what we do with things. For all of us, it's a little bit of an issue letting go of items, although I think we're seeing it in a different light now. It taught me that I shouldn't keep as much things. So we're going to give you loads of boxes. Give yourself 60 seconds. Don't give yourself longer. If you hesitate, you won't throw it out. You all know if you want it right away. Get it out. And how's that a deal? The switch was interesting to see how much was left after we took a box out. You can't tell it was missing, so there's a lot more to do. Yes, there's a lot to get out. But first, Kim and Mike have to stop more stuff from coming in. My mom definitely brings the most into the house. You know, online shopping and God knows what else. And then I buy things that I don't even like, like a pair of boots I will never wear that still sit in the box. Brian is just random things that you'll never need or use and just leaves them everywhere. Dollar store stuff? Oh, he's two years old. More dollar store stuff? Yeah. The Morgan McKenzies don't even realize what they already have. I want to prove a little something right now. Mike wants to show them by pulling it all together. I need to show you guys the amount of stuff that comes in this house in a short period of time. And this is only three months worth of purchases. In a year, they'll have four times as much. At this rate, soon the house will burst. And you wonder why your house is so full. Family, I can't even see you. Come here. Look at this. In order for this to stop, we need to put into place the in and out policy. If something this size comes in the house, I want something this size to go out of the house. Brian, if you go to the dollar store, and you buy all these little things. It adds up, OK? This has either be put somewhere properly or it has to go out. Got it? Mom, all this impulse buying has to stop. You're going to give everything a thought for 24 hours before you purchase them. 24 hours. Let's put this stuff away. Come on. I'm quite certain we will be more conscientious when in making purchasing decisions and also in hoarding. Um, it'll be easier to let things go to know that that's the only way we can bring something new in. With the shopping madness halted, Kelly needs to take care of her suitcase science experiment gone wrong. This one's been here probably for about six months. This one came back with me about four months ago. That's about three months that's been there. Kim is bracing herself for the biohazard that is about to be unleashed. I'm sorry to anything to jump at me. Open the case. Let's go see what we've got here. Oh, uh, it's a heap. You do know that you're going to have to wash everything, so let's throw them in. Okay. It's musty. It's very musty. You're a very good packer, dear, aren't you? I must say. <laughs> oh, it's God. Got flare. Let us take our masks off. Oh, these are awful things to wear. Now, I just got warm water and I put a wee bit of washing up liquid. I don't want it soapy. Okay. Tea tree oil is a natural bacteria, comes from Australia. I will shake in about 10 drops. I'm going to put this clean white cloth in, and all I'm going to do is, my love, I'm literally skimming over the nylon. You might see a few sort of dampy spots appear, but leave it open half an hour and it's, it's dry. If you have any dirty washing, you put them in a plastic bag. Then when you get home, take it out right away. It hasn't changed any of the other clothes. So if they're clean, you've got to tackle this one now, okay. you've got to tackle that one, okay. and I've had enough. Thank you. Thank you. The Morgan McKenzie family brings too much stuff into the house, and nobody ever throws anything out. A binder full of paper, uh, that's useful. Why, why throw that out? Kim and Mike need to teach this family how to let go. I hate my life. The Morgan McKenzies want to downsize as two of the grown-up kids move on in life. Both the kids leaving, I don't like the idea of, but the stuff they're leaving behind, I dislike even more. They really need to get their things sorted out before they go. Mike needs to help Kendra organize her things before she goes to university so her mom isn't left in the lurch. Garbage is going to go in the garbage. Things that don't belong in your room are going to go in this box here. The stuff that you're going to keep, we're going to divide it up into three boxes. Things that you never use, things that you use occasionally, and things that you use every day. We're going to do the entire bedroom. What's this? Every day? Yeah. Every day use. Occasional, never use. No. Yes, let it go. Good girl. Grab the dirty clothes out of there. Uh, Thank you. Can't. Yes, you can. Don't say you can't. Ooh. Don't stop. Just because I stop. Wait, whoa, there's still more garbage in here. But, but like, eh. I, I can't even, I don't even want to touch this stuff. So you got to get in here with me. Motivation, motivation. But it's going to take all of Mike's power of positive thought to get this girl motivated. Keep going. 
Okay, I don't know how to sort these things. This has to have a spot. Here. Here. Do you want to help me out? <laughs> well, I want you to put that stuff down. Oh, where? Well, I don't, exactly, where? You gotta figure know. it out. You're going to university and you can't figure out where things are gonna go? It takes some tough love from Mike for Kendra to finally face reality. I'm leaving you with this. Here's your garbage bag. When I come back, I want this room to be spotless. Okay. And organized. Okay? Yep. All right. I'm getting started with my help. It's a work in progress, so I can keep working on it. It's just been started, so that's the hardest part, I guess. While Kendra gets busy, it's time for Doug and Brian to become Kim's little helpers and finally pack Christmas away. Now, I'll tell you what job I'm going to give you to do. All right. Got the box here, and we've got lots of these. So I want you to take all these lovely balls and things, they're beautiful, and fit one in each. When you fill the layer, you put this on top, my love. And we've got another one of these, darling. And then, you see, you start another layer. It's very neat. And you, young man, I've started doing that one. Kim is going to show these boys how easy a job can be if you have the right tools. This is actually pretty fun. Look at that little face. Not a bad-looking child, are you? <laughs> but what happened to you? No, no. We'll put this in here now. Go on. Thanks. Come on, come on, you get working. You, are you you're going on strike or something? By Jove, that is totally beautiful. Put him in very carefully. Now we've finished, but not quite, have we? What have we forgotten? Don't want these round the house, do we? Oh, well done, kids, well done. <laughs> well, I'm liking this, you know. Okay. Not bad kids, are you? No. I, I must have been mistaken. <laughs> I just expected the Christmas ornaments to take a lot longer to get put away. I thought it was going to take about two hours, and then once she taught me to do it, I just kind of did it, and it actually took not that long at all. Kim and Mike have given the Morgan McKenzies the tools to deal with their huge collection of junk. But now they need to put this family to the test. It's time for the final challenge. There's enough unwanted stuff in this house to sink a battleship. It's time we get all the junk out. We thought we could have a lawn sale. And all the proceeds, if you boys don't mind, go to your sister's education. She's going to university. She needs all the money she can get her hands on. I need you guys to be motivated and work together as a family. Got it? Yep. Don't be so bubbly. <laughs> I've seen more life in a mortuary. We'll be back. I think it'll be a huge challenge to get everybody ready and parting with things. Brian, come down now, please. But with enthusiasm lagging, things are off to a very slow start. I'm going to lose it with you. You have stuff everywhere. It's got to be cleaned up. Okay. Big mom. And mom is the only one pushing ahead. First thing you need to do is sort out this entire cupboard and get some yard sale stuff out of there. I'm so tired. Oh, poor baby. Why am I? Talk to me, a child. You still have a lot of stuff on those shelves. I know I have a lot of stuff on those shelves. That you have to go through? I went through it. I made that in art, and that's special. That is the dart that Cat Stevens shot at me. That is the thingy that John Paul II gave to me. Your Easter yo-yo? Easter Bunny gave that to me, personally. If I give specific instructions to what to do and work with them, things work very well. If I leave chores to be done in my absence, they do not. So the more I'm absent, the less gets done. But mom can't be in three places at once. Empty that, we're gonna sell it. I'm not selling it though. Sure. No, not. There's enough unwanted stuff in this house to sink a battleship. Kim and Mike have given the Morgan McKenzies 24 hours to clear out all their unwanted junk and hold a lawn sale extravaganza. Come on, princess. Getting out. But with this level of enthusiasm, I hate my life. It could be a lawn sale disaster. It's stressful today that I don't know how we're going to get everything done in time. Look at it. It works not better. But to get this four-bedroom home back in order, everyone has to agree on what stays and what goes. This is not all keepers. This is what you want to keep? You've got to be kidding me. You're hiding things from me. The threat of Kim and Mike's imminent arrival seems to be the final wake-up call this family needs to get their sale goods sorted. I am feeling good about that. I'm feeling organized right now. This is throwing out, and this is for the yard sale. It may be sorted, but to succeed in their final challenge, Kim and Mike now have to get them to sell it. Gang, we are thrilled to bits that you have stopped bringing things in the house. Nothing. Yes, right? Yep. But now we need to get all that stuff out of the house. Time for the yard sale. Let's go. Come on, there's money to be made. Money. Money. Come on. Hurry up. 
It's time to get this show on the road. For sale. I think this would be good. Ten. Ten bucks. Eatable. This I'm gonna buy it for fifteen. How much you want for the shelves, Brian? Two bucks. So. Come on, folks. Get Are we almost sold sell. everything? Bargains galore, dear. Bargains galore. With Kim and Mike helping to drum up the crowd, the family's okay, finally okay. letting go and making a tidy profit to boot. You know what this is for? Let's go for university. Okay, good take. Thank you. Perfect, you're, you're a good man, you're, you're a good man. You're a good man. You're an officer and a gentleman, yeah, That's right. The final challenge is a success. In one hour, they've gotten rid of a bedroom suite, one treadmill, 14 boxes of junk, and made over $200. That'll be helpful to Kendra. I mean, raising the money really wasn't the point of it. It was to get rid of the stuff. But it is kind of nice to see that jar fill up at the end of the day. So the last two things to leave are your two kids. Throw them in. Throw them in. Okay. Are you going to miss them? Of course. Well, how do you feel about them leaving? Uh, I don't want them to leave, but I'm getting prepared for it. Oh, I work on it. Well, you guys have done great. Thanks. Really good. Really, really good. Gang, get out. Let's get out of here. This car of stuff is going to charity. But to avoid any relapses, Kim and Mike bring the family and their friends together to reveal the wall of shame. This is what used to be in this house. There you are. The dining room used to be a stew of shopping boxes, Christmas decoration chaos, and even an old mattress. Now, it's a welcoming room fit for a family gathering at any time of the year. <laughs> Doug's room used to be a guitar graveyard with a spaghetti of wires and his bed on the floor. Now, it's a neat and tidy room, easy to pack up and go. Oh, my God, right there. Do you recognize that room? I don't even recognize it. Kendra's room was just a mayhem of mess, covered in garbage and laundry, fit only for animals. Now it's a stylish sanctuary for a young lady. I think it's a lot better for my mom to know that our rooms are sorted out before we leave. I think the most important thing I learned was how easily junk can pile up, um, and uh, you know how much space it can take too, and also uh, how easy it can be to get rid of it. All of this will certainly ease the downsizing process for Brian and myself. We're just going to be a better family now. Thank you for being such You've a great a lovely, family. You've been a lovely family. The yeah. change has been dramatic. And remember, nothing back in this house. Yeah. One thing in, one, one thing, thing out. out. Dollar shopper. Come on. Kim has conquered the Morgan Mackenzies and made their future brighter. Now, if only Mike will let her do the same. But you know what I bought, don't you? What did you, you buy? Kim, not the mistletoe again. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. No. Oh it's not going on. to happen. Mike, it's not going please. to happen. I'm not no. going to kiss you. Please. No.